Hello friends, this is Fanfic Adventure. How are you all? So we are back with an interesting movie on what if Naruto had the Eagle Clan summoned, Summary says. At a young age, Naruto's life has changed forever, making him a more powerful ninja. But before we start, if you want more stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. It had been the night of the attempted assassination of a member of the Hyuga clan when the most unexpected thing had happened. The wife of the clan head had been absorbed of her power immediately following the attempting to kill her, completely killing her. The entire Hyuga main branch had been devastated, as their powers had only seen through the first assassination, not the second, more lethal one. See, the Akatuski had been the group that had attacked her, mainly the puppet user, Sasori. He used an ancient technique of puppetry that extracted the power that was given to the Hyuga clan, and formed it into a ball of energy, however, that very night, another thing was happening in coordination to the death of a Hyuga. There's the demon. Kill IT. Alas, another attempted killing of Naruto, infamous jailer of the Kayubi was being hunted by the village, the poor unsuspecting boy had been simply wandering around, when a drunk Anbu had seen him, and immediately gotten, ah, pissed off. So here we come to our story, consisting, currently, of an Anbu ninja, and roughly 50 civilians, nearly all intoxicated mind, and one, poor little Jinchuriki, oh dear. What did I ever do to you guys to deserve this huh? Yells Naruto, crying as he gets surrounded by the group of civilians. You were born, demon. Harshly says the Anbu, slurring a bit. Sasori, whose orders had merely been to simply attack a Hyuga, then retrieve their powers and finally, bestow the Akatuski with the long sob by Akugan, saw this poor boy being attacked. It brought back a flash of memories of when he was a child, the same age as the boy. Of course, he, being the all-powerful master of puppets had made himself into a puppet, in order to avoid aging like his pitiful grandmother, had dominated death into a single venerable spot, which, unless completely destroyed, would practically bestow immortality on him, quite stronger than that fool Orochimaru. Anyways, he was watching the boy when he came to elation with his memories of being picked on when younger. Now naturally, people were wary of bullying him as he was the grandson of Chio, but Chio knew that if she was always protecting Sasori from harm, that when she herself passed away, that he would definitely get hurt. He had been getting picked on a lot that day, until finally, a big kid by the name of Ryan had shoved him to the ground, and stolen his most favorite toy, the miniature sculpture of his granny Chio's puppet, the Forbidden Ten, who at the time, had just taken down an entire castle. He had gotten furious, and looking into Naruto's eyes, he had been hidden with a jutsu, used his chakra strings to pull him to him, whispering, keep quiet. Naruto, too scared to even speak, nodded, watching the Anbu and the civilians try to find him. The Anbu had gotten out of her intoxication now, as she knew there was no way that the demon could have gotten away so very quickly. Sasori knew that if he stayed put that there was no way he would be able to leave, and thus shushined out of Konoha into the wilderness. W who are you? Naruto stuttered when he realized that he had gotten away from the mob. My name is Sasori of the Red Sands, boy, and who are you? Sasori said in a calm voice. The boy hadn't been even the tiniest bit scared of him just of the mob from earlier, and also, Sasori was actually using his favorite disguise puppet, which concealed him. I'm Naruto, and I will be the future Hokage, and why do you wish to be Cage? So those stupid civilians will respect me. HN, Sasori was evaluating Naruto, and realized that he was a bit worried for him. He of course, knew that Naruto was the Kayubi container, and that he, being a part of the Akatuski, would eventually have to fight him. The other reason he was scared for him was because he was good friends with Naruto's dad, Minato, who at the moment, was in disguise in the Anbu Ops so the Rock Village wouldn't attack, as the Rock Village had, in the past few years, been harboring not one, but two Jinchuriki in full control of their demons. Listen Naruto, and listen fast, as I told you, I am Sasori of the Red Sands, I use puppets and I am a ninja. But, you cannot tell anyone this, for you will get in dire trouble if this does happen, and I am your friend right? His eyes shone with admiration at the second, he had actually gotten somebody that wanted to be his friend, of course Sasori. Okay, Naruto, I will tell you everything you will need to know, but afterwards I will seal all the knowledge I gave you into a scroll so you don't get into trouble okay? Because there are people much worse than those dumb villagers that want to kill you. 
I am one of them, but I don't want to kill you, can you believe me? Naruto's eyes grew bigger, and Sasori noticed his pupils were slitted, a sign of the Kayubi. Of course Sasori, besides, if you wanted to kill me, you could have just let the villagers kill me. I think you're nice. Sasori grew happy, yet sad, as he knew that it wouldn't be easy for him to explain everything to the boy. Okay, let me start with you. You are a Jinchuriki, a container of a demon. Now before you get all teary-eyed, let me explain. You are a container of a demon, not the demon itself. You are kind of like a jailer, holding the beast at bay. When you grow older, you should actually be able to talk to the demon and depending on how much you two get along, you might be allowed to directly use the Kayubi's powers, making you stronger. Your father was Minato, an extremely powerful Hokage, eventually you will meet him, as I have in the past, and we have actually made peace, even though I am a part of an organization that would like to kill him. The night you were born, the most feared of all demons attacked Konoha, and Minato faced it, that was the same night one of my organization's member, Toby, or I think he may be another ninja named Madara in disguise, fought your father. Your dad not only managed to fight Toby, but also managed to seal the demon into a newborn child. You. He did this out of love, and couldn't do it without me. I managed, under disguise of course, to fight Toby for a while, before he finally fled out of loss of chakra, the energy we used to perform ninjutsu. The Akatuski is an organization founded by a leader named Payne, and several other strong people from throughout the nations. Recently, they sent me to kill a member of the Hyuga clan, and I was forced to, as now I am nearly controlled by Toby, who suspects me. I am happy to say that I gave her a swift death, and took the energy given to her, the energy that allowed her to use the Byakugan. I will tell you plenty more in this scroll I am going to give you, but you cannot remember this, so I will seal your memories into this scroll, and I will make it so you can open it in time. Also, when you get home, there should be several scrolls on the Byakugan, some key ninjutsu I want you to learn in the future, and finally there will be some scrolls of puppetry, do not dare keep them at your house, rather, give them to Seru Tobi and ask him to keep them safe. I trust when I meet you again, you can sever the ties I have to Tobi, I will take away select memories of yours so you don't remember me, but they will return in time and kid. Naruto looks up, his eyes in shock, young mind unable to comprehend what was going on. I once lived your life a long time ago, I never had a kid, although I wish I did. I will always be watching over you, along with your dad. Even though I have only known you so long, I will consider you my stepson or something, just make your father and I proud, and remember this, I will implant a summoning jutsu into your mindscape, when you come very close to death, all the information that is in the scroll we instantly be sucked in. This will be very straining on your body, so don't force it. The summoning jutsu will also summon me and your dad to the scene. Good luck kid, I'll talk to you when you become a chunin. Naruto's memories disappeared in a flash, and he fell to the ground. What the heck just happened? One second I was about to get pounded by civilians then the next, his eyebrows scrunched, trying to remember. Whatever, I probably ought to get home. Sasori, in the shadows, watched him carefully. I do hope that the rock village isn't smart enough to realize, after all, there is a strong resemblance. Naruto woke up in his terrible apartment room sleeping in his bed when he woke up. Man, weirdest dream ever. Oh well. Naruto went to sleep, content and happy. Outside his window however. Sasori. What are you doing here? HN. What's up Minato? Nothing. Just the fact that you were talking to my son already. Do you have a problem with that? Sasori, he's so young for this. He is starting in the ninja academy soon, and don't even try to pretend that you didn't include the flying thunder god technique in one of the later scrolls. See, you even included the Rasengan. Fine, but we have to tell Serutobi about this, otherwise Naruto could be suspicious. Yeah. Any progress on tracking Kashina? Minato knocks Sasori down. I told you, to never, ever talk about her. The woman of my life betrayed me. Minato said, kneeling, putting his head in his hands. Sorry, but I probably should have told Naruto that she betrayed us, huh? Yeah, you had better get back to the Akatuski base, don't want, Toby, to get suspicious. Right, see ya, wait, one moment, Minato-san, Sasori said as an afterthought. Yeah, I have a question, tell me again, why you won't help your son? Minato sighed, unfortunately, my puppet using friend, Naruto must create his own path, at his own stakes. And also, believe me when I say that I have been protecting him, 
no ninja has touched him, and won't be for some time. Besides, running from them is rather good for his stamina. Yeah, whatever personally, I still feel like gutting all of those foolish villagers and turning them into my human puppets, but whatever I guess. Later, Sasori said, shun shining away. Minato stands up from his kneeling position and puts his hand above his head. A mask appears on his face, a blinding light appears, and he vanishes. Minato appears again, this time in front of Serutobi, who already knew he was coming. Minato, long time no see. How have you been? Cut the crap Serutobi, you know why I am here. Alright, I will play along and tell Naruto I have scrolls for him, but a question if I may. Yes. Why, just why, did you include such advanced techniques? Advanced? The flying thunder god, the Rasengan, and all of its forms. Hell, just to rub it in, you added all five variations of the Rasengan when you add elemental chakra. Ah, yes that seemed necessary. Really, including the Chidori version, the wind shuriken version, geyser version, labyrinth and eruption versions. Were all of them really necessary, he should only have one element. Oh right, thank you for reminding me. I still need to lecture Kakashi-san about using that move. Perhaps he could modify it to make no noise? And some way to stop that tunnel vision, and yes, I believe that when the time comes, he will need each of them, after all, he is as much a target as I was. I believe I ranked at the top, SS in the Rock Country Bingo Book? That the primary order was to flee on sight? That you were seen as dead if you went after me? I believe that in that country, Naruto will achieve triple S and be a liable threat to the cage himself over there. Oh, and that those that saw him were to be pronounced, dead, if they saw him. You really have that much faith in him? Of course, he is my son, if he couldn't do that, then he would be disgracing my name. HN, Serutobi-sama, just, please, for me, do this. I want my son to grow up strong, after all, Minato stated, looking at the third solidly in the eyes. We both know that Iwa's secret new weapon is strong enough to destroy. Naruto had just gotten up when he heard a knock at the door. Groaning, he yelled, coming. One second. In a span of about twenty seconds, he threw on clothes and opened the door to see the Hokage standing in front of him, carrying a weird big scroll on his back. Old man, whatcha doing here at my home? What's that big thing on your back? And can I be Hokage? Naruto said, grinning. Hello Naruto, I am here because I think it's high time you started training to be a ninja. This is a scroll, and of course you can be Hokage, that's what I'm here to talk to you about. Serutobi said, proud that he had finally decided to do it. What do I have to train for? Ah, you must train to become more powerful and be able to defend you village, that is what being Hokage is all about, Naruto. Wait, I actually have to defend the villagers, will they actually like me then? Well, of course, Naruto-kun. All Hokages have been loved and respected, but you have to understand, these people are all good, they're all just afraid of you, please, even if it's only for me treat them well? Fine, Oji, but only for you. So, how will I train to get stronger? Well, it may be easier for me to explain like this. A ninja is someone that is trained in the jutsu types, from kenjutsu to taijutsu, from genjutsu to kinjutsu to ninjutsu to even fujingstu, sp. Someone trained in these arts can easily defend their village. Hmm, can you explain them to me? Certainly Naruto, kenjutsu is a form of fighting with a weapon, and although usually members only get to the most basic part, some of the more advanced versions are rather, destructive. Wow, that sounds awesome. Do you mean weapons like senbons, katanas, and dual knives? Actually, yes. How did you hear about senbons? Serutobi asked bewildered. Ya yeah, know what, I actually don't know, so what about taijutsu? Right um, taijutsu is mainly weapons involving speed and strength with your fists and body in general. Most people know the basic version of this jutsu. This form of fighting uses more physical energy than chakra, so it's a good backup and support. Some extremely powerful ninja can actually go a step further and open the gates, but you shouldn't worry about that right now. Okay old man, what's chakra? Chakra is a type of energy that develops inside you. You grow bigger reserves over time, and can use chakra for forming jutsus. You really need it for the other three types of jutsu. Okay old man. Also, could you call me Hokage-sama? It would help me concentrate more. Okay I guess, old ma I mean Hokage-sama. Geez that's gonna take a while to get used to. Right, the next one is Genjutsu. 
This form of jutsu creates illusions on other ninja, and takes excellent control over your chakra to perform. Even if you don't wish to learn genjutsu, you should learn to release yourself from it. Next is kinjutsu. These are restricted jutsu, don't use them unless you know the consequences, Naruto, because a lot of these have great power, but can kill the user. Naruto shuddered, right, after all. What's the point of doing a jutsu if it kills you? Nice to know that you won't misuse it. The next one is Fujinsu, it envovels seals and such. Like sealing a monster away or sealing a weapon in a scroll. Eventually if you get powerful enough, you can actually create transportation uses with it, although very few people get to that point. Hmm. Sounds like a lame form of fighting, but whatever. I'm going to master them all. What's next? Good, and the last one is ninjutsu. Ninjutsu is the most common one used. It involves bringing your chakra to any point on your body and changing the chakra into some sort of energy and either protecting, creating, or destroying something in the process. What do you mean by protecting, creating and destroying? Ah, I'll let the teacher I assign you to tell you. Ah, when will that be? In a few years, don't worry, you will be plenty busy till then. First, before I even get into all of that, I have a question of you, Naruto-kun, the Hokage said, staring right into Naruto's eyes with a serious look. Why yes Hokage-sama? Do you want to be the best ninja you can? Why yes. Will you do everything you can to be the best ninja you can? H hi. Well then, Naruto. I have another question for you, of the jutsu types that I showed you, which would you like to train right now? Ga, so many choices. What do you recommend, ol I mean Hokage-sama? Well, since your chakra reserves are quite big but you aren't going to be able to use them for a while, I recommend you train your taijutsu and kenjutsu first, then switch to training full on ninjutsu in a year or so. What about kenjutsu, genjutsu and fujinjutsu? Naruto, I already told you, never train with kenjutsu until you have become old enough and know the consequences. Serutobi said with a solemn voice. As for genjutsu and fujinjutsu. I have already done some estimates as to which you will be able to learn easier. Due to your high chakra, it can already be inferred that you will have bad control. Thus, as genjutsu requires perfect control, it is out of the option. At most, I may teach you, or get a teacher to teach you how to release yourself from it. As to fujinjutsu, currently, in Konoha, the highest sealer level we have is a level 3, and that person is futile in most of their creations, although I will of course, still send you to learn from them in the future. Oh okay, so who's going to be my teacher for taijutsu and kenjutsu? Hey, well for taijutsu you are going to get the best we have. Made a guy, taijutsu specialist of Konoha, he was once able to take on 300 soldiers by himself when we were once in war, and the other ninja he fought were all very dangerous, every last one of them, and yet he still came out without a scratch. The reason he can train you is because he got injured on his last mission so he can only run 500 laps around Konoha in 2 hours, rather than 20 minutes. Thus he will be teaching until his strength fully recovers. Scary. What about Kenjutsu? For that, I am going to have to call in for a favor of the mist, but I trust this ninja. His name is Zabuza Momochi of the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist, a powerful group of swordsmen that reside in the mist village. He sounds, mysterious. Yes. Currently he is living in exile as he tried to assassinate the cage, although he was a good man to do it. He has two disciples known as the Demon Brothers that follow him around, and he also has an adoptive daughter named Haku. I believe you two will get along. Also, I hope you will be okay with them, as they are being hunted for and are in dire need of a village to reside in. Of course Hokage-sama. Right, as to your ninjutsu training, your teacher will be a man that you will be talking to quite often in the future I imagine. Who who who? Hataki Kakashi, the legendary copy cat ninja. He is the only one outside of the Uchiha family that has mastered over 1000 jutsu. A a amazing. Thank you so much Hokage-sama. You're welcome, Naruto. Another thing though, I will be assigning other teachers for you as well, for different subjects, so please, keep up with everybody. Serutobi asked, wondering about the shadow clone jutsu on a second thought. Hi, Hokage-sama. Naruto, please, call me by my name at the very most, my real name is Serutobi. Thank you Serutobi-sama, that's better, and Naruto? Yes? You had better train well, understand? Hi? Naruto. Said a voice. HN? Who the hell? Ugh, maybe they'll leave me alone if I just sleep. 
Naruto thought. Naruto. They said again. The voice sounded different this time, like a guy was speaking. Damn. Guess no sleep for me. Maybe if I turn over a bit like I'm still sleeping. Naruto Uzamaki. Screamed some banshee. Naruto bolted out of bed, practically shot up and head butted the ceiling before falling rather ungratefully to his bed with a sour look on his face. What damn it. Who the hell wakes someone up like that 6 a.m. in the morning? Why little Dobie, me of course, said a Anbu unit with a snake mask. She looked rather murderous, even with the mask hiding most of her features. Ah, you might want to take what you said back, Naruto-san, said the man next to her. He had one eye sealed with a mask, gray hair jutted out one side, and his Konoha headband was draped on the side. In his hand he had a book labeled, Icha Icha Paradise, SP. Next to him stood another man, and next to him stood a blushing girl. The man next to the one-eyed guy was tall, also had a mask, what's with the mosques, and a huge sword slung on his back. The girl looked rather cute, with sleek black hair and poraclane, sp. skin. She stood a bit shorter than Naruto, and had a blushing face, and was shaking slightly for suppressing her laughter at Naruto. She wore a civilian kimono, but was definitely a starting ninja, by the way she moved, and the fact that she was twiddling with a senbon. No she's not offing herself. A guy with a demon mask peered into the room and shouted, Everything okay in there, Zabuza-sama? Yeah Kepi, it's alright, the guy with the sword said. Alright, said another guy with an identical mask to the first said, popping his head into the doorway from the opposite side of the first guy. Who the what the? Naruto stuttered, in shock by all the people that were in his apartment. The Hokage wants to see you, kid. The Anbu said, starting to pull of her snake mask. Wait. And I mean, snake, you know you aren't supposed to. Cyclops guy started, holding up a hand for emphasis. Ah shut up Cyclops. Kid, my name is Anko Mitarashi, of the Janin. Anko said, completely taking off her mask. She had a, I'm going to either kill you or kiss you, you guess, sadistic smile on her face, and when she opened her eyes from the smile, she had a cold-edged look in her eyes. Well, since this is where we're doing all the formalities, my name is Hataki Kakashi, and I'm going to be your ninjutsu teacher. Kakashi said, never taking his eyes off his book. Ah, what's that book about? Why, this. This is a masterpiece of literature. Ah, in other words, it's a book. And what's with the mask, you have no mouth or something. Kakashi said, with tick marks on his head. Ha, ya know what? I think I like this teme. Anko laughed, waving a random kanai that seemed to appear out of nowhere. Who are you, kid? Cyclops said dully. I am Naruto Uzumaki, future Hokage, Naruto shouted. Hmm, as I already said, my name is Hataki Kakashi, I am going to be your ninjutsu teacher. I don't have many things I dislike, since disliking, or even being too emotional as a ninja can lead to death. You don't really need to know my dislikes. The other two that hadn't spoken sweat dropped, and the big guy with the sword started to talk. My name is Zabuza, my last name is Irreverent, and I was from the Mist Village. I am still acknowledged as a swordsman of the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist, but otherwise, I am in exile. The two from outside are my apprentices, Kepi and Arrow, they alone are the survivors of the coup that I started, that is, besides me and Haku here, Zabuza said with a chilly yet patient voice, motioning to Haku afterwards. Hello, my name is Haku. I like snow and bunnies. It's too hot here for snow though, but there's a lot more bunnies. Even if they're brown instead of white. Zabuza is my papi, and I love him so. I will be starting with you as a student in the academy, although my abilities are enough to nearly be chunin. I would appreciate it if you didn't expose my abilities in the class. Haku said, twirling her senbon in the air when she mentioned her abilities throwing it without looking and hitting a rat that was crawling about 15 feet away. She picked up the senbon and hemmed. I just missed the heart. Too bad. I don't own Hannah. Also, I will be staying here and eventually I want to marry someone and have a family and all. I hope there are some cute boys in the village, although I'm sure none will be equivalent to you. She said, winking at the end. Well well, this is all nice and cute, but let's go kitties, we're off to see the wizard. I mean, air the Hokage. Anko yelled in a sing-along voice. Air, thanks, just give me a sec to put on some clothes. Naruto said, looking for his orange jumpsuit. Are you kidding kid? 
We got you some clothes for the academy, Hokage sama's orders, Kakashi said, throwing a jacket to Naruto. The jacket was black with the same marking swirl as was on Naruto's jumpsuit, it had a pocket or two on the inside as well, for weapons. He also caught a pair of shorts, and a shirt that had on it in Japanese, property of Konoha. Ah oh, thanks. Can I have five minutes? Naruto said, looking around at all the people. Fifteen minutes later. Gotta admit kid, I'm impressed, Anko said, checking her breath. Yeah well, I was excited to see Sarutobi-san. Naruto replied, also out of breath which wasn't surprising considering the fact that he had been running with a few Jonin who were going at top speed and making them work to keep up with Naruto. Ah uh, Naruto, you're supposed to call him, Hokage-sama, Kakashi said with a raised eyebrow. Yeah well he told me to call him that. Then the mist ninja finally caught up, all of them out of breath as well. Haku for one looked up in awe at the huge tower. That's where your cage resides. Yeah, ready to meet him? You bet. Haku said, pulling along Zabuza and the demon brothers into the tower, opening the doors without a thought. In a flash, a kanai was brought to her throat, and the demon brothers both had a blade an inch away from stabbing the two Chunin guards that had tried to surround them. Zabuza had a ninja caught in the hole of his massive blade and another in the half-blade part, his neck caught against the wall. Zabuza also had a kanai around the secretary's neck, who was screaming profanities. Kakashi walked in and sweat dropped. Kakashi-san, there are mist nin intruders, please help dispose of them. One of the chunin that was about to be stabbed by Kepi gasped out. Air, if you ninjas will all calmly drop your weapons now. Because for Kami's sake, you are all on the same side here, Kakashi said. All the ninja did something like scratching their heads, and simultaneously put down their weapons. Zabuza however, continued to hold up the secretary in the air by her pigtail, and she was still screaming profanities, although now she was blushing furiously for some strange apparent reason. Excuse me, Kakashi-san. May I please stab her? I promise that it will be quick, Zabuza said, pleading. Err, not a good idea Zabuza, please refrain from killing the secretary. Oh alright. Well hun, since I'm not going to be killing you, I guess I might as well tell you some stuff, Zabuza said, bringing the girl back on her feet. I'm 14 inches, Mist Village has a gene going through the people. Zabuza whispered in the girl's ear, who blushed furiously, then ran back into her chair and sat down. Kakashi and Anko both sweat dropped, although Anko also blushed in lust a bit, and the Chunin all also sweat dropped, leading them into the Hokage's workroom. They all entered the room to find that there were already some people standing there. A man with a questioning look on his face. To his left stood a woman that seemed to be fawning over him, she had purple hair and a mischievous grin. Next to her stood a man in an awful green spandex, with a sparkling grin, a bowl-cut hairdo, and huge eyebrows. Brow man was talking to a man younger than the rest there, and he had black eyes that, upon seeing Naruto, turned red with little balls inside momentarily, then they turned back to black. Lastly stood a woman with long curly hair and red eyes. She seemed to look straight through Naruto. Back quote. At the desk sat the Hokage, and all the other ninja present went quiet, awaiting his order. Hello Naruto, said the Hokage in a calm voice. Hello Serutobi-san. Who are all these people? Naruto replied, looking around at all the assembled people. Ah, I believe it would be better if they introduced themselves. Go ahead everyone. I hope your times as ninja has not impaired your social skills, Serutobi said, motioning to the surrounding ninja. My name is Hayate, said the man with no superior features beside his questioning glance. I am a Kenjutsu specialist, and I will be monitoring as a proctor at our Chunin exams in a few years. My name is Yugo Azuki, little cutie. I specialize in stealth, said the lady with purple hair and the mischievous grin. Yash. My name is Mike Guy. I shall be training you in igniting your flames of youth with my huge wind. The spandex one yelled at the top of his lungs, giving the sparkly teeth smile and the thumbs up. My name is Uchiha Itachi, said the one on the side, giving no expression whatsoever. My name is Yuhi Kuranai. I am pleased to meet you, said the one with the curly hair and red eyes, flashing a smile at the end of her introduction. My name is Mitarashi Anko, sexy snake mistress of Konoha, Anko yelled. And I am Hataki Kakashi. There's a lot of things I dislike, and my likes are of no interest, Kakashi said while reading his book, turning a page. 
I am Zabuza, and I am a member of the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist. I am Haku. I like bunnies and snow. I am Kepi, said one of the Demon Brothers. And I am Arrow, said the other. An. I realize now since I searched it up, the Demon Brothers actually do have given names, but for the sake of the story, I'm leaving the names as Kepi and Arrow. All right then, why don't you introduce yourself, Naruto, Serutobi said. Right, my name is Uzumaki Naruto, and I am nine years old. Fair enough. Now then, Naruto, these are most of Konoha's top janin that will teach you are assembled, and these that are with you are the Mist Nin. If I may, Hokage-sama, we prefer the term, former Mist Nin. Of course. Anyways, I have called you all here as I did before with Itachi when he was Naruto's age because they both show great promise. Great promise? Excuse me, Serutobi-san, but is he really the ah, person we want to be trained by our top janin? Said a woman that appeared from the shadows. Yes, now leave, your place is on the council, not here. Serutobi said in a stern voice to the woman who bowed and left. Anyways, as I was saying, Naruto has showed promise in a different way than Itachi when he was younger, his incredible endurance and energy. This boy ran with Anko all the way from District 14, and managed to make Anko have to catch her breath. I believe that if we teach this child, we will have another aspiring ninja to help the village. All the Konoha nin nodded, and Itachi looked at Naruto as a bull would look at a cow. Naruto, your teachers will be the following. Mike Guy shall be your taijutsu teacher. Yugo shall teach you the art of stealth on the side. Zabuza and Hayate shall teach you Kenjutsu. Although Zabuza will teach you more, Hayate still was taught by rather good Kenjutsu specialists. Your Ninjutsu teacher shall be Kakashi and Itachi, as both are good due to their sharing in but both are also members of the Anbu, so thus will be out often on missions. Anko shall teach you speed and endurance, although it's obvious that you don't really need it much. And lastly, Kurinai shall teach you Genjutsu. This shall go on for a year and a half, until you start at the academy. Any questions? Yes actually, how in the world is he supposed to keep up with all of us? Kurinai asked skeptically. Well, the first technique I shall teach him is the shadow clone jutsu, so he can train more, Serutobi said. Wait, but that's a kinjutsu to his non-existent ranking, Kurinai shouted. Don't worry about it, Kurinai-san. I am sure that Serutobi-san has a plan, Naruto said confidently. Boy, who said we were so friendly? Aren't you supposed to call me sensei? Kurinai said, eyes flashing. Yes, but Kurinai-san, you haven't taught me anything yet, and yet we have been introduced, thus you have the suffix, san right now. Naruto said with a cheeky smile. Yes, actually, for the next year and a half, Naruto shall be a sub janin He will be able to access any jutsu you all learn. Think of it as an internship of sorts, as you all will be on a side a ranked mission for a year and a half, to teach Naruto. Right, said Kurinai blushing a bit that she, the Ice Queen of Konoha, had been so easily surprised by the little kid. All right, then, as there is no time to waste, I may as well teach you, Naruto, how to use Shadow Clone Jutsu. Everybody else, stay and observe how he learns in order to help how you teach him. Now then, Naruto, the basic concept is, Serutobi started. Twenty minutes later, Cage Bushin no Jutsu, Naruto shouted. Fifty puffs of smoke appeared, and fifty Naruto's appeared. Incredible, he mastered an A-rank Jutsu in under twenty minutes, shouted Anko. Everyone else yelled something similar, although some of the others including Itachi merely looked on in curiosity. Yash! The flames of youth burn brightly in this one. Guy shouted at the top of his lungs. Well now, that wasn't very much now was it? One second, Serutobi-san. Let me make two hundred or so, Naruto said dead serious. No, no that's all right. You get it now? Serutobi told the gaping Janins. Why yeah, I guess so. Well then, Naruto, I hope to see you soon. We are dismissed, right? Hayate said. Of course, you are all dismissed. Minus the former Mist Nin and Naruto of course, said Serutobi. All of the Konoha Junin nodded, bowed, and left, either by Shun Shin or simply walking out, until only Naruto and the former Mist Nin were remaining. All right then, first of all, Naruto, I have present for you for when you become a genin rank, Serutobi began, getting out of his seat and walking back towards a vault. He pricked himself with a kanai and, using the blood, opened the vault. Three glowing chains emerged 
but didn't do anything. Then Seru Tobi pulled out an enormous scroll, no doubt filled with incredible secrets. This is your future present, Naruto. The fourth Hokage told me early on to give this to any particular aspiring ninja that caught my eye, and to teach them the jutsu that are within this scroll. There are incredibly powerful jutsu in here, Naruto, capable of completely leveling Konoha. That is why I haven't given you it yet, Serutobi stated, seeing Naruto's jaw drop, rise to retort, and then drop again. Also, these jutsu are incredibly taxing, and so I wouldn't wonder if you flat out passed out from using only one of these at your current chakra level. But think of getting to Genin rank a goal now, Naruto. Good luck, Serutobi stated, grinning as he put the scroll away. Naruto's first day with Guy Naruto awoke the next morning with a grin on his face. He was ready for his training to become Hokage, to imagine. He was waaaay smarter than he was a week ago when he had that conversation with who his senseis would be, and now, he would get much more powerful too. For the past few days, he had been creating shadow clones, and under the supervision of a clone of the Hokage, he had gone into the library containing all the known information on being a ninja, including clans and such. Naruto was going to dispel all of the clones at once, but the Hokage freaked out and stopped him, telling him that all the information consumed might kill him, and so Naruto dispelled them slowly, before finally collapsing from exhaustion. The days after, he had gone with a clone of the Hokage again, this time, to the park, and Serutobi had shown him how to walk up a tree. Naruto was astonished at first, then eager to try, and then depressed when he couldn't seem to get it for some reason. Serutobi then said that he should continue practicing this simple exercise whenever he could, and to come back to him when he finally mastered the technique completely, to the point in which he could stay on the tree for an hour. After his shower, he ran to training ground 34, where he had been told to meet Guy. The guards outside of it were skeptical due to his age, but they allowed him to go in upon learning he was a sub janin He went in and his heart skipped a beat. The place was incredible. Just in front of him was a 50-foot-wide chasm with random weapons that seemed to drop from the sky, attacking anything that tried to get across. In the middle of the chasm stood an island type of place with a punching bag that had 10x gravity jutsu on it. On his left were 15 straw dummies that seemed to move around when attacked, and further than that stood a pole that was to be attacked. The numerous trees around all had huge punch marks on them from when previous people had punched them, and on his right stood Guy clearing another 50 food chasm, although this one had explosive notes that fell out of the sky and an iron swinging ball that was in the middle of the island. Holy crap, said Naruto. Naruto's first day with Yugo. Naruto woke up at noon from his slumber. It had been a pain in the butt to work with Guy on the first day, because for some reason, Guy thought that doing 300 push-ups was something anyone could do. When Naruto finished showering, he looked outside and yelled, shit. At the stealth dojo, Yugo was pacing around, thinking consistently, what the hell is taking that kid so long? When a prank came to her mind, so grinning mischievously, she ran to get the supplies. Fifteen minutes later Naruto ran to the doors, panting for breath, hands on his knees. He opened the door to the dojo and saw practically nothing. On his the sides of the room was shadow, making it impossible to see anything but the thing in the light. The thing in the light was a delicious looking bun glistening in the sunlight that was peering through a single window. Naruto looked this way then that, wondering where Yugo was. Finally, satisfied, he went up to grab a bun. As soon as his hand touched the bun, he flew into the wall on the side, and when he could see straight again, Yugo was there, holding the bun that he had tried to eat. Tch tch little baka. You weren't stealthy enough I'm afraid. Now then, you are to stay here the entire day in here, let's see if you finally manage to get a bun. Yugo smirked, making a hand seal making the door shut with a seal on the door. After she sealed up the door, she vanished again. Ah, what the heck? Naruto said, staring at the buns. Yugo appeared once again, and this time set up with a lawn chair and a bowl of miso and beef ramen. Well Naruto, you hungry or what? First day with Zabuza and Hayate. The next day, Naruto woke up early in the middle of the night with a starved stomach. Damn, thought Naruto. Freaking Yugo sensei, starving me for a day while she ate ramen and buns. He yawned and half dragging himself, walked over to his fridge to get some food out. When he opened it though, he saw a note. Hi Naruto-kun. 
thought that you wouldn't mind if I took some food for training your stealth. Have a good day, from, Yugo. Naruto groaned. No wonder those chips and green beans she brought out eventually looked so familiar. Well, I guess there's no avoiding it. I guess I'm going to have to go out a freaking 2 a.m. for food. Naruto thought while he shuffled himself over to the door and opened it. Outside his window, a ninja wearing a mask with a fog design on it disappeared. Naruto wandered around Konoha, knowing full well that the ramen place he always went to was closed at such late an hour. Finally, he saw the local 24-hour supermarket, and it was the one supermarket that didn't care that he was the so-called demon, instead being particularly kind to him, especially the owner, a busty woman named Chi-Chi Tufu. Anyways, as soon as he entered, he rushed to the instant ramen selling place, then at high speeds, grabbed a pork-flavored 24-pack, 20% off with Ninja Mark card, and appeared at the cashier register. Tufu's daughter, Tai was monitoring the cashier when, in her point of view, Naruto just appeared suddenly. Ah! screamed Tai, before shutting her mouth and calming down a bit. How did you appear so fast, Naruto-san? She asked, reminding herself that she was 14, not 10. Really? I appeared? Huh, well I've been taking some classes from tutors on ninja stuff. Really? Yeah, it's fun learning the stuff, but the teachers are way too tough. Huh, that's nice, anyways, a pack of 24 pork ramen, right? Yeah, that's it. How much for it? Suddenly, the door burst open and out of the smoke emerged the man from earlier with the fog mask. Who the heck are you? And you're going to have to pay for that door sir, Tai yelled at the man. Quiet, civilian. I am here looking for a man by the name of Zabuza. If you know who he is, it would be in your best interest to tell me where he is, the ninja said harshly. Zabuza. I know him, what do you want from him, said Naruto in a strangely calm voice. I am here to kill him, as he is in the bingo book for 200,000 Ryu, and I could really use that money, the ninja fibbed. Well sorry, but he is NFS, not, for, sale, Naruto replied preparing himself in case the man attacked. Well then, do greatly apologize, but in that case, you must die as well, replied the nin, pulling out a katana. In an instant, his chakra surged, and the blade became imbued with a strange energy-like vapor that seemed to merge with the blade. The katana changed until the blade part shifted into a heavier, more durable form, and the hilt became larger as well. The nin surged his chakra, bringing his killing intent high, and Naruto stepped in front of Tai to protect her, even though she had already fainted. The nin grinned at Naruto, sure that he would be able to rip straight through him, grinning up to the point in which his head was completely cut off by a massive sword swung by Zabuza. Naruto gaped at the efficiency that his sensei wielded the sword, which, as soon as the bounty hunter's head flew off, returned back strapped onto his back. Hey, Naruto-san. How goes it? Zabuza said casually, as if he saved his student from assassins every day. W who? A bounty hunter, sent to collect my head for the mist no doubt. Idiot was no doubt high Chunin level on power, yet low Genin level on intelligence. You don't try to kill a Junin level Nin as a Chunin level Nin, and you don't sneak into other villages and have that much killer intent, would you like to begin training? Zabuza said. But, we can't just leave the store like this, ah, right. Let me take this out, Zabuza grunted, pressing a seal on his left bicep that had the kanji for money on it, taking out a huge bag of Ryu and throwing it on the ground. There, let's go now, unless you would like to flirt with your girlfriend, Zabuza teased. She's just a friend, sheesh, Naruto replied with blushing cheeks, creating a clone to drop off his ramen packages at his apartment. Zabuza led the boy to training ground 57, where there was, once again, a skeptical Chunin guard at the ready. Zabuza led Naruto into the area, which looked like nothing special, just normal pre-forest land and flat ground. This is training ground 57, the one I like the most, do you want to know why, kid? Why sensei? Because of this, Zabuza said, slicing apart the nearest trees within 20 yards and returning to the spot again. He held up his fingers and counted down. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 the trees return to normal. This is called the regeneration grounds, all that you can destroy here instantly repairs itself within 5 seconds, making it the perfect place to go all out at the terrain, Zabuza said. W-whoa, that's intense. Naruto gaped. 
Now then kid, if you are to master Kenjutsu, you must know something that every aspiring swordsman knows. But I thought I was a ninja, not a samurai. Kid, there is a big difference between a swordsman and a samurai, and if I was any other member of the seven swordsmen, your head would be flying by now, Zabuza threatened. Anyways, as I was saying, every single person has their own DNA, their own chakra fingerprint, their own element, and also, their own sword release. Sorry, sensei, but did you just say sword release? Naruto asked, skeptical. Here, allow me to demonstrate, Zabuza said with a grin. He took his sword in both hands, and, pointing it at a tree, bellowed something that wasn't any normal language. In a flash, his sword changed, becoming smaller and condensing, the hilt and blade adopting a darkish brown color. Eventually the hilt just disappeared and Zabuza was holding a blade that was about half as small as his original, with blue flames blowing off of it. This, kid, is my release, and it is faster and stronger than my normal one. Allow me to demonstrate, he said, disappearing. Zabuza slashed from top to bottom one tree and that. A mere blur while slashing apart this tree then that. Until eventually he returned to where Naruto was standing, dumbstruck. See that is what a sword release is kid. A manifestation of your chakra that changes your blade in any way that suits you. And as I am naturally an assassin, my blade grew smaller, stronger, and faster. Although yours will definitely look different. The only real drawback of releasing your sword is that it eats at your chakra, depending how powerful your blade is. Now, in the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist, we can all release our swords, really, just most of the time, in order to keep up face, we don't use them, unless it's a last resort. Zabuza said, panting as he relinquished his blade from the chakra, turning it back to normal. Tomorrow Hayate and I will let you practice trying to manifest your energy into your blade, and eventually you will have a sword release. Just I don't know when. Don't get your hopes up though, it took me many years to final. Um, Zabuza sensei, I do not have a katana, really? Well then, take this, Zabuza said, taking out a scroll and throwing a sword to Naruto. The sword seemed to only be half of an ordinary sword, with intricate carvings all over. That is a rune blade, it helps to channel your energies, if you are able to find the other half to this blade in specific, the dragon blade. Well I really don't know what will happen, something good no doubt, Zabuza said. Oh, and so you don't get bored of Kenjutsu. Let me show you a move I have learned, Zabuza said, preparing his sword in a quick draw fashion. Kenjutsu. Air bullet. Zabuza bellowed, thrusting his sword straight, firing off ball-like pressurized air shot, which hit the nearest tree and plowed through it and the one behind it before exploding. I left a scroll at your house with a shadow clone. I expect you will refrain from putting too much force behind it when using it on a fellow ninja. Zabuza said, concluding the lesson by shushining away to leave Naruto to his thoughts. Naruto's first day with training Kenjutsu Naruto woke up, and immediately wrote down his dreams, as the Hokage had recommended. He didn't really know why the Hokage wanted him to write down his dreams, but he did it anyways. Today, he remembered a slight voice in his head, urging him to do something, but he didn't know what he was supposed to do. Today was supposed to be his day with Zabuza and Hayate, but since Zabuza had taught him that move last night. Naruto shuddered a bit, remembering how he had thrown up later at remembering how that bounty hunter's head had just flown off, the first person he'd ever seen die. Anyways, Naruto got up and stretched a bit, before walking up a wall to open his chakra a bit. When he felt satisfied, he got back to normal ground and created 15 shadow clones. Right then, you three on the far right, practice taijutsu against each other, then later, split up and rotate from sparring to punching hard objects, as it will break the tissue in your fists, then rebuild afterwards, stronger than before. When doing all the stuff, don't hit too hard, or you might be dispelled. You three over on the far left, your orders are to go to the library to search up things regarding ninjutsu. Take my copy of the sub Jonin status with you, so you don't get hassled. You three on the middle left also, go with them, but search up techniques for taijutsu, and one of you be sure to look up the history of clan dujutsus and such. Also, none of you disperse at the same time, otherwise, my head will implode. Now then, you three on the middle right, go to the stealth dojo and train each other. Both train your trapping abilities and your stealth abilities, now go. You two on the sides, go to Serutobi-san and try to find anything about the dragon sword, but don't bug him too much. If all else fails, search out Zabuza-sensei and Hayate-sensei. What about me, boss? 
said the last clone in the middle. You and I shall spar, Naruto said with a slight smile. Right then, let's go to the training ground 57. I have a feeling that we might cause damage if we just sparred in the park. Later, after the day of training, right then, it's 5 p.m., and the clones should disperse themselves with four minutes each, being done at 6 p.m., Naruto said to himself, sweating as he grabbed the hilt of his sword. He had finally managed to do the air bullet kenjutsu, but for some reason, it didn't have as much damage as Zabaza's, and so he was currently controlling it and trying to fine-tune his attack. The scroll had said it was simple, by imagining a ball of energy swirling then the ball landing on his blade, the user, Naruto, should put his sword into both hands and hold it toward the intended target with both hands, then thrusting forward, and imagining the ball flying off like a gunshot at the target. So far, he had been able to do it six times, and the tree that he had used had been, at most three inches broken from the drilling impact then the tree would explode from the finishing portion of the attack, but it still couldn't compare to Zabaza's attack. Damn. What am I doing wrong? Naruto shouted, once again thrusting his blade at the tree from 20 feet away. The bullet hit the tree with strong drilling force, but from what Naruto could see, the bullet only left about two inches gone from the tree. Suddenly, two kunai flew at his head, and three at his side. Without even looking, Naruto swerved his head back, then did a little hop to avoid the other kunai. Seeing that he was in midair, his clone threw kunai at the air, knowing that he wouldn't be able to maneuver. However, Naruto simply created a shadow clone, and stepped off the clone's back to create a mid-air jump. Sheesh, don't forget that I'm real, not a clone K. Naruto said to the clone that had thrown the kanai. You should be able to avoid the kanai rather easily now, although I can see a slight delay in how fast you created the shadow clone. Hmm, I'll have to fix that later. Alright then, how does my air bullet look? Unsatisfactory, the drilling portion of that move would barely be enough to dispel me. That is troubling. Yes, I believe that you are holding back too much for it to be effective, and besides, it isn't like your chakra control is the best, even with Kenjutsu. Right then, one moment please, the clone regarding in Kenjutsu styles should be dispelling soon. Right, the clone found that for me, the best type of Kenjutsu is the spinning butterfly, sounds kinda girly, but whatever. What Naruto did not notice, however, was that in the nearby trees there were two different people. One of them was Zabuza, who was channeling chakra into the tree to make it harder, and another ninja from Konoha, wearing a mask, but not an Anbu mask. Neither one was aware of the other. Later that night, however, Naruto was sitting in his bed, writing in a notebook that the Hokage had given him earlier. On the notebook, there was a picture of a man doing multiple movements, while holding a sword, Naruto scratched his head and scowled, muttering to himself, this isn't correct though, there shouldn't be a vertical strike at all in this kenjutsu form, I suppose I could always modify the stance so it works better for me, Naruto muttered, now creating multiple people at different points, using decoys, acting as levers, acting as shields, acting as sword holders. Oh well, I suppose now I should work on modifying that taijutsu guy sensei showed me on the first day, the tiger palm, I wonder, could I modify that? Naruto wondered, turning to a new page and now sketching out a hand, the fingers folded back, the palm in front. Naruto's first day with Itachi and Kakashi Naruto was immediately slapped awake by his clone, and grumbling, stupid training, woke up to go to the training ground 57, where the ninjutsu teachers, Itachi and Kakashi would be waiting. Naruto immediately grabbed his pack labeled, ninjutsu training, and started towards the training grounds. Before that, however, he created 16 clones. All of you have my memory, correct? Naruto asked, to receive a nod from the clones. Good, now then, all of you do what I did yesterday, with the same orders for where you are. Now then cage bush and no jutsu. Naruto shouted again, this time creating 50 shadow clones. Alright then, you 20 over there, go to Gai Sensei today for training. You 10 over there, train Kenjutsu today. Over there, you 10, train with Yugo for today, and you 5, train the Kenjutsu stances I learned yesterday. The rest of you, go to the library with the group that has my sub Jonan pass, and research as much as you can on each of the villages. All of you will start dispersing at approximately 4.54, each per minute in order regarding how important I, or you guys, think the task is. You should all be done dispersing by 6 o'clock, you all have your orders, now go. Naruto sighed as the clones left. 
He then headed towards the 57th training grounds to wait for his senseis. He would wait there for three hours. While Naruto waited for his two senseis, he trained his new stances and such. At first, he simply tried the stances he remembered his clone searching up. Then, a thought occurred to him. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. Naruto shouted, and his right hand in the tiger seal, created 30 clones, all of which immediately each drew a sword. All right then, all of you, go full force at me using only Kenjutsu. If you can use the air bullet against me, use it, don't hold back. Naruto said, pulling out his own blade and concentrating on it. He could feel the normal weight going on the very edge of the sword, buckling a bit as he added more energy to the weight. In one fluid slash, Naruto hurled the weight at the concentration of clones, and immediately charged behind the sphere. As soon as one of the clones dodged the sphere, they would receive a blade to the face, then a slash through the leg, finally a stab through the chest. Naruto kept charging behind the sphere until he could feel the pressure inside of the sphere start to overcome his will, and then he jumped back, twirling the blade with him clockwise. As soon as Naruto landed, the other clones attacked, the first one charged straight at him with a stab aimed at his head, and Naruto jumped up and kicked off of the clone's arm, jumping over the clone and doing a backwards thrust with his sword in a tanfa position. Look it up, the sword went straight through the clone, and after a split millisecond, the clone dispelled. Well then, Naruto stated, looking at all of his clones, who had begun to surround him. Immediately, three swords went at the small of his back, but Naruto sprinted forwards towards a clone, throwing kanai at the three clones that had tried to stab him in the back. He then ducked a horizontal slash and, going underneath the clone's guard, stabbed through the clone. Man, all that crazy training from Guy Sensei, and what he said about all the releasing your youthfulness, really worked. Despite the fact of how much it hurt, Naruto thought, recalling how Guy had given him the thumbs up and said that he knew a way to release Naruto's strength, or in other words, make him stronger. Naruto once again concentrated a ball of energy onto the edge of his rune blade, and then prepared to throw it at the mass of clones again. At the same time, however, he was also slicing through this blade, defending, parrying, everything he could to make sure his kenjutsu was top-notch. Finally, he kicked off of the chest of a clone, who stumbled into the remaining clones, pulling all of them down, and launched his concentrated air bullet at the clones. Kenjutsu. Air bullet. Naruto shouted, thrusting his sword at the clones. Unless you had a very good vision, or a dujutsu of some sort, you would not have seen the ball of energy flying rapidly towards the group of clones. When the ball hit, it drilled through two of the clones and exploded, dispelling ten more. Naruto did a quick head count. Twenty-six. That was how many he had managed to dispel. He then looked down at his watch. It was 4.52, so only a few minutes before his clones would start to dispel, which meant that the clones that he had sent regarding the spinning butterfly would soon dispel, giving him the knowledge he needed about the Kenjutsu form. Itachi and Kakashi watched from the nearby trees of training ground 57, while they were silently discussing the ways that they should train this new potential ninja. Both had a sharing and active, and were watching rather attentively. Naruto was currently in the creeping lotus stance, original idea, that Guy had told him and shown him about. He now knew how to do it as if he had 20 days worth of training, as his clones had all dispelled by now. The creeping lotus stance implied multiple subtle glancing blows, making it seem that the user of the technique was weak, until, as soon as the user had analyzed the target enough, did a five-finger pressure palm to the middle of the belly of the person that the creeping lotus stance user was fighting. The stance stressed that the five-finger pressure palm was used with full force, as the person would get their hand into tiger stance's hand, with their fingers poking out, and then sink the palm into the stomach of the attacked person. The user would then flip their hands while the attacked person was reeling, or shocked in pain, and then rip up, grabbing the attacked person's ribcage and pulling up. The effect of the creeping lotus was incredibly frightening, as the initial stage in which the taijutsu moves were all sloppy and terrible were actual moves from other stances. Meaning that if a person were fighting a user of the creeping lotus, they might assume that they were fighting a newbie to the tiger stance, crane stance, hubby stance, e. t. c. making the creeping lotus a deadly taijutsu. Itachi and Kakashi knew what it was, as they both had fought Guy many times and thus knew all about his little tricky taijutsus, but didn't expect Naruto to be able to learn it so quickly. You two may as well come out now, 
the clone studying the effects of dujutsu dispelled, and he found out exactly how a person feels when they are being spied on by a dujutsu. Now get out here! Naruto shouted, once again taking his rune blade out of his sheath. Very impressive, Naruto-san. However you may want to be a bit more subtle. What if we had been assassins? Itachi asked, turning off his Sharingan while Kakashi pulled up his headband. Then you would be dead, or find yourself surrounded by clones, Naruto said, dispelling. The two Jonin looked around surprised. Even the Sharingan hadn't picked out something odd. Suddenly, the area was filled with clones, all of them having an air bullet ready to fire, and Naruto sat on top of a tree branch nearby, chewing one of the senbons that Haku had given him. Hmm. My first impression of Jonin is that, Naruto said thoughtfully, is that they are overrated. Naruto finished, giving the two ninja a huge smile. Immediately, Kakashi replied, Hmm, first impression of you is that, you are very annoying. I get that a lot, you two are my ninjutsu trainers, right? Naruto asked. Yes, we are going to be your instructors for ninjutsu, Itachi said in a monotone voice. Hmm, very well. One quick moment then, Naruto said, preparing his hands into a ram seal. Itachi and Kakashi tensed when Naruto disappeared, and reappeared directly in front of the two ninja. The Shunshin, how do you already know that? Kakashi asked. You would be surprised at what one can learn at the library, now then, what will we be learning, Kakashi-san and Itachi-san? Well, it's rather customary for you to refer to us as sensei. I will call you such when you teach me something, as I told Kurunai-san, now then, what will I be learning today? Naruto pressed. Naruto, today we originally planned to teach you such moves as the Shunshin, but it is rather obvious that you don't need such simple moves. Tell me, have you found out what your chakra element is? Itachi asked. Well, now that I think about it, I haven't really thought about that, Naruto said with a smile, scratching his head. Kakashi face vaulted, damn that kid had mood swings. Well then, that is what we shall cover today, your element and two jutsu, a defensive and offensive jutsu to use. Okay, well, how do we find out what element I have? Naruto asked. Here, one second, I believe I have it in my teaching scroll, Itachi said, pulling out numerous scrolls while Kakashi and Naruto watched. Kakashi sweat dropping at how many scrolls, Naruto looking at the weird labels as he opened his own little pack, putting some of Itachi's scrolls in his pack. Finally, Itachi got one that said on it, teaching, and summoned a piece of paper. He then handed the piece of paper to Naruto. Here, try to channel your chakra into this paper, if it crinkles. You have lightning, if it crumbles. Earth, if it gets wet. Water, if it splits. Wind, and if it catches fire. Fire, Itachi said. Of course, I kinda doubt you will be able to simply do something like that, after all, I am a high-ranking ninja but couldn't get a result until I was, Kakashi started, until the paper Naruto was using first split not once, not twice, but ten times, creating a total of twenty pieces of paper, which immediately burst into flame, not catch fire, not smoke from the heat, the paper literally burst in flame, creating a blaze that sprang up six feet, yet didn't seem to hurt Naruto at all. Well that was cool, what's next, Naruto asked casually, shocking both Kakashi and Itachi, although Kakashi's lower jaw fell down to the ground. Getting over their shock, Kakashi and Itachi proceeded to teach Naruto several potent defensive and offensive jutsu, however, what all of them, even Naruto did not notice in the paper, was the fact that not all of the paper pieces had burst into flames. Anyways, Itachi got out of his shock of Naruto's chakra element and said, Well, Naruto, I am very surprised. Your elements seem to be wind, obviously, although it is much more potent than any that I have seen before, and fire, which, I have to admit, seems to be even more potent than mine, although that shouldn't be possible, either way, we promised to teach you a few jutsu for your element, and since you have two, we shall teach you four. Although the fact that your elements are wind and fire, two elements enemy to each other is a mystery to me, either way, understand that you will be weak to the other element that you aren't at advantage to, lightning. You will be extremely weak to earth, but fighting against a water-type nin will be out of the question, as your katan attacks will have no affect at all. That's a bummer, Naruto said with a little bit of a sad face, Itachi was glad that he saw his dual elements as a bad thing, after all, most ninja ended up being overconfident if they started off with two elements. Right then, Kakashi-san, 
Do you have any futon ninjutsu you might be willing to show off? Itachi asked the Cyclops. Well, there are quite a few after all, but I believe that I should teach you, as Itachi-san said, one offensive and defensive jutsu. However, the great breakthrough jutsu is very useful, and doesn't require too much energy, Kakashi said. Teach him it, it will help a lot, and doesn't really count as much a jutsu as much a supplementary skill, Itachi said. Hi. All right then, Naruto, the three wind jutsu I think you should use are. Okay got it. For offensive, I think that the ninjutsu version of the air bullet will do. The only difference between the ninjutsu and kenjutsu forms is that this comes from your mouth, understand? Kakashi asked. Hi, and the others? Naruto asked. Right, for defense, I believe that Gale Force Protection shall do, it basically summons wine to cover you from all 360 degrees, making any physical attacks bounce off as soon as it gets near, although the heavier the weapon, the harder it will be to repel. To use this, all you really do is imagine yourself letting loose with a fart, and imagine that air flow around you. Then command that air to surround you and circle around you. Kakashi said. Really, Kakashi-san, a fart? That is how you imagine it? Itachi said, face palming. Yada yada, can we carry on now? Naruto asked. Okay, the last futon jutsu you need to know is great breakthrough, which basically creates a huge wind. The more chakra you pour in it, the faster the air. Imagine wind coming out of nowhere and sweeping the enemy off of their feet. Same concept. Kakashi finished. My turn, Naruto. For your offensive, I think it would be correct to teach you Katen, Fireball Jutsu. After all, it makes sense to have both an air bullet and a fireball arsenal. Imagine you mouth filling with fire, use chakra to make it a near reality, then spit it out, basically, at the target. It's best to breathe in while doing this. And for your defensive, use fire vortex, it is a move that creates fire that swirls around you, making anything that comes too close get burned. How hot depending on how much chakra you use. Almost the same concept as gale force protection. Just imagine all the fire already in the air. Itachi said, closing his eyes at the end. Sound like hard techniques. What's the point of imagining them though? Because, if you have enough willpower, then your chakra will make that move a reality. It's rather hard to explain, Itachi said. Okay, can you please demonstrate the jutsus to me? Please? Naruto asked, with a pretty please look. Sure. Kakashi said, jumping back several feet from Naruto and Itachi. Futon. Taitama. Air bullet. Kakashi yelled, doing the signs horse, hare, horse, ram, then blowing an attack that looked a lot like Naruto's attack, although weaker. Futon. Bufu Chikura Bue. Gale force protection. Kakashi yelled again, this time doing the signs serpent, hare, boar, then raising his hands and creating a whirlwind of force. Futon. Kusei Tapa. Great breakthrough. Kakashi yelled, yet again. Doing only signs, hair, and bird. This time, a massive wind blew through from behind Kakashi towards Naruto, who actually managed to stand his ground, unlike Itachi, who merely shouted, Katen. Kasai Kadu. Fire vortex, creating a flame whirlwind that rose up and protected him from being moved. Naruto, however, was struggling to stand his ground from the great breakthrough, until he thought something. Boy it would be really nice if the wind in front of me could cut through all of the other wind coming at me. Ha, huh, Naruto thought, until, true to his thoughts, the wind directly in front of him seemed to sharpen, and a small breach opened up in the air assault, effectively protecting him as well from the jutsu. Finally, Kakashi stopped, kneeled, and looked up, jeez kid, how the heck did you avoid getting blown away from that? I just wished for the air in front of me to cut through all of the other wind that was coming towards me, Naruto said, unsure. Kakashi however, looked rather shocked, and, with a silent message from Itachi, said to Itachi, how about you show him fireball jutsu? Oh yeah, Itachi sensei, how did you do that without seals? After a while, if you use a technique enough, your chakra network already knows what to do, making it easier. Sorry, the actually signs are horse, bird, tiger. Itachi said. It's okay, and the fireball jutsu? Naruto asked. Katen. Gokaku, fire release. Great fireball technique, Itachi said, using the seals for snake, ram, monkey, boar, horse, and tiger. He jumped further back and, aiming at the nearest tree, blew a fireball the size of a small house at it, 
making the tree get completely consumed, and the fireball continued traveling until it finally stopped, nearly 20 feet of tree cleared. Geez, a little overkill, don't cha think, Itachi-san, Kakashi said, sweat dropping at the power he had put behind the blast. Now Naruto, you shouldn't be able to use that jutsu at that strength for a long, long time. However, right now you can already use it, and because of the fact that wind makes fire stronger, Itachi said, looking over at Kakashi to make sure he understood. Right, do you want to show him? Kakashi replied. Sure, combination technique, Katen K's, Arashi Gokaku, combination technique, fire wind, tempest grand fireball. Itachi shouted, doing half seals for grand fireball on his left hand, and the ones for air bullet on his right. He spat out a much bigger fireball than before, at least the size of the Hokage Tower, and it went clear across the horizon, at a much greater speed. You see, Naruto, wind techniques enhance fire. Thus, when an air bullet and grand fireball are fused together, Itachi started. The grand fireball gets bigger and stronger. One question though, what was with all the weird half seals? I am right-handed, and my affinity is fire. Thus, to make sure that I was doing both techniques at the same strength, and yet still doing the jutsu, I did the hand signs for air bullet on my right hand and grand fireball on my left. Right, oh right, as a little side thought, I think you might want to meet my little brother, Sasuke. I have a feeling you guys will be good friends, besides, you guys are starting in the academy at the same time. I'm still going to the academy, apparently, I don't really know. Either way, good luck. Thanks, Itachi Sensei. Anyways, now that we have shown you the jutsus, mind giving them a try? Naruto's first day with Anko Naruto was in a sewer. It was the simplest way to put it. He was just standing in a sewer. Raising his eyebrows, Naruto started walking around, as this was obviously a lucid dream. He continued to walk and walk around the sewer until he reached an enormous metal cage that seemed to reach to the heavens. What the hell? Naruto said aloud. Yeah, that's my cell, said some random voice. Ha! Who said that? Naruto shouted, looking around. Ah, uh, the time for us to talk unlucky hasn't happened yet, although I suppose this seal would allow me to make a fair deal, the voice said. Ha! Huh. Hey listen, Kit. What would you say if I, a random thought in your head, wanted to help you? How? Well simple, you let me see everything you do, smell everything you smell, e. t. c. and I will let you tap into my energies. As a, e h e m, thought in your mind, I have access to more of those hidden things that Guy Sensei unlocked. Really? What would I get? Well for one, increased smell, stamina, hearing, sight, not as much, but yeah. And I would get to talk to you all day. So basically I would turn into a dog? Grr, I would not give you the powers of a dog, think more of a, fox instead. The point is, I can help you. And eventually, you're going to need it. I am. Can we stop with all the short Q and A's? Let me get to the point. If you die, I die. I don't like dying. Okay, so what do I have to do in order to get more of your er I mean, my power? Just sign the contract by your foot, hmm. Okay, Naruto said, not bothering to read through the contract and simply signing the place for his name. Ah, you were supposed to read that, whatever, so, that's it. Um, not quite, there's two more things in the contract you were supposed to read. What? You have to build this place into a better, more comfy place, and also, let me roam around a bit or at least make the area inside my cage bigger. How? And who are you? It's your mind, and well, as to who I am, no offense, but remember what Itachi told you. Asking too many questions is never good. Oh right, so I want a lamp post here, a building here. In the real world, Naruto's clone that was to wake him up was in pure panic. He had tried to wake up his boss at 6.30, like he was supposed to, but for some reason he wouldn't get up. Come on. Boss, she could be here any second, the clone said, when a knock came from the door. The clone gulped. WW who is it? Anko Midorishi, sexy snake mistress of Konoha. Now get your ass out here, Naruto, came a yell. Finally, Naruto woke up, looking at the clone and mouthing, what? Anko is outside, right now, the clone whispered urgently. Naruto's eyes got huge. Delay her, Naruto whispered back. What, the clone whisper yelled. It was too late though, as Naruto was putting on his jacket and sheath for sword and everything. Hi, Anko-san, 
What's up? The clone said, opening the door. Gaki, Anko said, grinding the word out. Why did you just get up? Well you see, Anko-san, I was, uh, uh, the clone stuttered. Then, his downstairs neighbor banged something against the wall. Well you see, I banged a, a, the clone once again started panicking, when his other neighbor, a civilian girl with brown locks, sparkly eyes, and large cleavage, walked by, waving, hi, to the clone, and winking. Thank Kami she was one of the more sentimental civilian girls that didn't hate him. I banged a, girl. Yes, that's right, I was busy recovering because I banged a girl, Naruto said, in a moment of pure panic, hoping that Anko would buy it. Her eyes went huge. Damn, they keep doing it at a younger age, these days, whatever then, Gaki. In that, case, you're excused. However, be at training ground 44 by 10 am, or I'll kill you, Anko said to the clone, who breathed a sigh of relief when she left. Dang, that was W-A-A-A-A-Y too close. I'm so thankful of neighbors. Training ground 44 Naruto walked to the entrance of training ground of the 44th training ground and immediately stopped and said, what the hell is this? In front of him past a huge fence was a humongous forest, and he could hear extremely discomforting sounds coming from inside. He gulped, and went to where the two Chunin on guard were watching the forest, and hadn't seen nor heard Naruto yet. Excuse me, I need to go into this training ground today, Naruto stated. The two Chunin turned around, and Naruto was relieved to see that it was his Kenjutsu mentor, Hayate, and one of the other Chunin he had seen around, Genma. Hey, Naruto-san, what's up? Hayate said easy going. Genma however, said, nice joke kid, but nobody below Chunin rank is going into this forest. Actually, Chunin-san, I am a sub Jonin rank, I am currently involved in an internship, and for today, my teacher is Anko Mitarishi. I believe that if you were to simply ask your friend here, you would find out that he was also teaching me about Kenjutsu. Sub Jonin? Your funeral, you may pass, Genma said. Naruto gulped, and started towards the forest. Minus eight hours later. Naruto fell onto the ground, gasping. He had just taken a hit directly to the rib cage by that weird tiger-like animal the size of an elephant. This was definitely not his day. It didn't help that his teacher had, accidentally, led him into the B sector section. Geez, who was he, a not even genin or a cage? First day with Kurinai Kurinai tapped her foot, annoyed. The kid was supposed to get here three hours ago. Kurinai, HMMPED, and headed towards training ground 44, where Anko always was. Maybe hanging out with her all day would help. As soon as she arrived, she saw Genma and Hayate. I say he comes out by today, Genma said. Too broad. What hours? Hayate protested. Grr, well, let's judge it by the sun time. So, high noon. Bullshit. Hayate. Genma. What are you two talking about? Kurinai yelled at the two. Hmm. Oh we're just betting on when Naruto-san leaves the S sector and comes out of the forest of death, said Hayate. What? That's where Anko took him. Kurinai screamed, jumping past the two. Forest of death Naruto was breathing hard. It had taken him a mere 30 minutes to dispatch the tiger, but this was ridiculous. He was now nearly completely surrounded by rats, enormous one, all drooling for his blood. He had sliced apart plenty, but to no avail, for as soon as one died, three more took its place. Anko sensei I need help. Naruto yelled out in pain. The tiger had still managed to break some bones, and the venom that came from getting bit by a rat wasn't exactly helping. Sorry, Gaki. But I teach you, and you either kill or be killed, sorry. A voice came from a nearby tree. Naruto gritted his teeth, it went to show that his sensei was a slave driver, no questions needed. He had been going for nearly 12 hours straight, and still he fought on. But even Jinchuriki had their limits. He had to admit to himself. Accepting the gift of the voice in his head had definitely helped. For one, he hadn't gotten ambushed much. For another, he could smell or hear danger, or food. He could still keep going, even without rest. But now he was going to die. He realized it, as he saw the last few rats dive at him, that there would be now, Hokage, for him, no growing up. Anything if he died right here, right now. Naruto closed his eyes at the very last moment, and waited to die. However, before he could do that, he felt something get pulled from him. He also heard someone coming. It didn't matter either way, he had passed out. This is what Anko had seen. 
Gaki about to die check. Rats charging towards him check weird glow coming from him what the fuck. One moment, Anko was about to dive in and save her student, the next, a man appeared out of nowhere, with a blinding light for an anbu mask and obvious blonde hair. Also out of nowhere, Kuranai appeared looking like she was mad, as in crazy. She didn't even bother noticing the man with the anbu mask, she simply jumped to Naruto's side. Anko heard Kuranai saying things she never thought she would, like, please don't die, and, stupid Anko, what the fuck did I do, bitch, to Naruto. Meanwhile, the man with the mask looked around at the rats, and wordlessly threw 20 tri kanai all around. He also karate chopped the air multiple times, and pushed. Wherever the chop seemed to go, a rat got split in half. Now, the masked man disappeared in 20 blinding flashes. He returned to his former spot, and all of the rats fell dead. Kuranai-san, it would be a good idea to get Naruto to safety, don't you think? The man said to Kuranai, who nodded and ran, carrying the boy in her arms. Anko-san, you may come out now. I would come out quickly, after all. I am not a patient person when it comes to those that nearly kill my son. Anko jumped down and landed a mere foot away from the man. Aaron, you, Minato-san. Anko asked, wordless for once. Minato nodded, and Anko sank to her knees. Now now, none of that. It's not like I was your sensei or anything. Although I suppose that if you were to refer to the whole sensei thing, my dad would have been Jiraiya, Orochimaru, Tsunade. Yeah, in a way, we're related I guess. You you really are. Well of course. But, listen, Anko-san. We can talk about this again under different circumstances. Don't tell anyone about me, or you will die. Clear. Crystal, now then, don't you dare put Naruto into that position again, understand me? Naruto's individual meetings guy one day. Naruto managed to finally hit down the 10x sandbag, and Guy started to anime cry tears of happiness, along with Rock Lee who had joined a while after Naruto. Congratulations, Naruto-kun. You are now powerful enough to wield my summon contract. Really? Thanks Guy-sensei, Naruto shouted, grinning. Now then, let's see here, here we go. Guy said, pulling out a scroll. The scroll was on the back of a turtle, and the turtle stared at Naruto with a menacing look. Naruto shuddered, but signed the contract anyways, and Guy pulled him and Rock Lee into a big hug. Yugo at the dojo. Naruto finally stole a melon paw from the bowl, and Yugo looked shocked. Of course she did, after all, the melon paw was going into her mouth. Naruto also kissed Yugo on the lips. He missed the cheek, when he did it, resulting in a shocked Yugo. Naruto emerged from the shadows and sat down across from Yugo, whose mouth was still open. He then began to casually eat the melon paw. Yugo then stuttered, Did you just, yup, without me? Yup. And even managed to, triple yup, so what you think? I, think, that you are ready to sign the cat contract, Yugo said, grinning. Yay, another contract, Naruto shouted, grinning. Just one question, Naruto-kun. Yeah, Yugo-sensei. Do you want to die? Yugo said, from behind Naruto. He felt cold steel to his neck. Naruto however, simply rolled his eyes. Yugo sensei, check your cleavage. Say wa? Yugo said, checking. There was a kanai in her bra. Zabuza and Hayate Zabuza was just walking into training ground 57, again, for the fifth time that week, to check on how far Naruto had gotten. This time however, when he got to the area with Hayate, they both were shocked to see Naruto sparring against 50 of his clones at once effectively using both Kenjutsu and Taijutsu, his air bullets going straight through crowds, and being able to be controlled, while his other hand actually did the creeping lotus, whacking every random clone once in a while. Finally, the last clone got dispelled, and Naruto near collapsed. Zabuza and Hayate rushed over, Zabuza saying, You okay kid? We saw you fight those fifty just now that was nut. That was pant nothing. I pant summoned cough two hundred to spar against me, and I wheeze held my own. Zabuza had to ponder for a moment, before he and Hayate locked eyes and both nodded. They each pulled out a contract for animals, octopus and weasel, and Naruto, without looking, signed both of them, collapsing afterwards. I think, Hayate-san, Zabuza began. That Naruto should apply for the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist Apprentice. Kakashi and Itachi Naruto walked into the normal new training or for ninjutsu with Kakashi and Itachi 
and he immediately punched the tree to make sure nobody else was using the 23rd training grounds. The tree didn't fall, meaning that he was alone. All right then, I suppose it's about time I tried those ninjutsu I was taught. Summon Kanai Storm. He yelled at the tree. In a flash, a frenzy of Kanai flew at him from all sides, and so he, without using seals, yelled, Futon, Bufu Chikara Bue, Gale Force Protection, making all of the projectiles bounce off of his whirlwind, now enough to protect all sides. Summon Earth Jutsu. Naruto yelled at the tree, making numerous earth spines fly at him from multiple directions. Right then, if I use Gale Force Protection, the spires will just pierce through. Better use the other one then. Katen. Kasai Kadu. Fire Vortex. Naruto shouted, creating the flaming vortex around him, burning the spires to ash. Summon High Genin Level Target. Naruto shouted at the tree again. This time, a genin appeared with no big traits, just brown eyes and hair. Combination Technique. Katen Kaze. Arashi Gokaku. Combination Technique. Fire Wind. Tempest Grand Fireball. Naruto shouted at the genin, blowing a fireball the size of a small house at the genin, but it was too slow. Futon. Kusei Tapa. Great breakthrough, Naruto shouted, making the fireball go much faster, incinerating the target. Naruto fell, exhausted, at the strain of using so many jutsu at once, when Kakashi and Itachi appeared, Kakashi reading his usual book. So hey Naruto, since you've improved so much, we've decided to let you use our summons here, I have the summon for dogs, and Itachi has the one for crows, want a sign? Kakashi said, putting down a sheet near Naruto, who was still groaning. He signed both of the scrolls, and then passed out from exhaustion. Anko as soon as Anko managed to find Naruto again after the Forest of Death incident, she pleaded him for forgiveness. I'm so sorry, Naruto-san. I really didn't know we were inside the B-sector, Anko kept saying. Sigh, troublesome, at the Nara compound Shikaku and Shikamaru looked at each other, and simultaneously broke into a hug. Back, look, Anko-sensei, I've already forgive you, so drop it. But, drop it. Well, Anko-san. Drop. It. Oh fine, Anko said, starting to pout. Look, Gaki, I'm sorry, but I really want to pay you back somehow. Hmm, I don't know how you will, I know. How about I let you use snakes as a summon? Really? Are you sure? Of course. Snakes are noble creatures, just don't summon Manda. Why? If you don't have 100 sacrifices, he'll kill you. Good reason. Kuranai as soon as Naruto had regained conscious, Kuranai hugged him into her sizable cleavage, making Naruto blush a considerable amount and nearly faint again, Kuranai immediately asked him how he was and everything. Anyways, Kuranai, after she had gotten over her craziness, talked to Naruto about genjutsu, even putting them on him for him to dispel them, when Kuranai accidentally used a wrong type of genjutsu making Naruto live something that had happened over and over and over for 24 hours inside of their mind. When he had woken up, he was crying, and Kuranai immediately asked him to forgive her for the genjutsu, but Naruto was okay, so Kuranai simply gave him the clam contract and said that he would need it, since he himself couldn't make genjutsu. Naruto was training, he was doing the insane obstacle course that Guy had set him up on, and for once, he was doing good. He had hit all the targets, he hadn't fallen into any of the pits, and all of the logs had missed him. Next to him was his friend Rock Lee, who was also doing good. They both felt proud that they were doing so well, even though they were wearing 200 pounds of weight throughout their bodies. Suddenly, where there usually was a rope to climb, a gigantic fox's head emerged out of nowhere, and Rock Lee fell in, screaming his head off. What in the? Naruto yelled at the fox. Calm down mortal, you are dreaming right now a voice said in his mind. Ah, wait, have we met before? Because you sound rather familiar. Yes, you are inside of your head right now, I am the Kayubi that is forever sealed inside of you, welcome to my dwelling. The training grounds shifted, and Naruto stood in the lobby of a hotel, with a woman that had long sleek red hair and slitted eyes was standing next to him. So you were the voice talking to me before? Ah, hello container. I am the Kayubi. What? You're Kayubi. Yup, b b b b b. What, you thought I was a guy? Yes, Naruto muttered. Hump, insolent mortal, I am Kayubi, a demon, and is the strongest. I am the queen of the biju. 
as one would put it in human words, I am the queen bitch. Ah, uh, yada yada, I called you here to tell you something. Besides the fact that you're a girl? Yeah, I need you to know about the summons you have. What about them? See that? Kayubi pointed at the elevator. Yeah. In those levels are part of the spirit of the bosses of the summons you have, and since you have too many right now, you're going to have to do some tests that they have. Tests? Yeah. Currently you have Turtle from Guy, Raven from Itachi, Snake from Anko, Dog from Kakashi, Fox from me, Weasel from Hayate, Clam from Kurinai, Octopus from Zabuza and although you don't know it, there's another summon you have called the Protectors, you don't need to go meet them. It's really bad that you have so many contracts, Naruto. Ah, why is it bad that I have so many contracts? Because, Baka, you need to have a limited number, otherwise they won't let you summon them, or they'll fight each other. Oh, that is bad isn't it, of course. It's why some sort of energy is interrupting my, Kayubi said, shimmering until she was replaced by another creature. It was a high tree with a branch that was at eye level to Naruto, and on it were three birds of prey. Hello Naruto, we are the legendary birds. Not Pokemon, they said in harmony. I am Eagle, said the one on the far right in a rough jagged voice. I am the strongest of us three, and my size helps. I am Hawk, said the one in the middle in a placating voice. I am the stealthiest and most cunning of us, and my knowledge helps. I am Falcon, said the one on the far left in a sharp voice. I am the master of the sky, no matter what these two say, as I am the fastest and the leader. Your grandfather, started Eagle, was a great warrior, and we were his most prized summon, finished Hawk. And yet, he lost our summon contract, and it was eventually destroyed, said Falcon. However, Hatchling, it was sealed inside all of his descendants' mindscapes, and here we are. Will you accept us as a summon? Well, I would love to, but I already have so many, Naruto started. Don't you dare compare us to those little fools, screeched Eagle. We are on an entire other level than them, to the point where they don't even think about challenging us. And to be our summoner, you must be strong, said Hawk. Ah, thank you, in that case, of course I will sign the contract, Naruto said. Hump, for that, you also must take a test of courage. Strength, Eagle added, and intelligence, Hawk put. All right, what have I got to do? Well, for mine all I ask is this single question, Hawk said. Yes. A warrior travels through a farm, and in his hunger, eats plenty of the food. In a moment of pity, he goes to the house in which the farmer lives, and offers to pay the price. The farmer agrees. However, later the two has a dispute, and it is taken to court. The farmer claims that the warrior should have kept going to get food, and now it is the winter season and he has no food, and the warrior believes that he paid all he needed to and that the farmer was the bad one because he later got a terrible indigestion from the food he ate. What would you decree and why? I would say that the warrior should be left free because he fairly paid for the food. It was the fault of the farmer that he did not realize that he would not have any food in the winter, and that he didn't simply buy more food. Fair enough, you pass my task, youngling, said the hawk. My turn, said Eagle. Give me your best shot, Naruto said confidently. Right then, here it is, Eagle said, doing nothing. Wah! In a matter of seconds, Naruto was burning. It felt like he was bathing in acid, but when he looked around, there was nothing. All he saw was a disorientation of the place he once was at. You aren't strong enough to be a summoner, fool, he heard. No, I am strong enough, he yelled, gritting his teeth at the pain. Don't lie to yourself. No, I'm strong enough, he yelled, slamming his hand on the ground, making the pain stop. Congratulations, summoner. You pass my test said Eagle in a grudging respectful tone of voice. Now comes my test. Finished Falcon. Of course, what is it, Falcon San? For my test, you must capture me, Falcon said, prepping his wings for flight. Wait, I have to catch one of the fastest creatures in creation in order to pass your test? Yes, and I am not one of the fastest. I am the fastest. Great, then when do I start? Now, Falcon said, not even moving from where he was perched. Now? Now. So I can try to catch you now? Yes. Then why aren't you moving? I don't need to. Oh really? Naruto asked, jumping up onto the tree and trying to grab Falcon, but he wasn't there. What? Naruto started, before in flashes of light, multiple scars arose from his body in random spots. 
Falcon reappeared on the branch as Naruto yelled in pain. How do you expect to be powerful, when you can't even hit an enemy? You're right, I guess. Just have to try harder. Naruto said, his hands in ram seal, creating twenty clones. Pathetic, Falcon said, before disappearing and reappearing in a flash of light. Naruto's hands were still in ram seal, and he was shocked. The little bird had just destroyed twenty of his clones before he could even blink. What the hell? Still not trying hard enough. Use something out of your comfort zone, hatchling. Hawk recommended. Out of my comfort zone? Yes, although I doubt you will have enough time. Eagle stated. Why? Because, when Falcon defeats a technique, he can use that technique. No, not. Naruto began, before Falcon created twenty clones, all of them eyeing Naruto. Goodbye, hatchling. All of the Falcon said, before disappearing in individual flashes of light, creating multiple scars all over Naruto's body. He was still being thrown back and forth as Falcon and his clones attacked from all sides, not giving him enough time to react. Damn, I'm getting my butt handed to me here, Naruto thought. Something out of my comfort zone. Well I was uncomfortable with some of the jutsu that Itachi sensei and Kakashi sensei taught me, that's it. Naruto thought, getting an idea. Helps if you do the move often, check helps if you already memorized the signs, check, Naruto thought, before he yelled. Futon. Kusei Tapa, great breakthrough, Naruto yelled, making all of the falcons get blown away from him. Insolent brat. Falcon screeched, gliding back towards Naruto. Naruto yelled and did the signs for, Katen, Kasai Kadu, Fire Vortex, and as soon as the falcons all realized that the blaze was active, they tried to stop, but it was too late. In multiple poofs of smoke, all of the clones got destroyed, and the original falcon got blown back and landed on his back, wings in a weird angle. Naruto immediately picked up the bird of prey, and started to heal it a bit with the basic jutsu that Itachi had shown him for healing. A green aura surrounded his hand, and Falcon's bones started to go back into normal gestures. I have failed, Falcon said slowly, looking blankly. Failed what? Naruto asked while healing him, I was instructed by the last summoner to let nobody but, the one with weird stuff on his stomach, to beat me. Ah, uh, Falcon-san. I have stuff on my stomach, Naruto said, sweat dropping. Show me. Here, if I ever channel chakra, Naruto said, creating a brief, small whirlwind, then as he did, markings started appearing on his stomach. Falcon's eyes grew big, and then he looked up at Naruto in respect. You're the one that I was supposed to let beat me. Ah, uh, my last master said that the person would have a marking around the circle on his stomach that looked like a coma, and here it is, Falcon said, staring at one of the many unique signs. As much as I think this is very nice. Naruto needs to pass the tests of the other summoning clans, remember? Eagle cut in sharply. Yes, yes, Naruto, we can now help you in battle and combat. Our names are Hawk, Eagle, and Falcon, but the offspring of our clan have different names. Now then, extend your dominant arm. Hawk commanded. Naruto extended his arm, and in a red blur, Hawk flew over his arm, then returned to where he had been perched. Eagle then did the same thing, although his arm stung afterwards. Lastly, Falcon simply reappeared where he had been perched on the tree branch. On Naruto's bicep was a picture of three birds, facing towards his palm. They were flying, and as Naruto watched, they slowly rotated his bicep. There. Now then, Naruto. That is our summoning sign. Since you are going to have many summoning clans, we thought it appropriate to distinguish us from the others, Falcon stated. Now, would you like a familiar to help you in your travels? They will spend more time in the mortal world with you than normal, and can help you in your battles. Be warned, however, should your familiar get hurt, the pain will transfer back to you, Hawk said. Yes. Actually I would, is there any chance that my familiar could be from Falcon's clan? Falcon tilted his head. Yes actually. There is my fifth son, Precision. He is a peregrine falcon, although his speed is still coming in. He can already go at normal mortal animal level, 60 miles per hour straight, 200 in a dive. Yes yes, I believe that he will be a good familiar for you. I will be sure to send him to you as soon as you regain conscious. Great. Now, is there anything else you guys need to tell me? Yes. Falcon, Hawk, and Eagle said simultaneously. Whatever you do, do not fail the test for the dog clan. Before they all disappeared, leaving Naruto back in the original hotel area he had been in. 
So, how'd it go? Kayubi said from the hotel counter. Well, so I'm guessing that they are more powerful than you, Naruto said with a grin. Shut up, Kit. I think it might be a good time for me to tell you about the status of clans, Kayubi said to Naruto. Status. Yeah, for starters, the lowest level of the clans is the group known as messengers. These are creatures like ravens, even dogs can fall under this section occasionally. Next up are defenders, usually slow moving and big clans these clans solely defend their summoner. Next is the middle class, a group of ordinary, everyday creatures that help their summoner in any way needed. Like weasels and snakes and such. Higher than them are clans like the forbidden ones, the hidden, the special, and more. So far, the turtle clan is the defenders, the raven clan are messengers, the snake clan are in the middle, as are the dog clan, my clan is in the special, clam clan is in the defenders clan, the weasel clan is in the middle, the octopus are in the defenders. Also, the other group I told you about, the protectors, are in the forbidden, and the birds of prey, the group you just met, are in the special clan as well. That's a lot, so let me get this straight. For the messengers, I have raven, for defenders, turtle, clam, octopus, for middle, snake, dog, and weasel, and for the others, I have birds of prey in your clan for special, and the protectors are in the forbidden section? Yeah, and you have to pass each and every test of theirs to use the in battle now. Oh boy, I really bit off more than I could chew, huh? Yeah, naturally, you already passed my test. Not dying despite the many attempts to kill you, but the other clan's tests won't be so easy. What might I get tested about? The general traits of that specific clan, for example, loyalty or integrity. Crud. Which clan should I get tested by first? Work from the bottom up, so first, do the test for the Raven clan. What do you think I might get tested on? Intelligence and endurance most likely. Right, I'm going to go do the test now, until then, can you think about what familiar I might want with me? Naruto said, before rushing into the elevator and pressing the button that said, Raven. Naruto gulped as the doors opened, and he took a step into the area for the ravens. The area was rather simple, huge trees and grass, with seemingly no stop to how far the grass went. Perched on top of a high branch and looking down was a raven the size of Itachi's Katen K's, Arashi Gokaku, technique, with eyes that were red and cool. Who are you, creature? Are you the mortal that signed our contract? Yes sir. Might I ask your name? You may call me Suki, the Lord of the Ravens. I understand that you are being trained by Itachi kun right now. Yes, Suki sama. He is my teacher for ninjutsu, along with Hitaki Kakashi. Im. Yes, yes. Now then, cut your hand. Sorry. You heard correct. Cut your hand, and fill the cup there with your blood, Suki said, nodding towards a small pure obsidian cup that seemed to appear out of nowhere and drop next to Naruto. Naruto did so with a kanai he pulled out, and cut his palm. He gripped his hand, and blood flowed into the cup. Suki then took it in the same manner as Falcon when he was fighting Naruto at his blinding speed, and drank some of it. You are the container of the Kayubi, correct? Yes, Suki-sama. You have already proven your endurance with the outrunning of those pathetic villagers, and of course your psychological endurance has been proven through the villagers once again. Yes, Suki-sama. And looking through your memories, I can't help but notice the fact that you always seem to call people San, until you know them better, or they prove that they are to be called something in particular. But here you are calling me Suki-sama. You also seem to know when to repress your amusing personality in front of me. Yes, you are definitely intelligent. Congratulations, Naruto. You pass my test. Really? But you didn't even ask me anything, Naruto said. I did, actually. I asked you to cut your hand and fill the cup with your blood. You didn't have to do that, technically. Now go to your next task, before you try my patience. Suki said, turning his back to Naruto, who scratched his head, and started walking back to the elevator. Oh and before I forget, you animal familiar for my clan shall be Shadow, one of our smarter ravens. Naruto re-entered the elevator, and looked down the choices for a clan test to take, and was surprised to see that the slot for, Raven, had disappeared. Naruto then pressed the button for Turtle. The elevator buckled, and Naruto once again went up to the level for the Turtle Clan. He stepped onto a huge beach, and watched as multiple baby turtles emerged from the sand, and started heading towards the water. Before many of them could get there though, a few birds picked them off. 
Then came the crabs. Then came little raccoons and such. Naruto watched in disbelief, and readied his sword to save one of the turtles, when a turtle the size of a buffalo came out of the water, and stopped him. All of the other activity continued, but the turtle continued towards Naruto, finally stopping in front of him, then speaking with a mellow voice. Do you want to save them, Naruto-san? Of course, they just got born, and yet now they're all getting eaten and killed. It is the way of life, Naruto-san. Because of this picking out in nature, the final turtles that get to the water and live are the strongest, fastest, etc. Through this the future baby turtles also get these traits. Look at the older population of ninja. Realistically, only Seru Tobi and select few others survived to such an old age, and only because of how strong he was. I, I see, I assume the test for turtles is acceptance? Clever kid. Yeah, the side thing we turtles stand for is acceptance. Even in the wild, we turtles just accept. We eat small things, if we get eaten, whatever, can you accept that? No, not really, sorry, Turtle-san, but if that is the test, allowing those around us to die, then no, I cannot be your summoner. The turtle's eyes sparkled, ah, but you just passed the main idea, the protecting of others, congratulations, you pass. Really? Thank you, Turtle-sama. Ah, yes, now give Gai-san our regards, understood? Hi. Naruto ran back to the elevator and selected Clam, only to see that it had disappeared with Turtle, making him guess something was off. He thus selected Octopus, to find himself submerged in water. Blurg glurg. Naruto gurgled, drowning. Oh don't fret, we can bring you to the surface if you were to simply ask, said a nearby gigantic octopus with an arrow-shaped head. Blurg grulgh blurg. Help me out here. Naruto gurgled to the octopus who simply laughed grabbing Naruto in a tentacle and holding him up above the water. Naruto coughed out water, and the octopus watched for a while Naruto simply coughed water. Th thank you, octopus-san. Naruto spluttered. Ah, no problem, youngling. Tell me, are you the summoner for our clan? Ye yes, Zabuza sensei gave me your summoning contract a while ago. Ah, Zabuza was the one that gave you our summoning contract. Good then he trusts you as well. Since Sabuza trusts you enough to give you access to our clan, I suppose we should follow his lead and accept you as well. Congratulations, youngling, you pass. Really? I pass the test? Yes, I think you should know that we stand for secrecy and multi-personalities, which you have already proven before, so you pass. All right. Man, I wish all of the tests were this easy. Mm, I understand. However, you should know, youngling, that in order to summon our clan, you will have to press the mark on your palm, the octopus said. Mark? Naruto asked, looking down at his palm. On it was a picture of an octopus facing him as if it were a glove. Yes, a mark. Simply press your palm in order to summon one of us, and Ugani shall be your familiar from our clan. Good luck with the other tests, youngling, octopus finished, flinging him back into the elevator. Naruto stumbled back up, and pressed the button for the snake button. He then saw the doors open, and he was once again in the S sector within the forest of death. He walked in, sure to have his hand on the rune blade when a snake the size of Suki slithered up to him. What I SSS this? Who has let another insolent mortal SSS sign our contract? I will have the head of that creature that let this SSS brat SSS sign our contract, the snake stated. Anko sensei gave me the contract, might I ask who you are? Ah a polite one. My name ISSS Manda, insolent mortal. I shall eat Anko for this SSS action. I apologize for the trouble, Manda-sama. But I believe that the snake clan is a powerful one, that is why I allied myself with you, Naruto stated to the snake. Hmm. You do make SSSSENSSSE, unlike that irritating Orochimaru that owes me 400 SSSSACRIFCES. Tell you what. If you manage to get USSS a good battle, then I promise that we will fight alongside you. Perhaps a battle with Orochimaru. After all, we cannot attack him if he SS summoned USSS. But if USS summoned USSS. Understood, Manda-sama. If I ever meet Orochimaru, or have a chance to fight him, I promise that your clan will be the only clan I summon. Excellent. Then you have the full SS support of the SS Snake Clan. Manda said, nodding to Naruto. Thank you. I will take my leave now, Naruto replied, bowing and starting to leave. 
Wait. IASSSK why do you employ SSSO many weak clans? Manda Sama, I believe that with my guidance, those clans will become stronger. Although I do not trust you, my clan will SSS still follow you. But be SS sure to SS summon you SSS more than those pestjays. Understood. Naruto finalized, walking back into the elevator, and pressing the button for, dog. The elevator once again went up a level, and when it stopped, Naruto found himself in a doghouse of sorts the size of a real house. He looked around a bit, and hollered, Hello. I am here to take the dog test. There was no response, and Naruto shrugged, scratching his head, and started to walk around. He went up the stairs of the doghouse, and when he saw the upper level, he panicked. In front of him was twenty dogs the size of him, all of them with their backs to him, yet in a circle and talking. After a brief moment of indecision, Naruto walked up and said, Hello, I am here to take the dog test. The biggest dog turned, a Rottweiler, and bared his fangs. The other dogs followed his lead, and soon Naruto found himself about to be attacked by a group of huge dogs. The Rottweiler barked, Who are you, and what are you doing here? My name is Naruto Uzumaki, and I am here to take the dog test. Bull. You smell of fox, and we don't like fox, fox? I mean, I do contain the Kayubi. Kayubi. Where Kayubi, kill Kayubi, one of the oversized poodles and the back bared. Ah, uh, as much as I would like to take your test, I also like having a head. By now, Naruto said, bolting back into the elevator downstairs, the dogs right behind him. He hastily pressed the button for, weasel, and just as the Rottweiler was about to tear into the door, it closed, leaving a rather big, thump, in the door. Naruto breathed a sigh of relief, and walked out of the elevator into a small den. He looked around and saw nothing, only a small sign next to a bed saying, out hunting snakes, be back later. Naruto's sweat dropped, and went back into the elevator, pressing the button for, fox. He then felt the sensation of going downwards, and when he came out, he was back inside of the hotel that Kayubi had been at. Well, how did it go? Kayubi asked her host. Good with all of them except for dog, who for some reason hated me as soon as they smelled me on you, and weasel, who wasn't home. Yeah, dogs and my clan have a bit of a rivalry, they tried to kill me. Case in point, so all of the other clan meetings went well? Yeah, but I didn't get to meet the clam for some reason, their button disappeared after I talked with the turtle clan. That means that you already passed their test, as they were most likely watching you do your test. Whatever, anyways, I picked out the familiar for you, and her name is Hitomi. Not my original Charter. Cool, I think I passed the tests for the other clans. Let me check, take off your shirt, Kayubi said, like she was supposed to or it was expected. Sorry, Naruto asked, blushing. Oh, stop thinking perverted thoughts. All of the clans put some sort of mark on you, like my clan sign that appears over your seal on your stomach. Oh, Naruto said, taking off his ninja gear and shirt. Let's see here, of course, the seal on your stomach is from me. The birds on your right bicep are from the birds of prey. The octopus on the back of your hand, crow in a circle on your left shoulder blade, the small shell on your solar plexus, snake on your left tricep, on the underside of your arm. Yeah, you got all of the clan's support, only excluding dog and weasel right now. Great. Now then, I probably ought to wake up soon, today is the first day at the academy. Ah one more thing, Naruto. In the future, there is a certain man you must kill for my help. Who? And why do I have to? Contract, dang, I really should have read that first, huh? Uh, really? The man's name is Uchiha Madara. He forced me to attack Konoha all those years ago. If you ever meet him, summon me myself. I will kill him. Okay then, I guess. Now wake up, and show those academy kids not to mess with you. Kayubi finished with a grin, actually hugging Naruto, who looked shocked, and expelling Naruto from his mindscape. The boss's idea was mine, as was the whole proving yourself thing. Oh, and the familiar's idea, that actually already exists, as people believe that certain animals help them in stuff. X, witch and cat. Naruto got up and grimaced as a small peregrine falcon flew into his room and landed on his shoulder, talons burrowing into his skin. He then remembered how he was to start at the academy today, and how his argument with Serutobi San had gone. Flashback. The day before, Serutobi San, excuse my language, but why the hell do I still have to go to the academy with all of the other noobs? 
Because, Sarutobi said calmly, as powerful of a ninja you are, I still want you to communicate with your peers. Besides, your ranking isn't even genin yet, so theoretically, unless you go to the academy, you aren't even counted as a ninja. But, Naruto began, until his teachers, minus Kakashi, all shunshined into the room. Itachi spoke first. Hokage-sama, please, trust us. Naruto is easily chunin level by now. Why throw him into the academy? Yeah. The Dobi was able to survive for almost a complete day inside the S sector of the Forest of Death. Shouldn't he be able to become a chunin by now? As much as I appreciate your reasoning, Jonin's, Naruto is my responsibility. Thus, I think that being in the academy will help him, and if he goes out as a ninja right now, he won't have the mental capabilities to survive. Tell me, ever since a year ago when Naruto started training with all of you, how much has he improved? Yash, Hokage-sama. Naruto-kun is now able to complete most of the exercises that I do with my disciple without passing out. He also managed to clear my latest training course with only a single mistake. Hokage-sama, Naruto has managed to perfect the great breakthrough jutsu, to the point where he doesn't need hand signs to perform it. As well as the first five jutsu in the book of, jutsu, a ninja's most valuable tool, for Katen and Futon, and the combination of air bullet and grand fireball. Itachi stated, with a hint of pride behind his words. For Kenjutsu, Naruto has managed to learn multiple stances, although he still uses the spinning butterfly a bit too much. He has managed air bullet to its complete perfection, and although I have more stamina for doing the jutsu, Naruto can create an air bullet almost as strong as the one I showed him on the first night of training, and it took me a full year to get it to that level. Zabuza said with visible pride. I second Zabuza, his Kenjutsu is top-notch to the point in which, if I weren't to use any of my dances, I would have a very tough time beating him, Hayate added. For stealth, the little kid managed to steal every single thing that I've given him a chance to steal, and as for his training in the stealth dojo, at the beginning, outside you would hear a big, bang, every few seconds. Now, passers think we don't train there anymore, Yugo said with a pout at Naruto. In regards to Genjutsu, Naruto can toss any C plus or below Genjutsu I put on him with ease, and he actually nearly managed to create a D-rank Genjutsu and use it. Unfortunately, he won't be doing any Genjutsu until he finally has complete and utter chakra control, Kurinai stated. And for stamina, the little Dobi has managed to outrun me how many times around Konoha. It's nuts, although me summoning snakes the size of the Hokage Tower must have helped, Anko deadpanned. Face it, Serutobi san. I don't need to go to the academy, I'll tip the scales, Naruto said proudly. That's my point. You are way too proud now, I need you to go to the academy, and besides, I have a weird feeling about the class you will be with, and I need someone on the inside to keep an eye on them. I already told the instructors that a masked person will be attending at their academy, so you don't get any prejudice from your peers, and I trust that Kuranai will put a genjutsu on the mask so nobody can see through it. Please, Naruto, do this for your old man? Of course, Hokage-sama, Kuranai said unhappily. Fine, Serutobi-san, Naruto said, downcast. Do not worry, Naruto-kun. Your flame of youth will not die out at the academy. Thank you, Gai-sensei, but I still feel that going to the academy will be like walking into a shower of sloth, Naruto said, putting his hand in a ram sign and shun shining out of the Hokage's office. All of the other ninja followed in suit, even Serutobi, except for Gai whose jaw was on the ground. The shower of sloth, Guy gasped, back to the Naruto. Naruto looked at the falcon on his shoulder, who was staring at him, and said, I believe your name is Precision. Hi, Naruto-sama, the bird said, bowing his head. Please, don't use formalities, call me Naruto-san at most. Okay, Naruto-sama. Naruto sweat dropped, and with his left index finger, he rapidly poked his left shoulder blade. Raven left triceps, snake, his right hand's back palm, octopus, his solar plexus, turtle, and poked his stomach. In four puffs of smoke, a pitch black raven appeared on his other shoulder, a red ear slider turtle appeared on his bed, a cobra appeared on the ground, and a pinkish red octopus appeared in a water sphere the size of a basketball. Hello Naruto-sama, all of the animals said simultaneously. Hello everyone, will you introduce yourself? Naruto said to the gathering of animals? Hi, my name is Shadow, and I am the grand-nephew of Suki, 
the raven said in a monotone voice. My name is Jammer, the turtle said from the bed. And if you could, Naruto-sama, could you create a water sphere? I am about to dehydrate. Right, Suishin. Water sphere. Naruto said, using snake, ram, bull to create a soccer-sized water ball for the turtle to go into. My name is Ugani, Naruto-sama. The octopus said from his sphere with a spin. My name is Dango, and I feel no need to be here, the snake said snobbishly, keeping herself away from the other summons. Right then, all of you are my animal familiars, meaning that you will stay in the mortal world until you choose to go back with a reverse summoning. So until then, please call me Naruto-san at most. Hi Naruto-sama, all of the animals shouted, making Naruto sweat drop. I have to go to the academy now, and no offense to all of you, but I think that it would be a bit conspicuous to have so many animals with me, so just shadow and precision stay, everyone else, you are free to do as you wish. I hope that we can be good friends in the future, Naruto said, shun shining away. He reappeared outside of the academy doors, and immediately put on a mask that had the kanji for, peace, on the forehead, and walked into the academy, with the two birds on his shoulders. Inside the academy doors, Aruka was calling off the attendants. Hanada Hayuga. H here, a girl with blue hair and white eyes stuttered. Kiba Inazaka. Here, a loud boy in the back yelled, with a white dog on his head. Sasuke Uchiha. Here, a boy in the back, surrounded by girls said with a monotone voice. Ah, uh, does anybody know a, nr2i aojemke? Aruka asked with a bewildered expression. nr2i aojemke. What the hell is with the name? Kiba yelled. nr2i aojemke? Wait. Aruka sensei, a pink haired girl next to Sasuke yelled. Yes, Haruno Sakura. I learned a form of coding called, double, coding. Where every two letters of something are used, then put together, and if you unscramble nr2i aojemke, you get, Sakura said, scribbling furiously. The doors suddenly flew off of the hinges, nearly hitting Aruka, and in walked a boy with a sheath on his back. A mask with the kanji for, peace, on his head a pitch black raven on his left shoulder, a falcon on his right shoulder, gloves, wearing a black jacket and ordinary pants. He said, Naruto Uzumaki, to Sakura, who paled and shrunk into her seat. You are Naruto Uzumaki, die. A girl from the side said, throwing a kanai at Naruto, who merely ducked. The girl had lavish long brown hair that fell to her mid-waist, and had pure bleach yellow colored eyes. Rochelle Minra, you are dismissed. Tell your parents, should they ask, that you attempted to attack a fellow student, Aruka said harshly. But, I really wanted to become a ninja, Rochelle stuttered. Then you shouldn't have tried to hurt a fellow classmate, now leave. Rochelle left, but not before giving Naruto an awful glare. This academy is a safe haven for all of you to learn how to be a ninja, so if anybody attacks anybody else, then I have permission to kill that attacker without question, understood? Aruka said getting nods from all of the students. Naruto then stepped forward. If I may, Aruka-san. What are you going to? Aruka said to the masked boy. Do not worry, I will not harm any of them, you have my solemn vow, Naruto stated, getting a hesitant nod from Aruka. As far as I am concerned, all of you are mere people. I will not treat anybody good or bad unless they do something to me, or somebody I know and think of as a friend, he stated, getting many sighs of relief. Hey, why don't you shut up already? Kiba yelled from the back. You have a dog. I am right to assume that you are an Inazaka? He asked, getting a proud nod. Control your pet, he said coolly, throwing a biscuit to the dog, who yipped in joy. He then turned around to the back towards a boy with a high collar and sunglasses on. You are an Abarum? Yes, Naruto Uzumaki. You needn't waste your chakra by putting an insect on me to check my abilities. They won't find anything, however, if you are extending a, friendly, insect, then I would be more than happy to let the Kikai insect draw upon my chakra, don't worry, I have plenty to spare. Over there, boy with the white eyes, you are a Hayuga, correct? Yes, Uzumaki. Don't try to look at me with the Bayakugan, or I swear, your eyes will be plucked out and sent to your clan leader on his birthday. Uchiha, in the back. HN. Did you throw these? Naruto said pulling out a few eight-sided shuriken. Perhaps. Watch your back. And Nara, in the front, pretending to be asleep. I won't give away your abilities, of course, but please, there isn't much a need for us to show our abilities so soon. 
so retract your ability. Troublesome, Shikamaru responded, sweating a bit. And fatty in the front, he said to a plump boy with a bag of chips in his hands. Why you? I am not fat, I am merely big boned. The boy yelled, getting ready to charge Naruto. Have a bag of chips, he said, tossing him a bag of chips labeled, super rare wakasi chips, jalapeno, cheddar and parmesan, and he caught it. BBBB but this is the newest brand of wakasi chips, the JCP type. Thank you, Choji yelled, sitting back down and eating the chips. Naruto, may I talk to you for a moment? Aruka asked, his eyes a bit narrowed. Of course, teacher San. What is it? Naruto asked, as soon as the two had left the classroom. Listen, I don't know whether or not you have any ill intent to my students, I'll admit that. However, should you be hostile to any of them, I won't be afraid to use deadly force. Now then, why did Hokage-sama send you here? I know, and the others can surely tell. You are not an academy student level person. At most, you are Janin. At least, Chunin or Hygienin. Now then, which is it? Aruka said, unknowingly beginning to sweat. Lord Hokage doesn't trust this year as much as the others it seems. Thus, he sent me to monitor and grow up with the rest of the class, and hopefully make them more powerful. As to how I know about all of them, well, the library has its uses. What was the point of taunting all of them though? Aruka asked, relaxing and scratching his head a bit. Oh, I always have wanted to call an Akamichi fat, sorry, life mission sort of thing. And the others? Various similar reasons. I've wanted to call the Uchiha Tards Banshees for a while now, as soon as I read about them. They have a section in the library, Aruka asked. Of course, since the time you were in the academy, there have been Uchiha Tards. Do you not remember? Whatever, I believe this discussion is over, and as a warning to you yourself, two things. First, you are one of the only teachers here that I have not seen corruption, good job. Secondly, do not put me up against anybody in sparring. If someone is idiotic enough to challenge me themselves on the other hand, Naruto said, with a sadistic grin on his face behind the mask, before walking back into his room to his seat. Naruto then sat down next to Shino and Hanada, who hadn't spoken the entire time. Hanada blushed, and turned on her by Akugan. Naruto saw this, and said to her, I already learned to feel when and where a Hayuga is looking at someone using the Byakugan. Look at my chakra points and you can kiss your chance at being an ally of mine goodbye, understand? Naruto said to Hanada, who blushed, but continued looking at Naruto, being careful to only look past the genjutsu on his mask at his face. Well Naruto, what is the answer? One of the instructors said, grinning. He knew that Naruto had been distracted and immediately had told the entire class about the pact between the Shika Ino Cho. He knew there was no way that Naruto knew what it was. Or at least, that was what he thought. Sorry, Teacher San? Will you please repeat the question? What was the pact formed between the Shika Ino Cho, and how was it formed? The pact was that the three clans of which there is one from each in this room. Shikamaru, Ino, and Choji. The pact was that whenever there was a round of all three at the same time, they would be formed into a team, when it came time to form genin teams. The combination team was then given special earrings when they all became genin, given by the Serutobi clan as a mark of their vow. They all gave back their earrings when they became chunin, symbolizing that they were regarded as adult by their respective clans. The pact was formed when the original members of each clan used their unique abilities together to capture and defeat multiple enemies of Konoha during the time of the First Great Ninja War. Ever since then, the three clans have lived closely to each other, and before you ask, Teacher San, their abilities were good at capturing an opponent, and I will not openly diverge their secrets, as that is their ability to share with the class, any more, questions. Naruto said to the teacher, whose jaw dropped to the ground, and Aruka said, beaming, yes, Naruto, good guess. It wasn't a guess, Aruka San, Precision said to the instructor. A talking bird, it should be mine. Give me the bird now, Sasuke said, emerging right in front of Naruto and trying to grab Precision. Precision disappeared in a flash, and Sasuke fell back, with a gash in his arm. What the, instructor? Naruto attacked me. All eyes turned to Naruto, and he finally stopped staring at blank space and said, Sorry, did you say something important? To Sasuke in the class. How do you know Kakashi, Naruto, Aruka asked out of curiosity. Hmm. Who's Kakashi? 
Later that day, all right everyone. It is time for some friendly sparring. Now then, everybody, use taijutsu only, and don't hurt anybody too bad. Five clean hits wins. Aruka said, hurting the class outside, until only Naruto was left. Aruka-san, if Sasuke challenges me and uses ninjutsu, which I suppose he will, may I retaliate? Itachi-sensei wants me to see how well he reacts. Very well, Naruto. But do not use a ninjutsu that will hit him too hard, Aruka replied. Very well, Naruto said, following Aruka outside. Now then, first match, Choji vs. Ino. Aruka said, getting Choji and a blonde-haired girl to come to the arena. Choji didn't move, and Ino blew a kiss at him, and Choji passed out, making everyone sweat drop. Next match, Sasuke vs. Aruka started. Put me up against Naruto, Sasuke shouted. I'll prove who's the stronger one. Naruto slowly walked to the drawn arena, and pulled out the rune sword, then put it back in the sheath. Aren't you going to use your blade? Aruka asked. No, sorry. But if I were to use it, I would get too tempted to use Kenjutsu. Naruto replied, instead pulling out a senbon from his pouch, next to two blades. A senbon? But that is still considered Kenjutsu. One of the other instructors said. Most of the students looked bewildered, although one of the older students with hair buns watched intently, and of course, Sakura looked in awe at Naruto, even if only for a second. She hadn't thought she would get to see a real Kenjutsu user so soon. Well, I originally was going to simply hide behind the mask, but since Serutobi-san chose such an obvious name for me, I don't need to hide myself anymore. Naruto said, taking off his mask all the way. On his face were his normal whisker marks, but what was new was a scar on his right eye that went through, not much unlike that of Kakashi's. What happened to your eye? Shino asked. Oh nothing, just a Kenjutsu move gone wrong. Naruto shrugged off, showing everyone his face. On his left cheek was a picture of three things. A snake in a circle, a fox, and a bird. What the? Sasuke asked, getting into the tiger stance. Tiger stance? Very aggressive, but can you use it correctly? Naruto asked Sasuke, putting the senbon in his mouth and chewing it. Of course, Sasuke said, launching a palm at Naruto's face. Naruto merely ducked, then, sliding behind Sasuke, he grabbed his other hand and pulled it behind his back. Sasuke gave a cry of pain, and his entire fangirl started to panic, and some even started to charge at Naruto, planning to free their love. Naruto raised his arm, whispered a few choice words, and his two birds disappeared from sight to the genin, but the chunin saw only shadow, darting back and forth. In a matter of seconds, all of the girls that had been charging at him now were on the ground reeling. Precision and shadow returned to his shoulders, and he looked down at Sasuke. Now then, Sasuke. Want me to help you so that those annoying girls don't bother you anymore? I can just teach you some rather simple jutsu that will make them go away, Naruto said softly to Sasuke, who nodded. As soon as Naruto let go of Sasuke, Sasuke leapt back, and Naruto said to the instructor, he has my permission to use ninjutsu, are you okay with that? Of course. After all, a few scars are what every ninja has, the instructor proclaimed, seeing the chance of a dead, demon. Okay then, Sasuke-san. Hit me with everything you've got. Precision, Shadow, go over to Shino-san and Hanada-san, will you? Of course, Naruto-sama. They both said, disappearing and reappearing on the shoulder of Hanada and Shino. Naruto, are you ready? Sasuke yelled, doing the hand seals for Grand Fireball. Then come on. Let's see if you live up to your older brother, Uchiha. Naruto shouted back. Sasuke let loose with the fireball, and it was about the size of a basketball. It hit the target, and for a second, he was scared that he might have hit his new friend on accident. Within a second, Naruto caught flame, however, in Naruto flashed Hanada and Shino a wink, before, with a shout, Naruto yelled, Futon, Kusei Tapa, great breakthrough, blowing off all of the fire, and knocking everyone flat on their butts. What the hell was that? One of the instructors yelled, still on the ground looking up. Naruto walked over to above him, and the sun was on his back. Precision and shadow returned to their spots, and Naruto said, that is my ability. Before walking back to Sasuke, and tapping him five times. I believe that is five clean hits, Aruka-san. He asked Aruka. Why yes, it is, Naruto. Good job, thank you. Now then, Aruka-san, please excuse me, 
but I think that I should now take my leave. After all, I believe that the Hokage is about to ask for me. Excuse me, Naruto said, shun shining away, surprising everyone. He appeared just as Serutobi was about to send out an Anbu unit to go and retrieve him. Serutobi waved off the Anbu unit, and beckoned for Naruto to come closer. Naruto, with all due respect, what the hell were you thinking today? Serutobi shouted. Serutobi-san, the name you used to try to hide my presence was able to hide me for about five minutes before one of the academy students was able to decipher it. What did you expect me to do? Ignore them. And what was with you deciding to use ninjutsu? If you didn't notice, Serutobi-san, Sasuke used it first. And besides, I already got permission from Aruka-san to use ninjutsu. It was either I didn't do anything, and when they got home, their parents fed them the crap that I was a demon, and everything, and they thought I was weak, or I kicked everyone's butts and when they got home their parents realized that I wasn't a person to be messed with. Two different options, Serutobi. Naruto shouted back, startling Serutobi. Well you could've, you could've, Serutobi said, thinking. Done nothing, at all, and get beat up, Naruto finished. Well, yes actually, I suppose that would've been the only other choice. You see, what I did was good, in a way. It was your decision to actually put me through this crap, so when I make a good decision, at least stand by me on it. But Sasuke is already dealt with. I helped him out today, so now we're kinda friends. Good, and the other students, are all strong for their level. Many were already able to use clan abilities, and the Nara was smart enough to extend his shadow in the case that I attacked. Smart. Good, then. I suppose you are dismissed, Naruto. Try to not give away too much, Serutobi pleaded. There was a girl, Rochelle Minra that threw a kanai at me, however, I believe that her parents taught her to be angry at me, she really is harmless. Can you re-enroll her into the academy? Naruto asked, remembering the girl that had thrown a kanai at him. I suppose so, Minra, a eh? Merchant family, I swear. The civilians are making their children become ninja more and more lately, Serutobi said, sighing. Lastly, Serutobi-san. One of the chunin today went out of your orders on purpose. You may be losing power, Naruto said, before Shun shining back to the academy. As soon as he appeared back at the academy, he realized that it was lunchtime, and that he had forgotten to bring a lunch in his rush. He panicked, until Sasuke actually caught his attention. He had about three or four bowls of rice with him, and plenty of teriyaki chicken, enough for a family to eat. He was surrounded by annoying, pestering girls, all of which were trying to get his attention. He caught Naruto's gaze, and sent him a silent plea for help. Naruto nodded, and looked at his two familiars with him. Shadow nodded, and Precision simply looked at the girls. In a black blur, Shadow dashed through the entire brigade of girls, and then returned to his shoulder. All of the girls suddenly had deep gashes on their arms, and their shirts and skirts had been blown up, giving Kiba, who was nearby, a clear look. Naruto then yelled, Futon! Kusei Tapa! Great breakthrough! Blowing all of the girls away, only leaving Sasuke, who had been clutching at the ground, stay. Kiba also went flying, and he landed right on top of Sakura and Ino, his face pressed into their chests. Thank you once again, Naruto-san, care to join me? Sasuke said, inviting Naruto over with a gesture of his hand. Naruto kindly accepted the food that Sasuke gave him, and the two ate in silence for a while, until Hanada, following Shino came by as well. Hello Sasuke and NN Naruto-kun, Hanada greeted, poking her index fingers together. Greetings, Sasuke-san and Naruto-san, Shino said, sitting down as well. Hello, Shino and Hanada, Sasuke replied, keeping an eye on his food. Hey Shino, hi Hanada, Naruto said, until he saw a girl past all of them, with brown hair and a senbon in her hand. She was staring at it as if deciding who to stab first. Haku-chan, it's been a while, Naruto shouted, getting the attention of Haku. Naruto-kun. How are you? Haku responded, running into a hug with Naruto. I didn't know you were attending the academy as well. How have you been? Naruto said while hugging Haku. Shino, Sasuke, and Hanada kept staring at the bizarre sight curiously, jealously, and a bit scared all at the same time. Oh, I'm being rude. Haku-chan, this is Sasuke, Hanada, and Shino. Naruto introduced. Hello everyone. Haku said merrily, HN. H hello. 
Salutations. Haku chan is an old friend that I met last year. She wanted to be a ninja, but I forgot about it. Oi, Kiba. Naruto shouted when Kiba tried to tackle Haku. He brought out the senbon that he had been chewing, and shouted with his hands in ram seal, multi senbon no jutsu, making numerous senbon all fly at Kiba, making him resemble a porcupine. Now that that is cleared up, how have you been, Haku chan? Naruto said to the bewildered girl, taking out another senbon and starting to chew it. Well, I have been rather busy with Zab I mean, my father at his erm job, of course, and he has been teaching me about stuff pertaining to his line of work. How have you been? Learn any new jutsu? Jutsu? How far have you gone in jutsu, Dobi? Sasuke asked. Well let's see, I have covered all of the basic level 1 and 2 katan and futon jutsu of course, I discovered 3 more ration jutsu, the first ones I have, and that's pretty much it, besides the base attack, supplementary and defense jutsu for every other element, you. Naruto said, receiving stunned looks from Sasuke, Hanada, and Shino, although he hid it well. Haku simply bonked him on the head, hard. Baka. You said you would have the Hyaten down also, what happened? Why are you always so lazy? Haku shouted. Sasuke watched the two start randomly yelling and bonking, and thoughts came to his head. Why am I so weak? I've been training so long to become better than them. So why am I still so weak? Maybe, the answer isn't resentment for Itachi Nisan. Maybe, the answer is, Sasuke thought, getting troubled looks from Hanada and Shino. Kiba got up again from his feudal position and yelled at Naruto, Hey dumbass! I saw her and tried to claim her first, so back off of my mate. All of the present kids at lunch turned and looked, to see a deadly calm Naruto facing a red-faced Kiba. Your mate? Naruto asked no expression on his face. Precision and Shadow looked at each other, and then turned to the other kids. You might want to start to leave, Shadow stated, while Precision started to warm up his wings. Why? What is the Dobi going to do to Kiba? Sasuke asked, getting a sharp look from Precision. We will try to stop him, but I have a feeling that he might castrate Kiba. Precision said in a solemn voice. Ha! Huh. As if an idiot, dead last person like Naruto could ever possibly defeat, Kiba said, throwing a kanai at, ha, before being cut off by Naruto appearing in front of him and doing a weird tiger claw-like attack, then ripping up until Kiba started gasping for air. Say one more thing, do anything that offends me, Kiba-san, and I promise you, that I will castrate you. No need for your mother to neuter you. If you don't swear right now, I will pull up more, imploding your lungs and crushing your heart. Naruto said coldly, before getting a weak, okay, from Kiba. Akamaru popped out of his jacket, and barked at Naruto, who simply looked down at him, tilting his head. Naruto then dropped Kiba, hard, who promptly turned running off to class. What did you do to him? Hanada asked in a hushed voice. Threatened to kill him. It was rather simple, and now I imagine he's going to go home. Tail between his legs, Naruto joked, getting relieved sighs from his classmates. Naruto then took out a senbon and started chewing it again. Boy, it was going to be a long day. Teachers Pav several of the demon hater teachers were inside watching the spectacle. They believed that if the demon could get Sume Inazaka angry, then their work would be cut out for them, so one can imagine their shock when Naruto did a move that only Gekko, a high-class Jonin usually did, spitting out a senbon at the kanai to prevent it from hitting those standing behind Naruto and appearing in front of Kiba. Several of the teachers were actually starting to wonder about the boy, and who it was in control, the demon, or the boy. Hidden location, kukukukuku, yes, yes, this is perfect. Next week I shall send for a chunin level Uchiha. I shall obtain the Sharingan, and I shall rule. A crazy voice said to a bowing Mizuki, the instructor that had tried to trip up Naruto multiple times during the day. This is a dragon contract, Mizuki. I obtained it when I was dissecting the gigantic behemoths of the north. I believe signing this will give you an advantage, Mizuki nodded, dutifully signing the contract, inserting his name and blood where required. Now then, we wait, for one week, Mizuki. I hope you are up for the challenge. He was running at top speed, at least he thought he was. Rushing and weaving through the trees, occasionally jumping over a trap, or setting a trap for his pursuer. However, due to the fact that the traps kept activating, he could only guess that his pursuer hadn't stopped. Finally, he reached a clearing. Yes, he thought, 
This would be the place where he made his final battle. He had just gotten vital information, and if he didn't deliver it, there simply wasn't a chance for him to lose, and he thought he knew it. Or at least, he thought he knew it. Two clad ninja appeared behind him, about thirty feet away. One had nice, short light blue hair and a large scroll on her back. The other had long sleek red hair, and a katana strapped to her back. The red head immediately drew her sword, and whispered some words, while at the same time, the blue-haired girl also took out her scroll, and wordlessly created two wings on her back, made of solid stone, which immediately flapped, lifting her into the sky. Finally, the man turned around, facing his pursuers. He had orange hair that was slightly scuffled, and he pulled out a sword with intricate patterns on it, that said in kanji letters, Dragon. Luster's plight, he yelled, stabbing his sword at the two kunochi, then running behind the beam of light that appeared from his sword. He immediately battled the red head in a kenjutsu battle, first jumping back and kicking off the branch straight at her, before she jumped up and kicked off of the man's shoulder, slicing him for good measure. Undaunted, he swung his sword horizontally, expecting to cut her in half, but the red head merely leapt back, and pointing her sword at him, yelled, Head Hunter Jutsu. Disappearing into the earth, the man jumped around, looking for any sign of her, but only found a spear through his stomach. The blue-haired Kunochi twisted the spear, then pulled it out, making the man gasp, but still tried to behead the lady that had pierced him with a spear. The blue-haired lady jumped back and while he tried to stagger towards her to stab her, he felt a sharp pain come from his legs. He felt like a complete idiot. While he had tried to fight the other Kunochi, the redhead that had initially gone into the ground had actually gone behind him, and sliced his Achilles tendon. The man fell, dying, and the last thought in his mind was, Forgive me, Jiriya-sama. Naruto woke up, and immediately created thirty shadow clones. Okay guys, you all know the drill, he said to all of the clones, all of which immediately nodded and went off to do their exercises. Naruto did a whistle that started with a low, low whistle, then immediately hopped up to a near screech at, trill, level. He blinked, and perched on his window with shadow and precision, and both of them nodded, greetings, Naruto-sama. Jeez guys, didn't I already tell you that you didn't have to call me that? Yes, Naruto-sama. Naruto sweat dropped, put on his shoulder guards, and one of his clones jumped into the room via window. The clone dumped a dead rabbit onto the ground, and popped out of existence. The two birds immediately started eating at the food, every once in a while commenting on how it tasted and what should be added. As soon as the two finished their meal, they took their places on his shoulders where there was actually an impression of where they had sunk their talons in every day. Naruto next watched as one of his clones climbed up the outside of the apartment, and around his arms was a long greenish cobra, lashing out at the hands. The clone and snake landed inside, and another clone brought in another rabbit, before poofing out of existence. The cobra slid out of the reach of the clone, which poofed, a moment later, and began to swallow the rabbit. Naruto, gaining the memories of the clone, was rather impressed with the progress that Dango had made, despite her rather annoying attitude and was starting to wonder if Dango was Anko's snake daughter or something. Naruto then went over to the tank that he now kept, full of water, and looked inside to see his two familiars, Ugani and Jammers were hanging out, swishing around. Another Naruto appeared, seemingly coming from the port, and deposited two rather large fish into the water, and the two sea familiars bit into the food, every once in a while spilling out some food. Yuck, anyways, Jammers and Ugani. How have your studies of your jutsus gone? Jammers wasn't studying yesterday, he was trying to get me to summon P.E. again. Really Jammers? Well, Ugani wasn't either, he was sleeping all day yesterday. Stop it you too, doesn't matter. Anyways, just keep doing it today, okay? I have a feeling that we'll be needing it soon, Naruto finished, making more clones to learn from the rest of his teachers, then leaping out of the window onto the street. Putting on his mask had become a second habit now, if only to avoid the annoying civilians. As soon as Naruto hit the ground, he started running towards the academy, knowing that today was going to be another round at spars, and with his guidance, Hanada, Haku, Shino, and even Sasuke had gotten stronger. He was honestly surprised with Sasuke, he didn't expect him to actually be so willing to learn. He had even made good friends with him. When Naruto entered the academy, he noticed something off about one of his best friends. Sasuke looked troubled, almost scared of something. Then, he came over to Naruto. 
Naruto-san, do you trust my brother with your life? He asked, fear in his eyes. Yes, with my life, and with all my descendants' lives, with everyone. Why? Because, you have to know something, Naruto, Sasuke said, leaning closer. Yes. My dad, is thinking of a coup de treat, to, return us Uchiha to our former glory. But I don't think so, not after what I've learned from you and the others. How many people? Nearly everyone with a sharing in. I'm just lucky that they didn't include me since I haven't awakened it yet. My brother can't talk to you himself about it without raising suspicion, but he's planning on killing everyone with it tonight, and he wants you to, fake, to be the reason that he had to run. I understand, are you sure? Because I'm not entirely sure I do. He wants me to fight him, in other words, stall him tonight, so he doesn't have to kill everyone in you clan. He'll definitely hold back, but still, fighting Itachi? Sounds like suicide. Yeah, I know, he also said something about leaving the village undercover, because he knows he'll be searched out by any organizations that mean harm to Konoha, Naruto. I can understand that also, are you sure? So basically, Nisan is going to be out of Konoha for a long time? Actually, Naruto said, with a serious expression in his eyes, he may not be allowed to come back at all. That night, Itachi prepared himself for the task that had to be done. He realized what he was doing. Killing every single member of the Uchiha clan, before they could betray Konoha. Yet still, he regretted, and looking at himself in meditation, he realized what he had to do. That night was also the secret meeting for the heads of the Uchiha clan, including Itachi's father, Fugaku, who was the leader of the revolt, along with the other elders and elites of the clan. Of how many Uchiha ninja were there, only about 30 weren't partaking in the event, and only because they either opposed too strongly, or were too young. All right, Uchiha ninja. Tomorrow night is the night that we retook our noble position. We shall rule as the main clan of Konoha, and with it, we shall finally kill off the members of the hated Hyuga clan, Fugaku said with a wild grin. The onlookers cheered, and, looking by the window, Shisui looked troubled. His best friend, Itachi, had told him to not partake in the final meeting, and Shisui trusted him with his life, but still, why? Itachi then appeared next to him. Itachi, I thought you weren't taking part in the revolution? Shisui asked eyes wide in shock. I apologize, Shisui, but this is no revolution. This is a betrayal, and I hope that you can understand why I am doing this, Itachi said, bowing his head. When he looked up again, Shisui's mind collapsed, and he dropped to the ground, half dead. Dumbass. I Itachi, I had the same views, just I didn't know if you did. Listen, I'm sorry, but I understand. Now then, take my eyes, Shisui said, to the shock of Itachi. But you can still survive, Shisui-kun. I can take you to the hospital, Itachi said, reaching down to Shisui before he grabbed Itachi's wrist, and held on tight. Listen, Itachi, I think it was time for you to know, I was going to die in a few months because of the chakra virus anyways, it just hasn't gotten contagious yet, take my eyes, or otherwise, they will be harvested for research. Are, are you sure? Itachi asked, tears in his eyes. Yes, kill me now, and whatever you do, Itachi-kun, Shisui said, making Itachi come closer for one last bit of advice. Don't die, Shisui said, before Itachi stabbed him in the back of the head with a kunai, easing his friend of his pain. Itachi then took Shisui's eyes out, and knew what he would do. He quickly went through the signs for summoning, and, saying, Kachiyose, a raven appeared. What is it, Itachi-sama? The bird asked. Listen, Kyo, I need you to take this eye and implant it into your own eye. Then head off and hide. I need you to look over a disciple of mine, but do not show yourself, or this eye. Just remain in hiding until I come back for you, understand? Hi, it shall be done, Itachi-sama, Kyo said, taking the eye into his talon gently, then disappearing. Itachi then took out a scroll, and sealed the other eye into it. Finally, he looked at Shisui's body and lit the eye sockets on fire with a small fireball. Immediately after, he did a sweeten technique and put out the fire, making it look his friend's eyes had caught on fire or something. Itachi felt a sharp pain in his eyes, but thought to himself, it will go away, beginning the Uchiha massacre, starting with the elders that were still inside the complex that they were holding the meeting at. In a puff of smoke, he preformed the shunshin, and immediately cut off the heads of the elders, all at once. They all dropped to the floor without a single noise, besides a slight thud. The first traitors killed. Who is next? Itachi thought, 
once again using Shunshin. Naruto Naruto walked towards the Uchiha complex leisurely, pretending that he wasn't in a rush to save the loyal Uchiha. Sasuke had said that his older brother would have killed all of the traitor Uchiha by nine, and that he would expect Naruto to be there by then, to challenge him. Naruto stopped by the gate of the Uchiha complex, to be greeted by a rather busty Uchiha lady, who had on bandages around her legs, and a pendant around her neck. Her hair was long and loose, and she almost resembled Kurinai, but not quite. What are you doing here, boy? The lady said in a brazen voice. I am here to help Sasuke Uchiha with his studies, as I know quite a few jutsu that would help him in many areas of ninjutsu that are rather awe, lacking, Naruto replied. The lady growled, but let him pass. Naruto already knew exactly where the training grounds were, due to Sasuke's descriptions, and thus went straight to there, although not without stopping by Sasuke's house first. He went by, and to anyone watching him, it would have looked like he was simply calling Sasuke to train. Naruto then looked at a nearby clock, and it said on it, 9 o'clock. He grimaced, and kept walking towards Sasuke's house. He came outside of it to see bloodstains on the door, and as any observer would expect, he immediately drew his sword, and started to stealthily go inside. Inside, Itachi was explaining to his mother about his father's plans after becoming Hokage, killing the Hayuga off, replacing the Anbu core with core made especially from Uchiha. Everything and with a sword around his neck, Fugaku really couldn't do much to stop his son. Naruto then jumped into the living room onto the couch, surprising all of the inhabitants of the room, although Itachi's shock looked more fake. What is your disciple doing here, Itachi? Fugaku asked, before his head came off from Itachi's sword. Makoto screamed, as her husband's head fell to the ground, and his body also fell. Makoto then collapsed, and shortly afterwards, fainted. Naruto-san, I believe that you know that I must leave Konoha? Itachi stated. But, why? Naruto asked, playing the part of a shocked student. Because, I need to test my strength, now then, Sukiyomi, Itachi shouted, his eyes flashing for a second. Naruto felt his conscience slipping away slowly, and when he opened his eyes, he was in darkness, and there was nothing but himself. Standing next to him was Kiyubi in her human form, and the two looked at each other before shrugging. Itachi appeared out of nowhere, startling the two, and Kiyubi got into a fighting position, but Naruto held up his hand and stopped her, before bowing to Itachi. Itachi-sensei, where are we? He asked, scratching his head a bit. We are in a genjutsu I discovered with the sharing in a while back. There's a tablet in the compound that tells of this power, in this genjutsu, I control time and space, it simply bends to my will. There's some other powers I haven't figured out also but those won't come for a while. Cool. So, what is our plan, sensei? Naruto asked. We have 72 hours before the genjutsu wears off. During that time, I will tell you everything else that I haven't thus far. And another thing, I'm going to teach you a choreography mimicked fight for when the genjutsu wears off. Great, before we get started though, how will I talk to you when you leave? The raven contract, they can find me anywhere. Now then, let us begin. Minus 72 hours later, why? Sasuke yelled, before Naruto woke up from the, fake, Tsukiyomi. Our run Sasuke, get help. Naruto yelled at Sasuke, staggering, playing the part of a victim of the genjutsu. Itachi's eyes widened. You were able to withstand that technique? How? Strength, Itachi sensei. Now then, I would suggest that you start to run, before the Anbu get here, he stated, chuckling on the inside. Itachi looked shocked, then disappeared in a blur, trying to get outside, but Naruto intercepted him halfway there. Tisk tisk, Itachi-san. Naruto said, waggling his finger at him. Itachi merely raised an eyebrow, and taking his sword on his back out of its sheath, both he and Naruto intersected blades, the two then skidded back, hands trying to stop their movement. Before Naruto could fully recover, however, Itachi recovered and sent an air bullet at Naruto which was obviously reduced in power, Naruto tried to block it, but the bullet exploded, and as Itachi was about to cleave his head off, an Anbu appeared, blocking Itachi's sword with a ninjutsu. Itachi then shushined, disappearing in a cloud of smoke, leaving Naruto and a cat mask Anbu. Itachi reappeared in the outside forests of Konoha, and immediately after he appeared, a man with eyes that had small ringlets in it appeared and said, Uchiha Itachi, 
may I have a word with you? Orochimaru's hideout When Orochimaru found out that Itachi had killed most of the Uchiha clan, he cursed aloud, and beheaded any of his subordinates that dared to come close. Mizuki himself was nearly as mad as his master, he nearly went and assassinated Itachi himself, but came to his senses due to Orochimaru. Damn that Uchiha, it seems as if I will have to wait until later to get an Uchiha body, well, there is always sweet Sasuke-kun, Orochimaru said, seething. Perhaps, if I were to it at the end of their school year, then Mizuki could steal one of the forbidden scrolls, and I could obtain the secret to the Naidame's abilities. Konoha, at the Uchiha compound Naruto, escorted by Nanbu, limped into the Hokage's office, and without a word, the Hokage took Naruto in his arms, and dismissed the Anbu. Naruto smiled, but then fell limp and Serutobi, panicking, shunshined to the hospital. Naruto awoke to a gathering of all of his teachers, minus Itachi of course, and Serutobi himself, all of them around him and talking. I'm still amazed that he managed to take a Tsukiyomi head on and not get killed, or at least get traumatized, I know for a fact, that even I would have been killed for sure, Kuranai stated, proud of her student. Blocking an air bullet? Amazing. And actually surviving the blast portion? Zabuza proclaimed, a grin on his face under the mask. Yash, I am as well proud of Naruto-kun. For he was able to keep up with Itachi-san. Guy stated flames in his eyes and his fist in a clench. Whatever the case, Guy, I imagine it would benefited for us to be quiet, so Naruto can sleep, Serutobi stated, making all of the Jonin's chit-chat cease. Naruto was about to talk, before the doors opened, and two of the advisors stepped in. How can we trust this Dai mean boy? He was trained by that traitor, Itachi. What if Itachi taught him his ways? He should be executed. Besides, he actually encouraged Uchiha Itachi to flee. The man snarled, pointing at Naruto, who nearly yelled, but managed to refrain himself. Yes, the boy must be contained. Perhaps we can put his new trainer as Danzo-san? He will be able to make him into a good ninja of Konoha, the woman said after the man. The two then stopped from the amount of killer intent being emitted from not only Naruto's teachers, but from Hiruzen himself, his fists were clenched, and even Guy was in a serious mood, his eyes glared at the two. Anko actually took out a kanai and licked it, while Hayate took out another senbon, and started chewing it. Kuranai scowled, and got her hands into position for a genjutsu. Kakashi gave an eye smile, but moved up his headband, revealing his sharing an eye the thing that Naruto had only seen one time, in training. Zabuza actually released his sword already, Hiruzen took off his ceremonial Hokage robes, and lastly, Yugo, in her Anbu uniform, unsheathed her ninjutsu and flipped it backward, getting into a stance, ready to kill. And how, exactly, half growled the Hokage. How do you know that is what he said? Well, we, I, Hamaru stuttered defiantly. Tell Danzo that if he makes any move, that every single Junin will be after him, and that even my son will want and wish for his death. Hamaru and Kaharu paled, and quickly exited the room, making all of the ninjas relax. Naruto then made his waking up known. So, Itachi-sensei left the village, huh? Naruto asked, startling all of the ninja. Why yes, your sensei left, I'm rather surprised that he didn't kill you actually. Hiruzen stated, shocked that Naruto was already awake. Question, brat. How the heck did you not get killed? Itachi was, Anko stated, hands on her hips. Yeah. Tsukiyomi, the unbreakable genjutsu. Kuranai said loudly in a hushed voice. Naruto simply looked at her with a look that said, I'll tell you later. He then got out of his bed in the hospital, and winced as he got up. H how is that possible? He got hit with an air bullet at point blank. Itachi was not holding back on power, and the bullet exploded right in your face. So how? Zabuza asked, shocked. I, think that Serutobi sensei shall tell you, however, what day is this? I need to catch up on training, Naruto stated, getting ready to create clones. Wait one second, Naruto-kun, Serutobi shouted, startling Naruto. Yes? Naruto asked, dropping the ram seal. During your fight with Itachi, he unfortunately managed to seal some of your strength and chakra, Serutobi stated, getting a shocked look from Naruto. But, I didn't give him enough time for something like that. So when? Naruto asked, becoming sub-merged into his own thoughts. After almost a minute of thought, 
He created the hand seal for Ram, and made twenty clones. Suddenly, without warning, he fell to the ground, his hand on the floor, and all of his senseis and Serutobi all rushed forward, surprised. However, Naruto soon began to slip from conscious and unknown to him, he was also slipping away from the hospital, and as the ninja watched, he slowly sunk into a black vortex-like shape, and when Hiruzen attempted to grab him, his hand slipped right through. Naruto woke up in a forest, with him being the size of an ant. Anko, Kuranai, Kakashi, Zabuza, Serutobi, Gai, Hayate, and Yugo were all on the verge of panic. Naruto had just sunk through the freaking floor into some weird portal and they couldn't find him. However, after a brief moment of panic, Serutobi regained his senses, and told the others that they should look around the village for Naruto, after all, there was a chance that he had just disappeared to somewhere inside the village. In a flash, only Serutobi was left, but right before he left, a hand touched him on the shoulder. He turned around to see the Yandaimi. Minato, what are you doing in public? Not the time, Serutobi-san. You need to know some things that I've found out, and don't worry about Naruto, he just got summoned by Tasuki, the raven boss. Well, alright, so what did you find out? Serutobi said, calming down and sitting down in a chair, beckoning for Minato to join him. Things about the rock, that you wouldn't believe, old friend, Minato stated, a disgusted look in his eyes. With Naruto Naruto groaned and sat up. He definitely was not feeling good after summoning the twenty clones. But still, he didn't really think that Itachi would put a seal on him. Besides, Itachi was still supposed to be good. So why? His thoughts were dispersed, however, when he felt something staring at him. He looked up to see the raven boss, Tasuki staring at him from about 13 feet away. Naruto immediately got up and bowed, before Tasuki bowed back. Tasuki sama to what do I owe this pleasure? He said, groaning slightly at his seemingly cracked ribs. Hmm. Where is Shadow? Tasuki asked, wondering where his choice bird had gone. I left him at home the day in which I was to challenge Itachi Sensei, he stated. Itachi Sensei? Then you do know of his decision to secede from Konoha for its own good? Yes, I fought him in a mock battle so that he didn't have to kill many of his family and friends, Naruto stated. Tasuki nodded, seemingly deep in thought. Then, a black spiral appeared in a tree next to the two and out of it stepped Itachi, already wearing a black cloak with red clouds. Itachi-sensei. What's with the cloak? Naruto yelled, relieved to see his sensei all right. Itachi looked at Tasuki, who nodded, signaling that it was safe, and Itachi went up and gave Naruto a brother hug, who was shocked by the exchange. Are you okay, Naruto-san? Itachi asked, sure to not hurt him too hard. Yeah, although the seal on my chakra didn't help me much, Naruto stated, getting an abashed scratch of the head from Itachi. Ah, about that, you see, when I was about to stop from killing you, I felt a small bit of the Kyubi's power, so I decided to use the Sharingan to force the Kyubi back into her cage, I think I may have accidentally sealed some of her energy away, Itachi said. Itachi-sensei. Naruto shouted in an obviously upset face. You sealed Kyubi further into my mind. Yes, Ga, she'll never let me hear the end of this. You can already talk to the Kyubi? Itachi gasped. Yeah, for a while now, ah. Why else would she have been in the Tsukiyomi? The only reason she didn't talk was because she was tired, too, Naruto said, throwing his hands up. Ehm, as entertaining as this is, I believe that both of you are here for a reason, Tasuki said, sweat dropping. Yeah, before that, Tasuki san Naruto, the Kyubi's power should come back to you within a day, so don't fret about it. But don't use any chakra at all today, understand? Itachi said, getting a nod from Naruto. Right then, Itachi-san, the eyes, can you show them to us? Tasuki stated. Of course, Itachi said, taking Shisui's left eye from a scroll, and Naruto near puked, but resisted. One moment, Kyo should have arrived here by now, Tasuki said, before a raven the size of shadow appeared, landing next to Tasuki. The bird had a Sharingan in his right eye. Naruto stared dumbstruck. Aaaas Sharingan. How is that possible? He gaped. I killed someone, and they had great genjutsu abilities with a Sharingan, and told Kyo to implant himself with the Sharingan. Itachi said, not giving away the fact that the person killed was his best friend. Okay then, you can now tell me more about enemies to Konoha. Any progress? Naruto asked. 
I have already found a group of people that want to do bad to not only Konoha, but to all of the nations. Good joke, Itachi-sensei. I am not joking, Naruto-san. There is an organization of people out to capture all of the tailed beasts, including the Kayubi, and use some sort of power. All? How many are there? How many tails does the Kayubi have, Naruto? Nine da, wait, you mean there's other tailed beasts with less tails? Yes, bit of a history lesson, there are nine tailed beasts, all derived from the ten tails. Th then I'm the strongest, oh yeah, Naruto shouted, smiling, before Itachi bopped him on the head. Don't get over yourself. The organization calls themselves the Akatsuki, and my partner is a guy named Hoshigaki Kisame, a dangerous defect from the Mist Village and a member of the former Seven Swordsmen of the Mist. He and Zabuza were incredible haters of each other, rivals. Then I'll be sure to give Zabuza sensei a good chance to fight him someday. Naruto smiled. Yes, I'm sure. But before that, I trust that you already know how to summon one member of a summoning clan in particular? Yeah, I think so, Naruto stated, scratching his head. All you have to do is to remember the name of that particular summon when you summon him or her, and they will come. When you get into too much trouble, summon Kyo, and tell him to help you with the situation. Hi, Itachi-sensei. Anything else you want me to do? Naruto asked. Yes, first, if you ever, ever meet anybody with the same cloak as me, flee, and create 200 shadow clones to run away and disperse then run as far as you can, even tap into the Kayubi's power if you have to, until you get back to Konoha, then tell Seru Tobi-sama that you met one of the Akatsuki, don't try to fight, you'll get slaughtered, as, although I am one of the stronger members, the others are still too much for you. H hi, next, visit the rest of my family in the next few days, make sure my mother is alright, and that my little brother can cope with the situation. Okay, although, Itachi-sensei, Sasuke-san is still holding up rather well, he stated. Good, I am relieved to hear that. Still, be sure to visit. And also, if a man named Danzo ever, ever tries to sway you to his side, kill him, Itachi stated, his eyes cold. Why? Because, Danzo is the entire reason that the Uchiha clan decided to revolt. He actually went to my father one night, and swayed him into believing that their former power was gone. Then he later told me to kill my clan. I hope you never have to kill, but, as you are a ninja, killing is inevitable," Itachi stated, before waving goodbye to Naruto, and stepping back into the black swirl and disappearing. So, how do I get back to Konoha? Naruto asked Tsuki. Well, normally you could simply shunshin, and appear in the forest of death, but since you aren't allowed to use chakra, I believe it is appropriate for me to reverse summon you back to your apartment, yes? Tsuki asked, prepping his wings. Uh. Sure, but how does that? Naruto asked, before Tasuki blew his wings at him, launching him in a whirlwind. Naruto saw black for a minute, before he woke up at his bedside, scaring the mask off of the Anbu that was at his apartment, revealing Yugo, who promptly hugged Naruto. Are you okay, Naru-kun? She asked, near strangling him in her hug. Can't breathe. Naruto choked, his face turning as purple as Yugo's hair. Oh, sorry. Yugo said, before dropping Naruto promptly on his bed, where he laid face down, his legs still on the floor. From their aquarium, Jammers and Ugani chuckled, before swiftly swimming into their separate small rooms, before Yugo could see them. Outside, Shadow and Precision were also chuckling, although from a much safer distance. Making sure that Naruto was okay, Yugo created a Shadow clone and left it next to Naruto, before Shun shining to where Hiruzen was to have gone looking for Naruto. It would be a good idea to inform him that he was safe. When Naruto woke up, again, he was greeted yet again with a gathering of his senseis, all of which seemed rather irritated. Really Baka? You didn't end up in a hospital bed once, but twice? Anko said, hands on her hips. W water, Naruto whispered. Zabuza slightly rolled his eyes and grabbed a water bottle for him. Where the hell did you go, Naruto-kun? We were worried sick. Kurinai said, in the same position as Anko. Got summoned, but Tasuki, the raven boss, Naruto said, between gulps of water. You've been out for a few days now, what the hell happened? Hayate asked, before Guy shouted. Yash, Naruto-kun must have been exerting his flames of youth. Perhaps this Tasuki was helping to fan his youth. Yash, 
I shall now go and run around Konoha five times. Guy shouted, pumping his fist, before leaping out the window. Naruto visibly cringed from the loudness, and the other senseis all looked at Guy, irritated. How'd you get hurt then? Sarutobi asked. Hey, tasuki sama had a wonderful idea. To blow me back to my apartment in a whirlwind, Naruto stated, making all of the ninjas present face vault. On a more, important note, how many days exactly have I been out? Naruto said, starting to get up. Only a day, so you haven't missed much, Kakashi replied, his Icha Icha book not out for once. A whole day? Ah, crap, Naruto said, before attempting to whistle. What are you doing, Baka? Don't stress yourself, Anko said. Don't worry, my body is getting back to where it should be, Naruto said, before in a yell of primal strength, his chest bumped up, and his arms returned to their healthy look. He jumped out of his bed, and bowed to all of his senseis, who were looking dumbstruck. Although Hiruzen wasn't as surprised, after all, the Kayubi wouldn't allow her container to be hurt too long. B but you were just, and now, Anko said, still dumbstruck. Yeah, get over it, Anko sensei. Thanks everyone, for being so concerned. But I have training to catch up on. Cage Bushin no Jutsu. Naruto shouted, making fifty clones appear. Hey wait a minute, Naruto-kun, Serutobi shouted, before Naruto frowned. Only fifty? That's not right, here we go again, Cage Bushin no Jutsu, Naruto shouted again, making another fifty. There, that's better. All right then, split up into your normal groups, but pair up to more than usual. Add five clones to each group, and the rest, come with me, Naruto shouted, and all of the clones saluted, shouting, hi. W wait. But Naruto, Hiruzen said, watching all of the clones run around, doing random things. Two actually brought out an octopus and turtle out of the water tank in the corner, and one whistled loudly, making two birds land on his shoulder. About forty dragged individual teachers out, asking for some training, and soon, it was just the Hokage, alone, in Naruto's room. Wait, what just happened? Serutobi asked, scratching his head. Naruto Naruto, the real one, was falling down from his apartment room, when he realized that he was still dressed in what he had been sleeping in for the past day. The shorts that said, property of Konoha, a, ninja, jacket, and an ordinary plain white tee. Groaning, Naruto ran to one of the only clothing stores that would let him in, the iron kimono. As soon as he stepped in, he regretted his choice. Inside the store browsing, were Ino and Sakura, chatting it up like old-time friends. Naruto edged by, hoping that he could get to the ninja men section before the girls noticed him. Unfortunately, the shop owner, Hitomi, I don't own Hitomi, immediately shouted, Hello, Naruto-san. How may I help you today? Naruto froze where he stood and both Ino and Sakura, who had been peacefully chatting a mere few seconds ago, turned their heads toward him, and there was an audible snap, as they turned to face him. You! You're the baka that prevented Sasuke from expressing his love for me. Sakura screeched, making even Hitomi flinch. EHM. This baka has a name you know. Sakura Haruno, daughter of the council member, hopeful future Kunochi, and one of the many, many fangirls of Sasuke Uchiha. A terrible future ninja, it seems. One of the many potential ninja that current Kunochi despise. Weak little fangirls that seem to enter the academy only to impress another person, and yet, you actually do have real potential, it only goes to waste when the Uchiha arrives. Also, you were one of the only students able to decipher the, every two, code, Naruto said, taking out a book and reading it. The title said, The Essence of Pressure Points. How to Render Unconscious, with a picture of a person, with multiple little dots where a hit was lethal. It was lucky that Serutobi had insisted that, since he was to be an insider on the future generation, that he were to read the all-knowing profiles on each and every one of the students, including the teachers. You might as well take off the mask now, Naruto, Ino said, pointing at Naruto's face. Why should I? There isn't much of a point, Ino-san. Unless of course, you wish to see my face again. Although there isn't much special about it, Naruto replied cleverly, while browsing the multiple racks and shelves of clothing, picking out one occasionally. Naruto Baka, you heard Ino Chan, take off the mask, Sakura screeched again. Well, if you wanted me to undress, Naruto started, then you could have just followed me to when I was about to try on the new clothes. 
Naruto held up the clothes he had picked out. Naruto Baka. Ino chan and I would never, ever do something like that. Sakura screeched yet again, jumping at Naruto, intending to punch a hole straight through his mask and face. In a flash, Sakura was face down on the ground of the clothes shop, and Naruto was standing on her back, still reading his book. Sakura didn't realize what had happened, and was about to screech again, when Naruto kneeled down and, taking out a toothpick, jammed it into a spot on Sakura's neck. Sakura fell limp, and Naruto picked her up. He looked at Ino, who had been watching the entire scene, and tossed her friend to her. Ino caught Sakura, although buckling a bit from her friend's weight. Ino-san, it would be wise of you to leave me alone. So unless you want what happened to Sakura to happen to you, Naruto said, casually flipping up his toothpick. Ino nodded, and left with Sakura on her shoulder. Naruto then turned to the shop owner, and swiftly apologized. Hitomi however, waved off the apology, and rang up his order. Sasuke Sasuke was part relieved to leave the Uchiha house, where he had been comforting his mother. He walked alone, from his house to the outside of his clan's designated area. And while he walked, people that Itachi had spared eventually came around, fearing him. He was relieved when he walked out. Sasuke immediately walked towards the training ground that he always went to, the normal training ground 26, where he would practice his katan ninjutsu, when he passed the 25th training ground, and was surprised to see Naruto there, with 20 other Narutos, all of them sparring with swords. Hey, Naruto! Sasuke yelled, waving his arm. All of the clones stopped sparring, and stared at Naruto. One of them stepped forward, and the rest continued to spar with blades. Hello, Sasuke-san. I am a clone, the real Naruto decided to go get new clothes, and meet up with some of his classmates. We were instructed to train, and then to dispel ourselves eventually. What? What type of clones are you all? We are cage bushins, and any experience we gain gets transferred over to Naruto, including the muscle mass growing. Several of us were sent to the library as well. Lastly, Naruto-sama created many more of us than usual because he has been unconscious. If you want to find Naruto, he should be at the ramen stand by now. Sasuke nodded. Training would have to wait until later. Sasuke then walked toward where he thought the ramen stand was. Naruto, hey, Haku-chan. Do you want to go out for ramen? Naruto asked, as Haku opened her door. Haku stared at him for a second, then said, Sorry, I thought I saw a little brat in an orange jumpsuit for a second. Sure. Where do you want to go for ramen? Um, the ramen stand nearest to the Hokage Tower, annoying brat in an orange jumpsuit. Creative, Naruto said to a shrugging Haku. Anyways, let's go, Haku-chan, Naruto said, dragging Haku. Wait. Naruto. I have to. Ah, fine let's go. Haku said, protesting while being dragged. Will you at least let me walk on my own? I have legs ya know. Hanada Hanada was around Konoha, wandering really. She was rather bored, and since there wasn't school today, due to the fact that it was Saturday, anyways, she was walking around, when she heard two familiar voices. Naruto-kun. Don't expect me to pay for all this. Nom nom nom. Sorry. What, Haku-chan? Hanada hid, and slowly activated her by Akugan. Just around the corner was Haku and Naruto, eating at the ramen stand. Ayame, the ramen waitress, was watching Naruto eat and eat and eat ramen non-stop, creating a huge stack of bowls. Hanada also saw, half-stalking Naruto, Ino and Sakura, and Sakura had a water gun in her hands. Just as Ino was about to tell Sakura that she shouldn't do something like that to Naruto, Hanada appeared behind them, and said loudly, although not loud enough for Haku and Naruto to hear, you know, if you wish to make friends, it's nicer to just ask, rather than squirt the guy with water. The two turned around, and Sakura screeched, what do you mean? Are you actually friends with that baka? You should be liking Sasuke-kun instead. Tell me, Sakura, what is so special about Sasuke to you? Well, he's hot, and, and what? Well, does he actually talk to you? Hanada questioned. Of course, Sakura said, hands on her hips, like what? Well, well, Ino-chan. What does Sasuke-kun always tell us? Sakura screeched, motioning for Ino to speak. He, he says to leave him alone, that's right. See, Hanada Baka. He tells us, wait, what did you say, Ino-chan? Sakura said to Ino. 
He tells us to leave him alone, that if we want to talk to him, to become stronger, and as of recent, to stop annoying Naruto and himself. When did Sasuke-kun say something like that about Naruto Baka? Sakura screeched. When did I say what about Naruto-san, Sasuke stated, walking up from behind Sakura and Ino. Naruto-san? I think you mean Naruto Baka, Sasuke-kun, Sakura stated. I meant Naruto-san, Sakura Baka. Ino, aren't you going to join your friend in being cruel to your classmate? Go ahead, Sasuke stated. Under the pressure of all three of the present kids staring at her, Sakura HMPED, and threw her hands up, walking away. Ino, however, stayed behind. Um, Sasuke-kun, Hanada-san, do you think that you could introduce me to Naruto-san? I think, I think we may have gotten off on the wrong foot, Ino said, shy for once. Of course, Ino-san. Naruto should be about to finish with his ramen anyways, let's go, Hanada said kindly. The three walked over to where Naruto and Haku were sitting, just as Naruto finished his 303 bowl of ramen. Sigh, finally, Naruto. Honestly, serving you is like a full body workout. Now, that'll be 726, Ayame said, panting. Naruto, uh, d, and Ayame face palmed. I suppose you could work it off by doing the dishes, again, Ayame groaned. Hanada, Ino, and Sasuke then appeared. Oh, hi Naruto-kun, Hanada said, still a bit shy. Hey, Naruto-san, I saw your clones all training on training ground 25, and one came up to me and said, Sasuke started. That I was getting new clothes and such, yes, yes. That clone already dispelled. As far as I know, my other clones should still be active, and a few should actually be coming to report, Naruto stated, waving Sasuke off. H. Hi, Naruto. My name is, Ino began. Ino. Yes, I know. Ino Yanamaka, a member of the Yanamaka clan, whose abilities include the mind, and the only one that you have learned thus far is how to go into another person's mind. Best friends with Sakura Haruno, and another one of those annoying, Sasuke fangirls. Sasuke. Did you bring her here so you could show me your latest fangirl repulsion technique? Naruto asked. Ino blushed, and Sasuke chuckled, shaking his head. I, I believe we may have gotten off on the wrong foot, Ino stated, blushing slightly. All this is nice, but Naruto-kun, are you going to work off the payment? Or actually pay for once? Ayame interrupted, a little irritated. Oh, wait. I'll pay. Hanada pipped up, bringing out a little rabbit-face-shaped wallet. Hanada-chan. You know it's not right for me to let someone else pay for me. I'll pay for it through labor, Ayame, Naruto said, waving off Hanada. Well theoretically, Naruto-kun. You could always pay Hanada-chan back in the future, Haku said. Mei Mei. I know. Shadow Bunshin no Jutsu, Naruto shouted. Twenty Naruto's suddenly appeared, shocking Ayame. Naruto-sama. What is your command? The clones all shouted. Ino stared in amazement. H he can really make that many. And they are all real. What the heck? Hey, Naruto-san, how many can you make? Ino asked, astonished. A little over 1,000 before I start to tire, and I try to not to get to that point. Currently, I should still have about 78 deployed around the village, for various purposes. Now I have 98 deployed. One moment please, Naruto said, poking his right hand with his left and shouting, Summon, Ugani and in a puff of smoke, an octopus in a water sphere appeared. Naruto then tapped his solar plex, and shouted, Summon jammers! And in a puff of smoke, a red ear slider turtle in a water sphere also appeared. The two water creatures acknowledged Naruto, and asked him aloud, What do we have to do, Naruto-sama? Freaking out the rest of the students. Why you have octopus and turtle clan contracts also, but, how? Sasuke asked. Yeah. How are you so powerful, anyways? Hanada asked. Naruto and Haku looked at each other, and shrugged. Ugani, jammers. You two are to help my clones with cleaning the kitchen for Ayame. Don't get anything else wet, but the dishes. Use this as training for your restraint and accuracy. I'll get you sushi tomorrow instead of normal fish, as well as some trout. Also, if she has anything else for you to do, do it. Now go. Naruto said ushering the two water creatures, and his twenty clones into the kitchen. Ayame simply shook her head, then followed the clones and creatures into the kitchen. Well, it was nice to meet you, Ino. I hope we can be good friends, now if you will all excuse me, 
I must take my leave now, Naruto said, starting to walk away. Wait. Where are you going? To train. Then can I come with you? Sasuke said, wanting to know Naruto's secret. Naruto stopped walking. On second thought, why don't all of you come with me to train? I think it would be appropriate, and a good time for me to monitor us, should we be placed on a team. One moment though. Naruto said, doing a few hand seals, then muttering, times five. The ground around where he was standing shuddered and a small crater formed, but before the others could notice, Naruto dragged them to training ground 57. The Chunin guard there already knew that Naruto was considered a sub Janin, so didn't ask them for identification. Besides, the Uchiha was there. What could go wrong? So, Naruto-san. I feel that you've put on a few extra, the Chunin began. For the sake of training, let's keep that a secret, okay? Naruto replied, giving a cheeky grin. Sure, sure. Well then, welcome to the, again, for the sake of training, let's keep that a secret, Naruto stated again, giving another grin. The Chunin gave a dead pan look, and let them into the training grounds. Now then, Haku-chan and I will go against Hanada-chan, Sasuke-san, and Ino. Are you all ready for that? Naruto asked. But wait, I'm a bit ahead of all of you, so why don't we make it that I step out, and the three of you take on Naruto-kun? Haku asked, grinning. Naruto sighed. Mei Mei. So, are you all okay with that? Good. Now then, rules are that you all win if you manage to corner me, and if you attack, I die. Any jutsu are allowed. Yada yada yada. Ino, Hanada, if you two or one of you two win, you get to do whatever to me, or a jutsu, and Sasuke, I swear, on my ninja way. If you manage to defeat me, I will give you three jutsu to use. Now then, for the sake of training, Naruto started, pulling out a scroll, and then summoning his mask. I'll get a bit more serious, Naruto stated, putting on the mask. Ready, set, Hajime, Haku said, from the side. Sasuke and Hanada immediately charged at Naruto, Hanada activating her by Akugan. Ino, however, readied her family jutsu, waiting for an opening to shoot her mind at Naruto. Naruto simply watched Sasuke and Hanada approach him, and didn't move. Sasuke then brought down a kunai, expecting Naruto to dodge, but the kunai went straight through Naruto. Hanada and Ino gasped, but Naruto appeared behind Sasuke, and gave him a one-two punch to the back. It didn't look like much, but when Sasuke stopped rolling, he gasped. Naruto was then between Ino and Hanada, and put his hands in his pockets, waiting for one of them to attack. Don't worry, Hanada and Ino, just my after image. Hanada, I'll try to trap him, Ino shouted, using her family jutsu, while Hanada ran at Naruto. Naruto simply jumped, turning Hanada toward where he was standing before, and Ino's attack went straight at Hanada, who fell limp. Ino also fell limp, and Naruto slipped behind her body, then slipped in front of Hanada. So, wanna fight? Naruto asked Hanada, or Ino. Ino growled a bit. Release, Hanada said, allowing Ino to go back to her limp body. Sasuke then launched himself at Naruto's blind spot, intending to karate chop the back of his neck and knock him out, but Naruto simply dodged again, by jumping up, and allowing Sasuke to nearly hit a still unconscious Hanada. Hanada then woke up, and attempted to use a Jiyukan strike on the airborne Naruto, who simply twisted out of the way, and appeared behind Hanada, karate chopping her in the back of the neck, effectively knocking her out. He then did the same thing to Ino, when she finally came to. Sasuke, upon seeing this, yielded. Naruto grinned, then disappeared in smoke. A shadow clone. Sasuke yelled. Haku then ran over to Ino, and tapped a few points, jolting her awake, she then did the same thing to Hanada, who gasped a bit. W what? That was, a shadow clone all along, Hanada gasped out. Yes, and as a matter of fact, I could have killed you all at any time, Naruto stated, walking out from the nearby trees. He looked at all of the bewildered kids, and said, Sasuke, check your pocket, Ino check your shirt pocket, and Hanada, check your hood. Sasuke took out of his pocket a kanai, Ino took out of her pocket a explosive tag and Hanada took out of her hood a small dagger, bringing an EHHH from the three. Sasuke, I gave you that when you first tried to slash at me with a kunai, I slipped it into your pocket. Ino, when you were passed out from the failed jutsu, I slipped that explosive tag into your pocket, and Hanada, 
when I karate chopped you in the back of the neck, I slipped that dagger into there. All of you were great together, though, Naruto stated, chuckling a bit. B but. You. Sasuke stuttered. Why yeah. How. Ino also stuttered. Ah. Naruto-kun, Hanada said, having a cat-like smile on her face. Yes, Hanada-chan. Naruto asked. Why don't you check the hem of your left pants leg? Hanada asked. Naruto looked down, and saw a senbon sticking out of his pants. He then sweat dropped, and said, Oh, that's right, the Byakugan, that initial Jiyukan strike, right. Hanada 2, Naruto 1. Haku and Hanada both started laughing hard. They both then went over, Haku took off his mask, and Hanada kissed Naruto on the cheek, before Haku put his mask back on. Ino looked at Naruto, and touched her lips with her right index finger, while Sasuke looked bewildered. Hanada, Naruto started, getting Hanada's attention. You're great at the Jiyukan, and any single one of those strikes definitely would have given you guys a good advantage against me, as well as maybe have dispelled my clone, and your eyes allow you to see through Jutsu. However, I think that you should learn more normal elemental Jutsu, as it will help you quite a bit, as anyone you fight will expect only the gentle fist. Here, I got this a while ago, and I don't remember the name, but it will help you with the gentle fist style, Naruto stated pulling out of a scroll a set of rings, black with a diamond shape on the middle. Slip these on, then tap the diamond, and long needles will poke out, that can be a median for your chakra, making a gentle fist style technique much more specific with this, and you can also use it as a brass knuckle or something. Here, try them on, Naruto said, handing them to Hanada. Th thank you, Naruto-kun, Hanada said, blushing and returning to her shy state a bit because Naruto gave her a present. Ino, Naruto stated again, this time staring at Ino. Your idea with the hitting me with a mind possession technique was good, but in a real battle, although a ninja is all about stealth, you should expect that eventually, an enemy may slip through your defenses in front of you. Should that happen now, then you would be done for. I think you should work on your taijutsu more often, and work on learning more of your clan's techniques, because I have heard of a technique that made people go insane, or for their body limbs not to work. These would be very useful to you, but be careful with them. Now then, since you have to focus on defense, Naruto stated, now pulling out two bracelet-looking objects, once again, black with a diamond shape on the middle. Put these on your wrist, then slap it when you need a defense. It will automatically create a shield, of which should withstand most attacks. This is called a physical manifestation shield, it's melded with chakra. Don't worry about how it looks, by tomorrow morning. It should look how you want it to, it just may cost a bit of chakra to get there, Naruto said, handing them to Ino, who blushed. Thank you, Naruto-san, and sorry for the grief that Sakura and I have given you thus far, Ino said, lowering her head as she put on the bracelets. Don't mention it. I don't care what you may have done before. Now, as far as I am concerned, you are a friend and ally, and I like to make my friends strong. Now then, Sasuke. HN, don't tell me. My slice with a kanai was slow, my punch was weak, yada yada yada, Sasuke said, crossing his arms. Actually, I was going to compliment you first. Your taijutsu was very good for your age, and your strategy as well. I know you were prepared for me to dodge a bit to the side when you sliced at me with your kanai, but there is one thing, Naruto stated. Yes, your ninjutsu. I understand, you're a uchiha. Thus, you can copy whatever jutsu you wish eventually. Well I don't work that way, I am afraid. If we are to be friends, you are to never copy jutsu from me, unless I give you my permission, understand? Naruto said sternly. Yes Naruto-san, Sasuke said, arms still crossed. Now then, as your ninjutsu is your weak area, I should be giving you a jutsu. However, because I made it a solid point to give everyone now a taijutsu weapon, I will give you something else. Hmm, what to give what to give, I know. Naruto said pulling out of his scroll a weird-looking long stick. The stick was blue, and made of a type of metal. It was pointy on one side, and there was a grip on the other, but otherwise just looked like a blue spear. So, how is that going to help me? Sasuke asked, curious. Glad you asked. This is a weapon I picked up off of a merchant that was in Konoha a while back. He is the one that supplies us with all of our weapons, from kanai to shuriken to even swords. He is a master blacksmith, and was a bit short on cash, since he actually makes brilliant weapons, and yet doesn't sponsor them for some reason. 
Anyways, I helped him with something for a while, as well as tried out some of his wares for him, so he could know their strengths and weaknesses, and he gave me this. It's a spear all right, but it's a fully extendable spear. This spear can go forward 50 feet and back in about 3 seconds. This will help you against a long distance fighter. W what? F550 feet. Sasuke said, losing his posture. Hanada and Ino, who had been on the side trying out their new weapons, looked over. Yes, and I give it to you, as a token of friendship, Sasuke-san, Naruto said, holding it in both hands as he showed it to Sasuke. T thank you, Sasuke said, respecting his friend for his trust. No problem Sasuke, now why don't you join Hanada and Ino, and try out the spear? Naruto said, making a gesture of, after you, with his hand. Ah, I think that's enough for today, everyone, go home if you want, or do whatever but I have to get back to meditating soon, Naruto said. Well, mom's gotta have dinner on the table by now, see ya, Ino shouted, running off. Yeah, I should be getting home by now, bye, Sasuke said. The servants should have missed me, goodbye Naruto-kun, I had fun today, Hanada stated. Yeah, Zabuza Poppy's going to kill me if I don't get home soon, bye, Naruto-kun, Haku said, walking off. Wait, everyone, Naruto said. Yes, Naruto-kun, Haku asked. The others stopped leaving as well. Cage Bushin no Jutsu, Naruto yelled, bringing to life four clones. Yes. It, it's rather late now, I think it would be safer if one of my clones traveled with each of you, just in case, Naruto stated, as the clones each went with their respective person. All right, all right, Naruto-kun, for you, Hanada said, walking again. HN, thanks, Naruto-san, Sasuke said, starting to walk again. Naruto watched all of his friends leave, and then sat down criss-cross applesauce, and closed his eyes. Unknown to him, two Inazaka were nearby, watching him. That's the one, Kiba. A woman asked. Yeah, Hannah. That's the one that disrespected me. You know it's against my nindo to bully younger ninja so my brother has an easier school life. But sis, I know, I know, I will still help you, just don't be so eager about me getting one of your friends intimidated. All right sis, and he's not my friend. Naruto was meditating, yet he could hear the two talking. He immediately recognized the voice of Kiba Inazaka, and the other voice was a mystery to him, but had the same faint undertone as Kiba's. He also could hear, and smell four dogs, all of which, he could imagine, could smell him as well. Hana Inazaka then leapt out her hair in ponytails, fang marks evident, and wearing a fake fur coat and shorts, showing off her legs. Her ninkin were walking with her, all three of them, as she walked behind Naruto, very stealthily. However, Naruto still managed to hear her. So I imagine you are Kiba's older sister, Naruto said, his back to Hana, and eyes still closed. Why, aren't you the clever one, yes, my name is. Hana Inazaka, well-known future veterinarian, Graduated from the academy last year, current ranking, high genin. How did you, mother is the feared Sumei Inazaka. Younger brother is Kiba Inazaka. Original heir to the Inazaka clan, but stepped down so her younger brother had a shot. Hates men that exert their force too much. To date has neutered 20 Inazaka clan males. Number of males neutered outside of the clan, unknown. 72 so far. How do you know so much about me? Hannah said starting to back up in fear. You would be surprised at how much you can find out by reading. Now then, Hannah. I suppose you are to teach me a lesson for being better at multiple things than your younger brother Kiba. Including making friends, restraint to women, studying, and practically every learning category at the academy and as of recent, knowledge in general? Excuse me? Kiba said you were a dead last dumbass that tried to abuse any girls that walked on two legs, and tried to steal his friends, so stop lying. My apologizes, but your brother is the one that fits in that category. Obviously, he said that in order for you to naturally be infuriated with me. If you were observing, for the past few minutes, I have been sparring with friends, and teaching them in a way. B but, Kiba would never, ever dare to, Hannah said in disbelief. Really? Are you that devoted yet dead beat that you don't see what he has done? Naruto stated. Grr, Kiba. Hannah screamed at the bush her brother was hiding in. Kiba then, eeped, and ran, not looking back. Hannah was about to chase after Kiba, but Naruto put a hand on her shoulder, stopping her. What's your problem? I'm going to kill my little brother. 
Hannah yelled, trying to get out of Naruto's grip. She was surprised, however, that despite her efforts, Naruto still managed to hold onto her shoulder tight. Hannah-san. I believe that if you were to kill your brother without reason that your mother might react negatively. However, if she were to see his disgusting behaviors herself. All right. Sorry for getting out of control, Hannah said, shuddering down a bit. It's all right. But try to refrain from doing something like that in a battle type of situation, as it will prove to be your downfall. Naruto said, before Shun shining away. Hannah watched where he had disappeared, and started home. She would make sure that Kiba paid. Naruto Naruto reappeared outside of his apartment, and as he was about to walk up the stairs, a sight bewildered him. Shino Abarum, the bug user, was nearby, and it looked like he was in trouble. He was surrounded by five big burly kids, all of them were huge and one was rather fat. It was obvious, from the headband that they wore, that they were genin rank, and that they were bullying Shino. Shino himself was merely standing, alone. But on the inside, he was quivering slightly. The big guy had decided that bugs were gross or something, and thus had, attacked, Shino. However, if any of them attacked, the carnivore's bugs that Shino had with him would react. It wouldn't be his fault if a bunch of kids got eaten by random bugs. However, one of the many genin was obviously a relative of Choji, as he was huge and fat. So, a little bug freak, eh? The big Akamichi said. Yes. Although I am not little, nor am I a freak, I can communicate with insects. And as insects can live with me, I suppose you can easily call me an insect myself. Shino said calmly. Eh, hey, shut up with all the dumb words. We are ninja. We talk with our fists. The guy said, pulling his fist back for a punch. Shino closed his eyes behind his glasses, and tried to will for his bugs to get the guy, but froze up. He waited for the punch, but it never came. Hey, so where does a big dumbass like yourself get around to bullying Abarum? Especially Shino, my friend, a voice said. Shino opened his eyes, and saw Naruto holding the fist of the Akamichi. The fist was enlarged, with a mere pinky, and otherwise simply watching the group of bullies behind his mask. Nani. The Akamichi cried out. Now then, word of advice, kid, Naruto said, pulling the kid close. Why yes? Don't be a bully, or I will destroy you, Naruto stated, letting him see his eyes flash blue for a moment, before kicking the Akamichi in the stomach. His friends all yelled out and charged at Naruto, who merely said, first movement, dance of the lily. In a blur, Naruto span in a circle, surprising all of the genin, and in a flash, he knocked one after the other of the genin in the stomach, sending them flying away, until all of them but one were reeling on the ground, clutching at their stomach. The last one was bigger than the Akamichi, and visibly upset. Hmm. Dance of the pond lily, Naruto said, jumping forward and digging his fist into the genin's stomach until Shino couldn't see his arm. The big boy stumbled back, then fell on his back. Don't just stand there and stare, Shino-san. Hurry home. Naruto said to a watching Shino, who nodded and hurriedly ran home. Naruto then looked at the group of genin, and shushined back to the outside of his apartment door. He appeared practically on top of the civilian girl, who blushed. Anko just decided to visit her student, and what she saw was her student lying on a girl, and she left, not bothering to ask. The girl blushed, and said, Why, I didn't know you were that kind of person, neighbor San. Naruto groaned, got off the girl, helped her up then hurriedly said, sorry, and went into his room, to his meditation mat. After all of his clones had dispelled, he made his, alarm clock, clone and went to bed, after brushing his teeth and taking a shower. Naruto was in the hotel again. He looked around, wondering where the Kayubi was, but after failing, he stopped searching. He then walked to where the elevator was, and went inside it. On the bottom right, next to his hand, were three buttons, all brightly lit up. The lowest one said, cat, then, dog, finally, weasel, Naruto hesitantly pressed the one that had, cat, on it. When Naruto stepped out of the elevator, he was back in the stealth dojo, and nearby was Yugo, camped out with Melon Paw in the middle, occasionally pointing out where she thought Naruto was. It was a regular training day, but as Naruto watched, Yugo grew a tail. Then cat ears. Her eyes changed and grew slit, her nose became more pressed into her face, and eventually, she fell on all fours, and grew black and white fur. An after image moved back, and Yugo was once again sitting on the seat, pointing out where Naruto was. 
However, there was now a cat the height of Naruto walking towards him. Naruto felt a huge instinct to flee, but fought it off, and stood his ground. This gave him a strange bemused look from the cat. Sure is no reason to be afraid, the cat said, in a low-pitched Russian-like voice. Of course. I presume that you are the tester for the cat contract? Naruto asked, going into a deep bow. Ah, yes. And I presume that you are Z male Zat Yugo decided was worthy of signing our op contract. The cat replied, sitting on all fours, shoulders and head up. His tail was tucked under him, yet appeared flickering towards Naruto from beside his four feet. Yes, I am that person. Ah, Zen, I believe Zat Z's is yours, the cat said, licking his paw, then slamming his paw on the ground. Naruto jumped, but the cat took out of midair a scroll, labeled strangely. Sign Z's, and you all have, Z full support of Z cat clan. That's it. That is it. Okay then, sign here, initial here, right, I believe that's it? Naruto asked. Yes. Now Zen, leave, and do not ever fail us. You are free to summon us to your world whenever, as it is Razor Fun's ear. Okay, thanks, and you're gone, Naruto said, trying to bow to the cat, only to see that the cat had already left. Naruto bent down, and picked up a note left by the cat. As a helpful reminder, the mark for our clan on you is the whisker marks. You may find that your current marks, given by the Kayubi no doubt, are now deeper, as a sign of our clan. Do not disappoint. Naruto's hands immediately went to his face, and he realized that what the note said was accurate. Next to the circle with the three symbols, the ridges on his face for whiskers were deeper, perhaps another half as much as before. Naruto shrugged, and then walked back to the elevator. On his bottom left, the button for cat had disappeared, leaving, dog, and, weasel, he could easily guess that, if he went to the dog area right after visiting the cat area, that they would hate him even more. Thus, he instead pressed the, weasel, button. When Naruto walked out of the elevator, he found that things had changed. The area was now more like a wooden playground than anything, complete with huge downward slides and loop a loop slides. There was also a strange looking jungle gym, however instead of being made of small, plastic connectors, this one had huge wooden trunks. Naruto saw nobody in sight again, and was about to leave, thinking that the weasels were probably out, hunting snakes, again, when he heard someone. X excuse me, are Y-U-A-S-S-S snake? He heard a small, feminine voice say. He turned around, and saw a small, short little girl, with small furry white ears and a tail almost as long as herself. She stood at about three feet tall, and was slightly chibi. Head is one third of body size, smaller arms, her arms were covering her face, and she seemed rather scared. Air, no, I'm not a snake. I presume that you are one of the members of the weasel clan? Naruto asked. The girl took her arms off of her face, and stared at Naruto. Her irises were a light blue, but seemed to vary between light blue to dark purple. Ah, ah, my parents aren't home right this moment as they are actually on a an expedition to, hunt, so I'm afraid that our contract cannot be signed at this moment. Oh, that's too bad. What is your name? And my name? The weasel girl asked, her tail nervously wagging. Yes, I am Uzumaki Naruto, now please introduce yourself, Naruto stated, going into a bow. And my name is Kuei, and, I'm a weasel, Kuei said, mentally slapping herself after, for saying her name was, cute. Well, as long as he doesn't ask, Kuei thought. Kuei, doesn't that mean cute? Damn. Yes, I was named that, Naruto-sama, when I was born, I believe that my parents should be back later, Kuei said, hoping that Naruto would leave. All right then. I suppose I have time to wait for your parents, Naruto replied. Awkward silence. Kuei was about to say something about getting a seat, when the two heard a strange bell noise, and cheerful chatting. Into the room walked a couple of furry creatures, much like Kuei, just larger, almost as tall as Naruto when they were standing up. They walked with a combination of a walk, pad, and a stride. As soon as they entered the living room however, they stopped, as if they smelled something. Kuei, were you cooking snake scale again while we were gone? You know how very unhealthy that is for you, the masculine voice said. Yes, Kuei dear, listen to your father. Snake scales aren't very healthy, it's called junk food for a reason, after all. Oh who is this? Is this where the snake smell is coming from? The feminine voice said. Ah, my name is Naruto Uzumaki, 
I am pleased to meet your acquaintance, Weasel Sama, Naruto said, going into a deep bow, even though the weasel was shorter. Oh please, call me Mrs. Kukurai, everybody does. This is my husband, Mr. Kukurai. Now then, why do you smell a bit like snakes? She asked, putting her hands on her hips. Well, that is most likely because I signed the snake contract, Naruto said, feeling a bit uncomfortable. Ah, so that's why. Don't worry about our rivalry, child, we don't hate you. However, we cannot allow you to be our summoner if you have the snake contract. Unless, you passed my test. Wait, you are the weasel boss? Naruto asked. Why yes, now then, will you take my test? Mrs. Kukurai asked. Yes, I will. I will do anything I can to get as much power as I can to protect my village. Ah, good. Then, I shall initiate my test upon you. Right then, come on, and follow me. Kue, honey dear, will you two put away the snake meats? I have to give this human the third test version. Mommy, can't you give him the first instead? Kue said, suddenly looking scared for Naruto. Sorry honey, the last tester took the second test, thus, I haven't got much of a choice but to give him the third, Mrs. Kukurai said, frowning a bit. Right then, what is this test? Naruto asked, in anticipation. Well, let's walk and talk, shall we? Mrs. Kukurai said, giving a gesture for the two of them to walk one way down a stone hall. The two started walking. The third test is a battle against a monster that we only know as the Codex, Mrs. Kukurai stated, and was it Naruto's imagination, or did the room suddenly get colder? Who is this, Codex, Naruto asked. It is a monster, a terrible monster, one of which we captured long ago, at the cost of the lives of most of the Weasel clan, she said, continuing to walk. In front of them was whiteness at the end of the stone tunnel, like an opening to a coliseum. I'm guessing I have to fight it, Naruto asked. No, pray you never have to see it, face to face, for even the entire clan as a whole fled on sight from the monster, she stated grimly. The white exit was getting closer. Then what do I have to do? Force it back into its cage, we always use a technique known as air manipulation. It is a technique that controls the very air around us, and the taker of the test uses this technique to force that creature back into its cage. Be warned, for this is a S plus rank jutsu. SS plus rank jutsu. Naruto yelled in shock. Yes, but because you will be taking the test, we have a pendant for you to wear. It is extremely powerful, and thus, will be loads of help for you in the future. It practically halves the amount of chakra needed for a technique, she said. H have. Yes. I'll all right then, I am ready for this test. What are the signs for this technique? Naruto asked, pumped as Mrs. Kukurai pulled out a pendant and slipped it around Naruto's neck. How do you feel? I feel, great, Naruto said, smiling. Good, now then, the signs for the jutsu are, Mrs. Kukurai said, showing him. Naruto stepped out of the tunnel and into the Colosseum grounds. In front of him he saw an enormous gate the height of the Hokage Tower, and the length of the Hokage Monument. He gulped, but swallowed his fear, walking towards where he was supposed to for his push. Let the third test form begin. One of the weasels on a catwalk said, hitting a gong. The doors to the cage were eased open, and Naruto began the first 20 out of 100 signs. A loud metallic sound scrapped out of the gates, and Naruto almost hesitated, yet didn't stop. 40 out of 100 now. The metallic sound echoed again, and he saw a little shine deep within the cage. 60 out of 100 now. Suddenly, a large paw swooped out of the open cage, and nearly flattened Naruto, missing only because he had jumped back. 80 out of 100. Another paw now came down, and this one was even bigger. Naruto felt the air of the strike this time, but it still missed. Last hand sign. A snout emerged, and just as the creature's eyes were about to be exposed to the Colosseum, Naruto yelled, wind style, air manipulation, and made the air form into hands, which pushed the creature far back into the cage, before closing them shut himself. And then he collapsed, panting heavily, and about to pass out. It took a few moments for him to register that the weasel crowd was cheering loudly, and Mrs. Kukurai was waiting for him by the Colosseum entrance. Good job, kid. I guess you get to summon our clan after all. Naruto nodded numbly, before passing out in his dreams. Naruto awoke as usual to the slap of the face, courtesy of the alarm clone he had set up earlier. 
Grumbling, he cancelled the clone, and rubbed his eyes, feeling a weight on his chest, and looked up. Directly on his chest was a fox with two tails, it was white, yet had a bit of a red outline, and two well-kept tails. She had red eyes, and was staring very intently at Naruto from about an inch away from his face, her snout nearly touching his nose. Yes, it's that Pokemon from the show, and no, I don't own Pokemon. Naruto gave the natural reaction. Ah what the hell, he yelled, shunned shining to the door. He grabbed a scroll on the ground, and took out a huge Fuma shuriken, and prepared to throw it. Who are you and why the hell were you wait? Naruto stopped yelling, remembering what Kayubi had said. Are you the fox she sent, Hitomi? Hi, Naruto-sama. You should really be more of a light sleeper, after all. I have been sitting on your chest for about three hours. It is very warm there, Hitomi said giving a fox grin. Grr. Nice to meet you, Hitomi, my name is Naruto Uzumaki, please don't call me Sama, it's rather annoying. Have you met my other familiars yet? Naruto said, shaking the dark spots out of his eyes. Yes, I believe that my acquaintances are Jammers the Turtle, Ugani the Octopus, Precision the Falcon, Shadow the Hawk, and Dango the Snake, correct? Spot on, so, why did it take you so long to get here? Naruto asked. I apologize, but the Fox Clan has not been summoned since the times of the first Hokage, and thus, the way out of the summon realm was hard to follow. Forgive me, please, Hitomi said, bowing her head. Now now, don't worry about that, but can you please excuse me for a moment? My clone should be arriving soon, Naruto said. The two waited for a moment, and a clone came in through the window, carrying a dead rabbit, then dispelled. Same thing happened again, just with a fish instead of a rabbit. Finally, another rabbit was deposited. Naruto first whistled loudly, doing a low-pitched whistle, then raising it up. Then he went over to the aquarium and knocked on the glass, getting Jammers and Ugani to wake up. Finally, a clone carried Dango up through the window. Good morning, Naruto-sama, the animals all chorused. Hello everyone, I'd like to introduce to you all Hitomi, she is of the fox clan. She is the newest familiar, so I expect you to treat each other with respect. Of course, Naruto-sama, Precision and Shadow said, each bowing their head. Dango HMPED, and the aquatic creatures didn't respond much. Right then, everyone. Today is the graduation ceremony for me at the academy, so I want you all on high alert, alright? Also, I have realized that I haven't been paying attention to all of you enough. Although it is hard, I should have tried harder. Please, forgive me. For the next few days, there will be a schedule you guys can all organize if you want and for the day that falls to you, you will be the only summoned animal. Sorry guys, for not paying attention to you all more, Naruto said, before putting on his mask. All of the animals seemed a bit taken aback, but precision and shadow still flew onto Naruto's shoulder, following him as he leapt down from his window. When he landed, he landed right next to the civilian girl that kept popping up, startling her. He waved to her gently, before running off towards the academy, his mask on his face. Today was the last day of the academy. When he arrived outside the academy, he was greeted with a sight he tried to avoid. It was some kids from his year, picking on a girl that looked familiar. Her hair was long, and went down to her waist, and her eyes were bleach yellow. Naruto landed right behind the bullies, a couple of oversized kids, who were surrounding the girl, so couldn't see her, without a noise, but the girl saw her, and her eyes widened a bit in shock. You know, bullies. It isn't a good idea to pick on a poor girl. If you want to pick on someone, shouldn't you pick on someone your own age and size? Naruto said, perched on the tall brick wall that surrounded the academy. What the? The biggest one said, turning around. Hey, who the heck are you? Ugly number two shouted. Naruto sighed. You know, you are being quite annoying. Why don't you all just stop bothering the girl and let her go? Why should we? Ugly number three said. Because of this, Naruto said vanishing from their sight. A second later, all three guys had a kanai at their throat. The biggest guy had one from the kanai Naruto was holding in his mouth, and the other two, from the ones Naruto was holding in his hands. His mask was gone, so the biggest guy had a very clear look at his face, as well as Scar. W what in the? The biggest one said. Leave now or there won't be enough of you to send back to your parents, Naruto said, his voice muffled from the kanai. The big guy didn't look convinced. So Naruto made some chakra flash in his eyes, and intimidated, the biggest one ran, the other two following his lead and they tripped over each other before picking themselves back up. 
Are you okay? Naruto asked the girl, not looking at her. I didn't need your help, the girl mumbled, looking away, rubbing her arm. All right then, should I call them back over here and tell them they can annoy you then? And no, please, don't do that, the girl said, her voice breaking as if fragile. All right then, in that case, I will just walk to class now, do not worry. I will not tell anyone about you being saved by a demon, Naruto said, walking out of the little courtyard. Wait, please, what is your name? The girl asked. Naruto Uzumaki, don't you know that already, Rochelle Minra? Naruto said, to let her know that she remembered her. As sorry about what I did on the first day of school. It's all right, I understand the peer pressure of things, to try to kill the one that attacked Konoha, even though you aren't from here, Naruto stated, still not facing him. H. How? I have my resources, and do not worry, I will not give away either of your secrets. I believe that the final day of class is about to start, so I am going to go now, I would advise you to come as well, Rochelle, otherwise, you might be late. See can you g give me a, a piggyback R ride? Rochelle asked, startling Naruto. One of those genin hit me in the leg on, accident, Rochelle said, answering Naruto's unasked question and showing her bruise. Of course, I don't let my classmates lag behind, now please, get on my back, Naruto said, holding his two hands back in a, climb on, gesture. Rochelle blushed, yet still went on Naruto's back, hugging him around the chest for a grip. She knew that she barely knew the student, besides all the rumors told about him, but he seemed so polite now, even before, when she had thrown a kanai at him, he was still polite. Unknowingly, she had been feeling his abs that had resulted from all the working out, and with her being on Naruto's back she could easily feel all of his muscles on his back, holding her up, and they were extremely hard. She wondered what it would have felt like if he hadn't been wearing a shirt and she had been feeling his muscles. Rochelle blushed, knowing that she had been thinking perverted thoughts, but who would have known that the blonde mystery had hidden so much muscle under his outfits? Rochelle continued to think about Naruto's figure, until she finally got out of her stupor by Naruto lightly tapping her back. Ha! Huh. W.H. what? Rochelle said, before realizing with a red face that they were in class now, and that she was still on Naruto's back. The entire class was staring at them, and how at peace Rochelle seemed to be. Everyone was quiet, minus an occasional person, a girl, saying in a jealous voice something like, Dang, he's a lot hotter than I thought. Rochelle kept looking confused, before she realized that in her stupor, she had ripped off the sleeves of Naruto outfit. Now leaving him in an armless black t-shirt with his mask on, normal ninja-style jeans, and a small jacket carrying stuff over his now muscle shirt, even though the sleeves had been torn off those as well. The result of all of the girls seeing Naruto's muscles was that all of the Sasuke fangirls now turned into Naruto fangirls. All except for Sakura of course, who still stuck by Sasuke. Of course, there was still Hanada, Sasuke, Ino, Shino, Kiba, who was now a friend after his disciplining, Choji and Shikamaru, all of which were staring at Rochelle's blissful look in Naruto's build. That girl had better get off my Naruto-kun within five seconds, or I'm gonna, Hanada thought, imagining her in Rochelle's place. Dang, I knew he had quite a bit of strength behind those punches, but those biceps and triceps are the size of my head, Sasuke thought, a bit of at envy returning. Oh, my, effin', god. I might just jump him to get a feel of those muscles, wait, better idea. Ino thought, wiping a bit of drool that came from her mouth, then putting her hands into a unique position. This is illogical on the class's part. They should have realized that all of that strength had to have come from somewhere. However, it is still quite impressive that his biceps have gotten so large. He must have been holding back on us more than I thought. Shino thought, pushing up his glasses. Holy shit. I wouldn't want to be the old perv I was before now. Naruto would slaughter me, Kiba thought, shuddering. Geez, if I didn't know better, I would have thought that Naruto had taken one of the those legendary pills, perhaps the red chili one, Choji thought. Troublesome, if I ever do my shadow possession technique on him now, his pure strength might be enough to break out of it, how troublesome, I'm just glad that I'm too lazy for him to react enough to me at this point, Shikamaru thought, pretending to be asleep. Rochelle then stiffened suddenly. Mind possession success, Eno thought. Pretending to be asleep, Rochelle, Eno groaned and started pulling on Naruto's jacket. Naruto, bewildered, took off his jacket and put Rochelle, Eno down into a sit, so she could sleep. 
The result was everyone seeing for the first time, the skin plastered black shirt that Naruto was wearing, the one that stuck onto his skin, making his six pack very, very visible. Half the class that was the girls passed out from blood shooting out of their nose, including Hanada. Sakura just got a bit of drool coming out of her mouth, but it was progress. Later, after the blood was all cleaned up, blackmail photos were taken, and everyone had woken up, the instructors came in, and Aruka gave the speech about the genin exam. Now then everybody, this is practically the very last chance for you all to back out of becoming a ninja before death, so if anyone would like to drop out, do so now. Aruka said, locking eyes with each and every single student. Not one single person reacted, and Aruka smiled. Then now, the genin exam shall begin. I will call you in individually one at a time. Anybody heard telling their classmates what the test is about shall fail automatically. First is Jenny Alyssa, Aruka stated, and a young short girl with her hair in a ponytail went up into the room to take the test. So, Naruto, your birds haven't talked for a while, have they? Sasuke asked right off the bat. Nope, and also no, Sasuke-san. I will not let you sign their contract. One of these days you shall have your own choice to sign a contract. Then, you shall have your own clan to summon. Until then, lay off, man, Naruto said, taking out his book, The Essence of Pressure Points, How to Render Unconscious. Hey, Naruto, whatcha readin'? One of the girls from behind asked. Oh, just a pressure points book, Naruto said, his eyes never leaving it. Yo Sasuke, who can win in a sparring match, you, or Naruto? Asked a guy in the back. Naruto and Sasuke exchanged looks, and simultaneously said, Sasuke, Naruto. Everyone around laughed, and Jenny came back, her eyes were watery. What's the matter, Jen Jen? One of the guys asked, going up to a sniffing Jenny. I, I didn't make the cut, she said, sobbing. Ah, don't worry about it, the guy said, hugging her and patting her head. Hey, since when have Jonathan and Jenny been going out? Hanada asked in a whisper. I think it's been two weeks, Kiba replied, scratching his head. The two, Jonathan and Jenny walked out, and from then on, they were a rather happy, joyful couple, that passed the exam the following year. Back to normal time, Shino Abarum, the instructor called from the other room. Good luck, Naruto said, so only Shino could hear, without alerting the others. Thank you, it is appreciated, and I will be relaying the test to you via my insect, so you cannot be cheated of a perfect score, Shino said, knowing that the Chunin couldn't hear him. Argito, Shino-san. For what? Shino asked, showing a slight smile as he walked into the testing room. Naruto continued to pretend to be reading the book, but what he was really looking at was how the friendly insect that Shino had given him was acting. Currently, it was spelling out TJ, meaning to Naruto and his friends, Taijutsu. Then, it traced into, Henge, then, replacement, then, clone, then finally KJ, for Kenjutsu. Naruto sighed in relief. It meant that he wouldn't be tested on genjutsu and such, which was a relief. Naruto read and watched as the test went through everyone except for him and Sasuke, until finally, Sasuke's name was called. Don't fail, Sasuke-chan, Naruto said jokingly, getting the middle finger from Sasuke. Sasuke went inside to the testing area, and the instructors, Mizuki and Aruka, smiled, Mizuki more than Aruka. Mizuki then went through the taijutsu test with the simplest moves, the first step of the tiger, lotus, crane, etc. stances, never the more advanced, which troubled Sasuke. Next was the henge, which Sasuke excelled in by turning into Aruka. Then he replaced himself with Aruka, finally, he created three clones, of which walked around a bit before being dispelled. For Kenjutsu, he threw his shuriken and kanai all at once, and each and every single throw hit true, bull's eye. Congratulations, Sasuke. You got a perfect score. Now then, for an extra credit question, Mizuki said, ignoring a protesting Aruka. Can you do any elemental jutsu? Mizuki asked. Sasuke grinned, and shot a basketball-sized fireball into the air, before eliminating it. Nice, Sasuke. Now then, for this, you've got the highest score. No way anything can change that. So good job, Mizuki said, ushering Sasuke back into the classroom. You realize that was unfair, Mizuki, Aruka said, upset. Ah but Aruka-san, it was the council's idea to make an extra credit question for him, Mizuki said, grinning when Aruka wasn't looking. 
Well fine, in that case, I'll have to do the same for the next student, Aruka said. Very well. I don't care at this point. Choose whoever you. Mizuki began. Naruto Uzamaki. Aruka shouted. Naruto scored the exact same amount of points as Sasuke. Despite Mizuki trying so hard to prevent him from doing well. He also did the shadow clone instead of a normal clone, and Mizuki wasn't able to tell much of a difference. After everyone was finished, there was a final sparring round between the year's elites, Naruto versus Sasuke. Rochelle had passed the test with flying colors, but was now nervous. Who would win? And was Naruto angry with her? And so, the final match was set up. All right, you two, and everyone else. This is the tiebreaker, to decide who gets the title, Rookie of the Year. So now, let's get on with it. Must be knockout to win, ready? Aruka said. Sasuke got into a tiger stance, while Naruto got into his newest stance, the creeping serpent stance, surprising all of the watchers, since he had created the taijutsu himself. Hajime. Immediately, as if driven by some unknown force, Sasuke, whose hands were in tiger claw form, and his legs squarely apart, and Naruto, whose hands were in loose form, hanging down, and his right hand was up, like a snake ready to strike, Naruto and Sasuke started to rotate around the circle drawn into the ground. The tension was so thick that one could cut it with a knife. Finally, Sasuke, impatient, flung himself at Naruto, with his hands outstretched, Naruto, however, saw through the ordinary clone, and so simply blew past the illusion, and started to circle Sasuke. Quite soon, Naruto was going so fast that it looked like there were 20 Naruto's, all of them simply circling Sasuke, who was ready for an attack. Naruto suddenly appeared out of nowhere and did three punches to the stomach of Sasuke, who passed out when he hit the wall. To everyone else but the Chunin however, it looked like a single, solid punch. Hey, Aruka-sensei, who gets the title then? Naruto asked. X after the day was done, the graduation ceremony and everything, Mizuki pulled Naruto aside to talk. Hey, Naruto, good job on the test today. So, a full-pledged genin today, huh? Mizuki asked, pointing to the leaf height height on Naruto's head. Yeah, finally graduated. Listen, if you want to choose your teams for when you become genin, there is an old side test you could take. Thanks Mizuki-san, really, thank you. But I think that whatever combination is created, that I will be able to excel at it. Now then, I must be going to join my friends in an activity. Excuse me, Mizuki, Naruto said, pushing past him. Well there goes me getting Naruto to steal the scroll for me, Mizuki thought, bummed out. X, hey, Kit, a voice in Naruto's head said. Who is this, Kayubi? Yeah, sorry I've been asleep, but you should know something about that Mizuki man, Kayubi stated. Yes, I could sense the dragon contract coming from him, but it's deranged for some reason. I think something's wrong with the creatures he summons. That's strange, but I can't afford to dawdle over it, sorry Kayubi. It's alright, just keep your eyes open, Kit, good night. Then, Naruto got out of his stupor. All of the families of his friends were there, and most of them had already met him. He chuckled a bit when he saw Hanabi, Hanada's little sister, behind a tree staring at him. Makoto, Sasuke's mother was there as well, and although she still looked a bit worse for wear, she was still smiling at her son's graduation. Ino's father and mother were next to her, all three looking like triplets while Shino's father wore a higher coat than even Shino, although he actually talked to Naruto. Kiba's older sister had made it with her mom, and both of them were respectful to Naruto, even though Hana flirted only a little bit, naturally, since Naruto was still only wearing his muscle shirt. Standing near Ino's family was Shikamaru and his dad, as well as Choji and his father, and all of them looked close. Naruto felt a bit sad because of how only he didn't have someone with him, but this feeling faded quickly when the Hokage himself showed up. Hokage-sama, why are you here? Mizuki asked, a bit afraid his mission had been discovered. I am simply here to greet Naruto and congratulate him on his becoming of Rookie of the Year, is there any issue with that? Serutobi asked as he was surrounded with the new genin, some shy were shy about meeting the Hokage, but others wanted his attention. All of the civilian parents and their children became quiet after that. They had heard that Naruto won, and then they heard that Sasuke won, so of course, they believed that the Uchiha had gotten the spot, but if even the Hokage had said it. Hey, Serutobi-san, how are you? Naruto asked. 
smile wide on his face, although his mask hid it. I am fine, although my age is starting, very slowly, to catch up with me. Now then, I believe there are some people you wanted me to be introduced to? Sarutobi asked. Ah, yes. Here, this is Ino, Kiba, Sasuke, Hanada, Shino, Shikamaru, Choji, and Rochelle. They are from my class, and my closest friends by far. I am a close friend, Rochelle murmured, having finally woken up. Ah, so, who did you give which things, Naruto? Sarutobi asked. By this point, all of the parents had gotten closer. Well, I gave Ino that physical chakra shield, Kiba, the gloves that have claws that can come out, Sasuke, that spear that can shoot off like a missile, Hanada I gave the rings that have the long spikes that can poke out, Shino I gave a long chain and scythe, Shikamaru I gave the bow, and I gave Choji the knuckle busters, Naruto said, shocking everyone. You were the one that gave my son, daughter those? All of the nearby parents asked. Yes, I regard them all as allies and friends and I have no use for allies that are weak, nor friends that I always must protect, although I still will protect them, made sure that all of my friends are capable of protecting themselves appropriately. Yeah, it was troublesome to train with these though, Naruto, Shikamaru said, grumbling. On his back were a bow and a pouch for arrows. Oh stuff it, lazy, Ino said. On her wrists were two identical bracelets that were black with a blue-green diamond shape in the middle. Yes, but I imagine now that all of them are strong enough to defeat you, yes? Serutobi asked, wanting to make Naruto's friends push more. Yeah, Naruto, you never did tell us whether or not we are strong enough altogether to take you on, Choji asked. Didn't you tell us after graduation that you would tell us, or at least let us challenge you? Sasuke asked. And do not forget to have all of your animal familiars with you, Naruto-san, Shino stated. Naruto's sweat dropped as all of his friends started to request a spar with him, all of them against him at the exact same time. Hey kid, you haven't gotten that cocky that you think you can take on so many of your peers at the same time did you? Anko said suddenly shun shining right next to Naruto, who ducked as she threw ten kanai at him, all of which narrowly missed the Hokage. Watch it, Anko. Serutobi shouted. Yeah, yeah. Well then, Naruto-kun. Why don't you battle all of them right here, right now? I want to see how much you have improved since last time, Anko said, twirling a kanai. Anko sensei, I send you 50 clones each and every day. I think you know my strengths and weaknesses well enough by now, right? Naruto asked, trying to get out of showing his strengths so soon. Come on Naruto, don't be a wuss, Zabuza said, shun shining to the spot as well. Naruto's sweat dropped then waved at everyone to give them a wide area to fight in. Can I at least have one person help me? Naruto asked hopefully. Nope Naruto-kun, sorry, but you have to do this yourself now, Haku said, knowing that Naruto was going to get her into the fight. As a matter of fact, I think I will join your genin friends in the spar. All of the parents and students were now about 50 feet away, but Naruto still told them to back up, then they all just stopped on purpose. Ready, Hajime. The Hokage shouted. No one noticed Mizuki slip away. Genin versus Naruto. All right then guys, do you want to fight with Genjutsu, Kenjutsu, and Ninjutsu, which ones? Naruto asked, not moving. Hey, Taijutsu and Kenjutsu only, Anko and Zabuza chorused. All of the fighting Genin sweat dropped, and Haku, Hanada, and Ino winked at Naruto, saying, go easy on me. Rochelle was standing behind Naruto in the circle, as she figured it would be a lot safer. Yeah, we got a lot stronger since last time, Naruto. Let's go everyone. Hound formation. Kiba shouted. All of the other genin nodded in agreement, and shifted, with Kiba at the very front with Sasuke and Haku, Ino at the very back, and Hanada with Shino in the middle, and Shikamaru and Choji protecting Ino. Don't tell me, you all have been training together behind my back. I am afraid that I can't let you all win this time, friends, Naruto said. Kiba and Sasuke immediately charged at him with Haku right behind, and Sasuke knelt, letting Kiba jump on his back, using his clan's taijutsu to try to strike Naruto with a tiger-style claw in the face, while Haku and Sasuke held hands, and Haku spun Sasuke, before releasing him, with his feet directed towards Naruto in a kick. Haku then immediately followed her hands in a karate chop, Shikamaru's shadow connected with all of theirs beginning to stretch towards Naruto's shadow, 
Hanada activated her by a Kugan. Ino had her hands in position. And Shino had his bugs start to chase after Naruto. Naruto ducked Kiba's tiger claw palm. Doing one of his own directly at his stomach. Then he did a little hop over Sasuke's kick knocking him down in his chest with a light punch. Nonetheless, Sasuke gasped for air as he sunk into the ground. He then avoided Haku's horizontal karate chop at his midsection by dodging back, then responded in kind, making Haku gasp for air, on all fours. A collective gasp came from all of the parents as they watched how powerful Konoha's, demon, had become, as he charged towards Hanada and Shino. Shino's bugs immediately started to eat at his chakra, but he spun, and all of the bugs fled, right before a small whirlwind was created by his rotation, creating a taijutsu defense. A smoke screen resulted from the gravel, and Hanada shouted, above us. They both jumped back quickly, and Naruto hit the ground, creating a crater where he landed. He didn't even hesitate in taking a taijutsu battle with Hanada, who couldn't even land a blow, and he struck her squarely in the chest, sending her over on the side. He then did a quick kick to Shino, who got sent towards Hanada, head first, spinning like a torpedo. He barely missed hitting Hanada head on. Ino shouted, he's in my range guys. And then, Shikamaru shot out his shadow to try and hold Naruto still while Choji enlarged his hands in case Naruto tried to charge them. Shikamaru's shadow connected with Naruto, but he continued to run towards the three, and at this point, most of the crowd gasped even more, knowing that it was nearly impossible to break out of the Nara shadow technique. Troublesome, Shikamaru said, retracting his shadow and connecting it to Choji's. I almost have him, Ino said trying to follow a weaving Naruto as he got closer with her hands. Hurry! Choji shouted, running forward to try and punch Naruto with his enlarged hands. The punch hit the ground, but Naruto jumped up and ran along Choji's arm, before doing a light punch to his stomach, which sent him reeling. Naruto then jumped over a reeling Choji, only a mere 10 feet away from Ino and Shikamaru now. Shikamaru then turned for some reason and punched the air behind him, Choji responded in kind, and barely missed Naruto, before passing out again. Shikamaru looked at Ino, who nodded, running in the different direction, and Shikamaru took out several smoke bombs and kanai, and started to spar with Naruto, who was obviously holding back. Wait, everyone, Naruto said, holding his hand up to Shikamaru to yield. All of the other genin soon got healed by Ino, who got taught a healing jutsu by Naruto. Ah my stomach, Kiba and Sasuke groaned, holding it. Listen, I gave you your weapons for a reason, right, and besides, this a kenjutsu, taijutsu match, so let's step it up a bit, Naruto said. The parents then gasped, realizing that they weren't fighting to their full potentials. The rest of the genin got up, grinning and completely unhurt, although, Shino wasn't smiling. So you saw through the act, huh? Hanada asked, scratching her head and smiling. It was a good idea, but ineffective against me, now come at me with your full strength, because I am no longer going to hold back on taijutsu, besides my weights. Damn it. Well everyone, I guess we have to go full strength now, huh? Sasuke said, grinning. Everyone else nodded, and took out their individual gifts. Hanada took out of her pocket the ten rings, and put them on, claw-like needles immediately coming out. Kiba took out gloves, and tapped the left knuckle, making claws come out. Shino took out from his side his chain and scythe, beginning to swing it. Sasuke took off of his back his spear, and held it like it was a sword, pointing it at Naruto. Ino tapped her bracelets, and large black shields appeared on her wrists. Shikamaru took out his bow and arrows, notching one on the bow, and aiming it at Naruto, pulling it back. Choji took from his pocket a set of golden knuckle busters, which barely fit onto his large hands. Lastly, Haku took out ten senbons, and got ready to throw them at Naruto. These are some tough kids, Serutobi muttered, staring at the kids. Well then, everyone, I believe that since you are all going you're all in Kenjutsu and Taijutsu now that it is appropriate for me to retaliate in Kenjutsu, Naruto said, pulling his sword off of his back. Mizuki snuck over to the Hokage Tower, jumping on buildings to get there. With the gift his master had given him, he now knew exactly how many Anbu were following him, as well as how fast they were, and how strong they were. He greeted the secretary and Chunin guards, who didn't take much notice of him except a simple, hello. Once he reached the floor in which the Hokage resided, he casted a genjutsu on the area, 
a very, subtle one, and the Anbu that had been tailing him didn't realize that he was in the room. He opened the cabinet door that had the key for the scroll, and then, using the key, went over to the back of the room where there was a tiny key slot. He then slid the key in, and turned it. Immediately however, half a dozen chakra chains came out of the drawer, and Mizuki cursed, leaping back and getting ready for a fight. Ex Naruto looked slightly taxed as he dodged an arrow heading towards his face at super speed, then jumping to avoid Kiba and Akamaru as they tried to hit him with their claws, then hitting Hanada in the chest with the flat of his blade, and smacking Shino's chain scythe away, slicing Ino's shield and whacking away Sasuke's spear thrust. He dodged the Senbon sent toward him also, as he got ready to fight again. Meanwhile, the spectators' awe for Naruto was becoming more and more pronounced, as they watched the blonde wonder hit here, then there, then over here again as he warded off his classmates. His stamina and kenjutsu teachers, Anko and Zabuza were also getting a bit impressed. Anko because he was still fighting after 30 minutes, and Zabuza because of how many weapons he was deflecting. Both knew, however, that he still was wearing weights that Guy had given him, and knowing Guy, Naruto was probably only going at about a tenth of his true strength, if even. Finally, all of the genin fighters leapt back from Naruto, panting heavily. Sasuke was the one to point his spear at Naruto and shout, Naruto! You said you would fight against US at your full power. Yeah. Naruto-kun, we can tell you're still holding back. So take us seriously already. Hanada shouted also, surprising her father, who didn't think she would or even could yell. Are we that weak that you won't take us seriously? All that training was for nothing then. Stop being so illogical and just fight us truly. Shino even said, raising his voice and startling the crowd. Darn it Naruto-kun, fight already. Do you all really want me to show off all of my true strengths so early? Naruto asked, his voice small and while all of his friends were panting heavily. Their faces beaded with sweat, he hadn't even broken a sweat yet, or even had taxed breath. Of course we do, was his answer. Then please, wait one moment, Naruto said, calling out. Guy sensei Do I have your permission? He yelled, knowing that Guy was listening from somewhere. Yes, you do. Let your bright flames of youth burn brightly, and that the shower of sloth be released, was his reply, and nearly everyone in Konoha heard him. Well all right then, Naruto said grinning. I may as well tell all of you now, as you all know, I'm wearing weights and gravity manipulators, Naruto said, bending over to his the bottom of his pants. Of course we know that, Naruto, Kiba shouted, Akamaru barking in agreement. Well, do you know how much I've been wearing? Naruto said, taking out something from his shoes. Ah, uh, fifty pounds. Hanada guessed. Correct, on each arm, leg, and my midsection, Naruto stated. You were going that fast with that much weight on you. What the hell? How could you have even moved when you put those on? Kiba shouted. I have to admit, the first day I wore them, I actually fell to the ground and had to crawl home, Naruto stated, sweat dropping. That's an understatement, Zabuza muttered. The day Naruto put on all that weight, he couldn't even train any kenjutsu, he was simply too slow. But at the same time, you shouldn't be able to go too quickly, as the rest of your body isn't in tune with how fast your actual speed is, Shino stated. You see, when I was training before, I came up with a solution. I would every once a while take off my weights, then train with them for a day. This way, my body could still stay in tune with how fast I could actually go. That's actually pretty smart, Shikamaru grunted. Well then, allow me to show you my true power, if only for a moment, Naruto said vanishing from everyone but the Hokage and Junin's line of sight. Even the Chunin teachers were barely able to keep up, and Aruka had to say, W what is this? You see everyone. This is what the brat really can do. And he's still holding back, shouted Anko, and Zabuza agreed. In an instant, all of the Genin fighters had been knocked out, and Naruto was putting his weights back on. Mizuki panted, as the chains finally went limp. He had been dodging them for an hour, before finally sealing them into a scroll, to later present to his master. He checked the time, to see that it was already 5 p.m., and so, the sun must have been setting, a good time to leave while he could. After sealing the chains away, he opened the drawer, and pulled out a huge scroll, and strapped it to his back. He opened the window, and leapt out, taking note of the Anbu units that were pursuing, and swiped his arm, drawing blood, before stopping and slamming the ground, shouting, Kuchio's no jutsu. 
A huge poof appeared, and Mizuki was off. After his friends had been woken up, Naruto promptly showed his childish side by asking if they wanted to play hide and go seek. Aren't we a bit old for that now, Naruto? Kiba asked, as Akamaru whined. Which is exactly why I think we should do it now, after all. This is the last time we can do something like this before the adults look upon us with scorn. While I do enjoy such games, we all have abilities that will help us with detection, so of course, this will be a slight, ninja, version of hide and go seek, Shino said, moving up his glasses. So no summoning animals to help guys, Sasuke said, specifically to Naruto. Hmm, my Byakugan is a bit too unfair though, Hanada said. Doesn't matter, you can't just see them, you have to actually physically touch them. Where should we play? Naruto asked himself, until an idea popped up in his head. How about the outside forests of Konoha? There are enough Chunin guards in case we get lost, and it's a huge place. Right, although, how shall we determine who is seeker? Choji asked. How about we, draw the short stick? Sasuke asked, and the others all agreed. Naruto then pulled on a few pieces of grass, making one of them shorter than the rest. Right then, who wants to go first, Naruto asked, holding the pieces of grass. Mizuki was panting heavily. The summoning had taken quite a bit out of him after all, and now, there was an Anbu squad in front of him, ready to retrieve the scroll and kill him if necessary. Stop it Mizuki. Why are you doing this? shouted one of the Anbu units. It is my master's will, and now, you shall all die. Mizuki shouted, commanding the dragon that he had summoned which was blue and the size of a house. Choji had drawn the shortest stick, and so all of the genin had gone to the outside forests, and had hidden while Choji counted. Naruto himself ran towards one of his favorite hiding spots, a small alcove behind a waterfall. When he had gotten there, he promptly hid behind it, and taken out a book. He read for a bit, until he heard some shouting, and a huge roar nearby. Startled by the large roar, Naruto got out of his hiding position and looked at the large dragon that had just appeared. Oh shit that's not good. Naruto shouted, drawing his sword. All units, regroup. One of the Anbu units with a frog mask said, as he leapt back. All of the 30 out of an original 40 Anbu units leapt back. Use strategy 42. The frog mask man yelled. Hi. The Anbu units all said. Some of them launched fire jutsu at the dragon while others immediately followed with wind jutsu, but it wasn't any help. Finally, the frog mask and a few others began throwing explosive units all around the monster, not yet detonating them. Activate them. The frog unit yelled, activating his explosive tags. All of the other units did the same, and all of the tags detonated simultaneously, blowing up all the areas near the dragon, which reared in pain. Come on you stupid big lizard, attack, Mizuki shouted. Naruto then saw then explosion while he ran, and rather than slowing down, he sped up, now using chakra on his feet to speed up, and he thought about the sword on his back. No need to be impatient, I suspect you will be used rather soon, Naruto thought, referring to the rune blade. Hanata and Haku were standing on a few tree branches, when they felt the enormous explosion. What the? Haku asked, turning to Hanata. I see them, over there. Mizuki sensei is on, is that a dragon? Hanada gasped. Naruto kun is running towards them, we should go also. Right, Haku said, and the two girls ran towards the explosion. Ex Kiba and Shino were sitting down on the mossy ground, talking, when suddenly, Akamaru returned from his run. What is it, Akamaru? Kiba asked, seeing Akamaru's scared look. Rough rough rough. Akamaru barked, and Kiba stood up stiff, as if shot. What did Akamaru say, Kiba? Shino asked, standing up as well. We've got a move like, right now. Kiba shouted, taking off on all fours. Shino stared at Akamaru, and then ran off after Kiba as well, and just in time, for where they had been a second ago then exploded in flames, and Akamaru was right behind them. W what the hell is that thing? Kiba shouted, pointing at the enormous lizard shape appeared, with wings that flapped out nearly creating enough wind for a wind-type jutsu. It would be appropriate to assume that the others are going to go see what is happening as well, so I am going to go meet up with all of them, are you coming? Shino said, taking off. Sasuke was running away from Choji with Ino and Shikamaru when he saw the explosion, and he caught everyone else's attention. 
Ino nodded, and got Cho Ji to realize what was going on. Wordlessly, they all headed towards the explosion. Mizuki grinned in triumph, as the dragon he rode attacked the forces that were attacking him, and he felt joy as his enemies were crushed. All that remained was that annoying cat-masked Anbu unit. She with her short blade would dance around the dragon he had summoned, avoiding the blasts of wind and fire, and every once in a while, send a Kenjutsu blast at Mizuki, who wondered at who in Konoha was so powerful, as he made the dragon bend to his will. He felt several chakra signatures approaching due to the gift his master gave to him, so he realized that he had to hurry up and finish the fight, when the cat-masked Anbu unit tripped up in the dance between Nin, Blade, and Dragon, resulting her in being hit with a glancing blow by the dragon's claw. Ha ha, and to think. I was nearly out of chakra. Yet you, pitiful Konoha Anbu, were not enough to stop me, Mizuki said, cackling afterwards until he went flying towards his dragon, after getting kicked in the face. You I mean, cat, are you alright? Naruto asked, holding the cat-masked ninja in his arms while he knelt. When she didn't respond, Naruto quickly made twenty clones and put them all next to the cat nin, turning towards Mizuki now, his rage covered by his mask. Naruto? What are you doing here? Mizuki asked, surprised. You would be shocked at what a person can learn when playing hide and go seek. Naruto said coldly, pointing a finger at the dragon standing behind Mizuki. Hmm. Mizuki asked, bewildered. Tell me, what have you done to that noble creature? Naruto asked, his voice becoming a bit heated. Why nothing, I am merely here doing an exam part and the person that was taking it, Mizuki said, trying to lie off Naruto. Shut the fuck up, Mizuki Teme, Naruto said, his voice becoming even more heated. You know, I have realized perhaps why you wear that mask, Mizuki started. Mizuki, is it because you don't want anyone to see your tears? Mizuki, I would understand your sadness, after all, everyone in Konoha hates you. Mizuki, I mean, why wouldn't they hate you? Do you want to know why? Mizuki, it's because you, are the Kayubi, Mizuki finished, figuring that Naruto would break down and start to cry. Rather, Naruto laughed. He laughed and laughed and laughed his hands on his knees at what Mizuki had said. At this point Mizuki was starting to fear. After all, shouldn't Naruto be sobbing now? Ha ha ha, you, ha ha ha, honestly think, ha ha ha, that I'm, ha ha the Kayubi, Naruto said, still laughing his ass off. W well of course you are, Mizuki shouted back. Idiot, I'm the container, not the actual thing, otherwise, this entire place would have been leveled by now. Dumbass, Naruto said, still sniggering. What did you call me? Mizuki yelled. Dumbass, because that is what you are, Naruto said. Don't try to put me down. Mizuki shouted, his eyes wild. You don't understand, do you little demon? I know you're a demon. A demon that should die with a kunai through your demonic heart. You should be stabbed multiple times with kunai in every single part of your body. Your liver and other internal non-lethal organs slowly cooked and your eyes should be carved out with a dull kanai. Well then, Naruto said, his mask now off, and his scarred eye and tattooed face shown. I think you need to learn some things, teacher. Naruto yelled, rushing forward at Mizuki. Ha, I'll beat you down in one blow, Mizuki said, getting ready. Naruto then vanished from sight. Hey Naruto, Mizuki said. I see you, Mizuki yelled, throwing several kanai at a spot, but they hit nothing. What? Mizuki asked, eyes narrowed for something, anything to appear. Well if you won't do anything, I will. Mizuki shouted, throwing several kanai and shuriken towards the cat Anbu and Naruto's clones. The clones all deflected the weapons, and Mizuki charged towards them. Die now in Pa Urk. Mizuki yelled coughing out blood as a sword appeared through his heart. He turned shakily to where Naruto stood behind him, his sword now through Mizuki. How? Mizuki said shakily, coughing out more blood. I will let you dawdle on it as you die. Oh so slowly, Naruto said, slicing off Mizuki's fingers and then pulling his hair out by the roots, sure to not do a lethal attack. Gah! Mizuki yelled, as he coughed up more blood. Now may you die slowly, Naruto said, sheathing his sword and stepping back, when his fellow genin appeared from the trees that they had been hiding at. Is is it true, Naruto-kun? Are you truly the Kayubi? Ino asked, nervous. As I already said, Ino-chan, I am not the Kayubi, I am just its container, Naruto said, 
before he realized he accidentally called her Chan. Ha! I win you too, give it up, Ino said, pointing a finger at Hinata and Haku, who both grumbled and handed over some money. The same thing happened between the guys, as everybody gave their money to Shikamaru, who just muttered, troublesome. Did you all bet on who I would call Chan first? Naruto asked, amused. Yep, and I won. Next bet is who gets called Haim, or kissed on the cheek, then on the lips, then who goes out with you first and then, Ino said, dawdling on and on. Shikamaru-san, you thought I would call Ino-san-chan first? Naruto said. No I just said it because nobody else chose it. In any case, Naruto-san. Is that Mizuki-sensei over there? Sasuke said, getting a gasp from everyone that the fingerless, hairless bleeding creature was their sensei. Several of them, including Kiba, puked at the sight of his fingers cut off, but Naruto approached Mizuki wordlessly. Draw draw dragon, Mizuki groaned. The large dragon looked down at him, and Mizuki said a few choice words, and the dragon shimmered and disappeared. Naruto, completely surprised, leapt back a bit and bade his friends to do the same, as Mizuki stood, his hair and fingers regrouping, the hole in his chest fading away. Ah, Mizuki groaned in pleasure, as his back slowly arched, and his butt bone grew, until a small thing popped out. His ears grew, his nose and jaw shot forward. Wings poked out of his shirt and back large ones, each easily twice as long as Mizuki was, that were webbed, and he spread them, savoring the strength it granted him. The worst part, however, were his eyes. They spread, as if impelled to do some by some demonic power, and his pupils disappeared, his irises, which were now his entire eyes, turned gray, and a single red mark went down each eye. Holy shit, Kiba muttered, and Akamaru agreed, sinking slowly into his coat. Naruto looked back at his friends, and automatically knew that he couldn't let them get hurt. Guys, Naruto said to his friends, run. Naruto stated as he looked at the signs on his arms and such, and poked one of them. He then began a long sequence of hand signs, before stopping on hair. Run. Naruto shouted at his friends, who got out of their stupor and backed up. Naruto then slammed the ground, making an indentation in the ground of where he hit. A pitch black raven the size of a house appeared and Naruto nearly fell, exhausted. Naruto san, why have you summoned me and, great Kami, Tasuki screeched in his voice. Kiba and Akamaru closed their ears, and Shino's insect swarm grew uneasy. I apologize for summoning you so early into your clan and my relationship, but I believe you can tell now why I need your help, Naruto said, gasping for breath after using so much chakra to summon Tasuki. Yes, I understand. I assume you wish to move the battle then, to the skies? Tasuki asked, preparing his wings. Hi, thank you, Tasuki sama Naruto said, sitting on Suki's back and beginning to meditate. Tasuki immediately created a whirlwind, launching Mizuki into the sky, then flying after him, screeching and creating a type of sound jutsu that knocked him off balance as he tried to fly with his wings. Go get help guys, Naruto yelled at his friends all of which immediately nodded and ran off towards the Hokage Tower. Now then, Naruto said to Mizuki, let's see how much your body can take before you die. Naruto said, taking out his sword in his right hand then pointing it horizontally, the pointed side down, and put his left hand on the flat of his blade, before swinging up with his sword, then pointing it at Mizuki with his right hand, left hand out on the left, forming a right angle. Allow me, to show you my power, Seru Tobi had finally gotten back to his office, and he had to admit. The future genin were rather annoying. After all, they had pestered him for an entire hour. How irritating. He went back into his room, and sat down at his desk, sighing at the enormous amount of paperwork when he noticed the drawer for all of the forbidden techniques was open. Seru Tobi cautiously walked over, looking inside with a feeling of dread. The scroll was gone. The chains of protection was gone. There was a dragon off in the distance. Dragon. Serutobi thought, before yelling, get me all Junin level ninja to Anbu commander level here right now. Crap. Serutobi thought as Junins arrived. The only person that ever had the dragon summoning contract was him, but how is this possible? He shouldn't attack yet. Immediately after the ninjas arrived he told them to head towards the dragon and he jumped off the balcony of the Hokage tower, heading towards the dragon. Now, he was nearing the area, and met several of his genin. What are you all doing out here? This area is dangerous, go home now. 
Sarutobi said, for once in an authority mode, as he waved for the genin to go home. Hokage-sama. Just who we needed to see. Naruto-san is fighting against Mizuki-sensei in the forest. And Mizuki-sensei summoned a dragon and then turned into a dragon. Sasuke yelled. What? If you see any adult ninja, tell them where to meet me. Sarutobi yelled, before jumping off towards where the dragon had been. Naruto was having a tough time, because Mizuki was extremely fast in the air. Naruto kept on sending Kenjutsu blasts at Mizuki, but to no avail, as Mizuki simply dodged all of them. Suddenly, he had a thought, and realized it would be the only way to defeat Mizuki. Tasuki-sama! Naruto yelled, in order to get his attention. I have an idea. Mizuki continued darting back and forth, having fun. I imagine that Master must know about this brat's power. He'll probably want to put a seal on him in the future. Ah, so he's going in for a suicidal attempt huh? Well, no good way to die, I guess, Mizuki said, rushing towards Naruto. Are you quite certain you wish to do this? The move you speak of will nearly kill you. There's at least a 50% chance that the blow will hit a vital area, Tasuki said, doubtful. And if I don't do something, Mizuki will get away with stealing a forbidden scroll from the village, as well one of Serutobi san's personal scrolls. I will not forgive him, so just go with it, please, Naruto said, now standing. All right, and I appreciate that amount of time that you have been my clan summoner. Thank you for being righteous in what you have done, Tasuki said, getting ready. Now, Naruto said, running off of Tasuki and jumping, using great breakthrough no jutsu, making himself fly towards Mizuki at incredible speeds, before Tasuki tailed him and flapped his wings, creating a whirlwind of speed that sent Naruto at speeds that he couldn't even follow. Tasuki opened his mouth and screeched, making Mizuki freeze in air. Mizuki had been watching him in pure amusement as he leapt off of the giant raven, then suddenly disappeared. He was about to move away in case the kid had thought of something dangerous, but he heard an incredibly loud sound, and froze, covering his ears from the pain. The bird disappeared to, and before he knew it, Naruto was right in front of him, his sword through his stomach once again, Mizuki groaned, as did Naruto, and they both fell back towards the ground, each an individual small comet. Naruto's friends saw him falling, and the girls had to stifle a scream. As Mizuki and Naruto fell towards the earth, Mizuki slowly closed his eyes, before taking out a kunai with the last of his strength, and slitting his own throat, not wanting to be a captured spy of sorts. Then it was official. The summoner of the dragon contract, Mizuki, was dead. And Naruto, Jinchuriki of the Kayubi, was about to die as well, Naruto thought, as he fell towards the ground at incredible speeds. Guess this is goodbye, world. Wish my life could have been a bit better but, whatever, Naruto thought with a smile, then, his eyes shot open. Not. Kai. Naruto shouted, drawing some from an emergency chakra reserve he put on his sword. He felt chakra flowing into him again, and put his hands into the ram seal, shouting, Tenju Shadow Clone no Jutsu. He hundreds of clones were formed between him and the ground, and together, they threw him towards where he last saw his friends while on Tasuki, who had dispelled earlier. Unfortunately, he was now out of chakra, so the genin all gathered together quickly with a plan. Ready? Kiba asked, at the lead. Ready? Everyone else replied. Their plan went into work, and Kiba threw off some of his hair, which grew and grew. Choji stood in the front his arms ready to catch Naruto, while Ino stood behind him, using her shield to help a bit, Shikamaru did the same with his shadow. Shino made his bugs form a bit of a net, which slowed down Naruto a bit, while Sasuke did a minor earth jutsu that clamped onto the trio's legs, making them more steady. Haku simply stood at the side, ready to try and catch Naruto via a jutsu. Lastly, Hanada also stood at the side, as she didn't know any good jutsu. She did however, activate her elongated nails, and dug into the ground anxiously as Naruto fell like a comet towards the group. Everyone, save at will. Kiba shouted, and everyone prepared in their own way to try to catch him. Kiba himself simply tried to jump and grab Naruto. Of course Naruto simply soared past him, as Kiba had completely missed. Haku used her ice mirror too fast, and ended up missing completely. Shino's bug net slowed Naruto down a fraction of a kilometer per hour, and he plowed into the Shika Ino Cho, pushing them back slowly and steadily. Umpta! Choji shouted, as Naruto dug into his stomach. 
The others rushed in to help, but Naruto bounced up off Choji's stomach, and flew up high into the air again. The genin were all tired now, and could barely lift a finger to help, but before Naruto hit the ground, he was caught by the third Hokage.